You are watching the vodka stream. Hey, what's happening, guys? Oh, it's Friday. How's everybody doing? All right, we are here. The vodka is chilled today. That's right. How's everybody doing out there? Everybody good? Everybody good? Let's pour that vodka. Got a different vodka today. Alb. Alb vodka. It's from Albany. So when they came up with the name, they're just like, we don't need any. <laughs> Sorry. Um, you know. So yeah, Alb distilled <laughs> in uh yeah, right there. So in Alb Albany, New York, right here. Not too shabby. I've already taken a little swig right here. So I'm going to pour myself a glass. Hopefully you guys got something nice to drink. Even if it's water, who cares? I don't discriminate. You know me. Let's just relax and we'll have a good conversation tonight. So cheers, everybody. Cheers. Oh, that's actually pretty smooth. I dig that. I dig that a lot. Oh. Ah. Gotta love it. Gotta love it. All right. So what's happening? Um... What's going on out there? All right. We got Mr. Eric Z. Good to see you, buddy. Yep. Should be another great show. Um, Mr. Tra Dr. Travis, he's going to, he's actually going to be on probably in about a little over 20 minutes. He said, uh, give him to about 830 my time. So, you know, so when we get to the 30 part of the hour, he'll uh, hopefully jump on. But uh, I just figured I'd bullshit with you guys for a little bit. So, yeah. Hi, Steph. How's it going? Good to see you. Everybody saying hi to each other. Mr. Patterson. Hello. We got Tyler. We got Miss Selena. We got Jason right here. Definitely should be a good, good vodka stream tonight. Got the good, got some good vodka for sure. What's going on, Alexu? How are you doing? Just bought some Vermont maple whiskey. Sounds delicious. Ah, there you go. Sorry, that thing is making noise. Yeah, that's cool. And we got Captain Gator Girl here. How's it going? That's right. You got your OJ. There you go. Getting that vitamin sizzle. You got Chuck right here. Any word on the Green Lantern series? As far as I know, nothing. I haven't, uh, haven't seen anything. Heard anything? I mean, the last thing that we heard was uh, Mr. Finn, whatever his name is. Finn, whatever. <laughs> He's playing Guy Gardner. He just said that, yeah, stuff's happening, but he can't really say anything. So there's that. Ready for this therapy? He said, I hope. <laughs> nah, you're not going to cry. You're not going to cry. It's not going to be like that. Uh, if you've listened to, uh, like, I uh, I mean, I really, uh, I've, I know I've heard this guy's name, and because I know he's got a lot of books when it comes to superhero psychology. Um, but I just didn't really think about it until Scott and Tim, Squadcast, they interviewed him, and I was like, oh, crap. And he followed me after that interview. Like, it was funny because I got a follow. I'm like, oh, Dr. Travis Langley. Why does that sound familiar? And then I looked. And I'm like, holy crap. Okay. Okay. Oh, shit. This guy. I think I've heard something about, you know, the books that he's written and stuff like that. So followed him back, and then I hit him up, and he will be on. So that'll be cool. Are you shocked? They showed the Riddler's face. I thought it was going to be a mystery. Not really, because we all know what D Paul Dano looks like. <laughs> I mean, we all know what he looks like. I mean, it seemed like with all the, the clips in the trailers, you weren't really going to get a full-fledged look. But yeah, that last clip, they actually show him, and he looks like Paul Dan with glasses. That's, that's all it is, you know? So, oh, what's going on, Jose? Yeah, made it through another week. Happy Friday. Smoke if you got him, right? Uh, yo, 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 yo. Everybody saying hi to each other. There's Mama Film Junkie. Hi, Mom. Good to see you. And really hoping that Dave... Oh, shit. Did I miss it? Sorry there, Will. Let's see. What did you put? There we go. Hey, Vegeta. <laughs> what does the scouter say about Dave's power level? It's over 9,000. I don't know what that's referencing there, Will Diesel, but thank you. <laughs> I don't know. Because uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what that reference to, but there you go. <laughs> Or maybe I'm just like, man, this week, this week has been, yeah, my brain's kind of just right now. Dude, he says Batman needs to stop beating up the mentally ill. I do <laughs> and do more good with his money. Oh, no, he's not going to say anything like that. I mean, I, uh, I have the book right here. 
the first edition. He's got a second edition coming out, but I got the book right here. This is the one that came out uh, in 2012, 10 years ago. He's got on March 1st, I posted the link down below if you want to get the second edition, which is like, uh, basically, I think it's just added to this right here, uh, probably because of the new movies and stuff like that uh, is being added to it. But uh, it's quite a read. I mean, I got it yesterday, so I haven't really, I didn't really dive into it. But yeah, I would say maybe get the first edition right now if you want to, or hold out and wait. To, uh, I mean, you don't have to hold out for long. The March 1st, when we're all going to, most of us are going to be seeing the Batman, his second edition of the book's coming out. So, put that right there. It's good stuff. Whoa. Almost fell over. All right. Uh, that's Dragon Ball Z. See, I'm, I'm not really into Dragon Ball Z. So, that's, that's why. I'm not really, I've never, I didn't get bit by the anime bug, per se. So, you know, yeah. It's, it happens, but uh, anyways, uh, you're not still. Uh oh, I didn't know he was mad. You need me to need me to rough him up a little bit there. You know, just let me know. Yeah, I know. Spoiler alert. <laughs> yeah, spoiler alert. The Riddler looks like Paul Dano. Yeah, I mean, if he had some like crazy scar on his face or something like that, if they uh, if they if they like changed his face somehow, then I'd be like, oh shit, that's too spoilery, but. It's just Paul Dano with glasses. That's all it really is. That's all it really is. So I won't get you too excited. Yeah, I won't, I won't get you excited there, Captain Gator Girl. But hopefully, yeah, you guys had a good week. Um, I mean, speaking of Batman, man, we're getting so freaking close. I mean, that's why I wanted to uh, interview um, Travis before the week before the Batman came out. Uh, I'm sure we'll talk about that. We'll talk about some, you know, Batman and movies. We're going to talk about Batman Ego, which... Uh, if you remember, Matt Reeves talked a lot about like Batman ego saying that that was one of the books that he referenced along with long Halloween and dark victory. He was, uh, you know, he also looked at Batman ego and you know what, if you know the story, it's not a bit, it's not a long story. It's not a long story. It's a very, it's a very, it's a short Batman story. That's just, just really contained It's a really contained Batman. Cause it just has to do with Bruce and the monster that is within him pretty much. So, and uh, I'm just kind of thinking that there's going to be some reference to that. If you've, I think you've kind of noticed it with, uh, with what we've seen from the Batman. So I think it's, uh, I thought it was like a good book to good book to really just go, go over, you know, a lot of things in there, a lot of things when it comes to the Batman and the psychology, of Batman, a lot, a lot has to do with that Batman ego book for sure, for sure. So, you found a pig with uh, longer hair in his younger days. Younger days? Well, aren't all my days younger days, Mom? Huh? Aren't they? Zing. Now, um, younger days, which was like, I don't know how how long ago. Probably like not even a decade ago, right? Yep, Derwin Cook. Darwin Cook, not Derwin. Darwin Cook. So, just got your Batman pops and now waiting on a couple Batman, the Batman Lego sets. There you go. There you go. Um, Yeah, I was, uh, I got my Batman pops. So now I got to start getting the, uh, the McFarlane's. Probably going to order those. Probably going to start ordering those pretty soon. I've been kind of slowly but surely getting all that stuff. I want to get, I do want to get the, uh, I almost got the Catwoman um, motorcycle pop. So uh, those were the good old days. Good old days. Cable guy days. Yeah. So about, you know, a decade ago, if probably less. Yeah. About a decade, about a decade ago. So I still haven't fully listened to it. I know I suck, man. T today was just so busy. It was just so busy today. I didn't have, uh, I didn't have time to, uh, I should have just had it on as I was working, but I just totally blanked on it. And, uh, and then I was just, uh, busy running some errands afterwards and everything. So, yeah. So I'm gonna have to listen to it maybe after, after the stream tonight. And the stream. All right. Looks like my guest has arrived. All right. We got that. Okay. Let's get everything all set up here. Not that, not that. Boop. All right. Hold on here. Remove that. All right. 
Let's uh, bring in my guest, Mr. Travis Langley, right there. What's going on, sir? Hey there. How you doing? I thought I was just going to be sitting here, so I'm eating right now. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. What, do you got a Pop-Tart or something? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. What is that? Brown sugar and cinnamon, maybe? Uh, this time it's strawberry. Yeah, brown sugar. Oh, it is strawberry. Like, brown sugar and cinnamon is second favorite. Uh, okay. Sometimes so are you, uh, lately it's been strawberry. Nice. Are you like uh, just fresh right out of the package, right out of the box, or is it toasted? Is it refrigerated? There's different ways. Yeah, this is out of the package. Mm -hmm. Good. So I've always, anytime that I've enjoyed pop, especially strawberry, I don't know why, I always liked it right out of the package, not toasted. I mean, the only ones I really liked toasted were like the chocolate fudge ones or anything that had chocolate. I always liked it when it was hot and warmy and gooey, but everything else, I always felt like it was better just right out of the package, so... It's yeah. like fresh cooked candy or cookies. Yeah, or pretty much what it is. What it is. It's a good snack. So thank you for joining, man. Uh, I was just talking about the book. Uh, of course, the second edition of Batman and uh, uh, Batman and Psychology. Uh, it's coming out on March first. So basically, I hear, good, I hear good things about it. Yeah, I think yeah, people have been talking about it. It's um, you know, from what I gathered, the author is pretty cool. Um, he knows his stuff, so. I think it'll be a, a pretty good book. So it's just essentially just like you just added on to the book, the previous book, because of like newer stuff, newer movies and everything. Uh, for the most part, that is there. Um, I mean, it's not just about the newer movies. It's newer topics as well. Okay. Um, there are things people talk about now that they weren't talking about as much or the same way. When I mean, it's been 10 years since I did the first edition. Yeah. And so, so obviously they're, are new things to talk about just in terms of the media the, the affleck version the yes. um the, the the harley quinn animated version and so many um, different the tv show gotham the whole run of that series oh yeah there you go you have all that too to dissect yeah and there are are some different issues especially the issue of uh, the violence mm -hmm. thanks to the affleck films uh, people are talking about that in a way now that they weren't the same 10 years ago. So there's a, a whole new chapter on Batman's views on guns and and killing. And mm -hmm. there's a Always new a chapter. Topic. And there's a new chapter on Batman as an inspiration, both in his world and ours. And of course, all throughout, I've got to talk about whatever else has crossed our mind. Even in the comics, there are some different things that have gone on. The different kinds of conflicts with the Joker and some other villains, um, the death of a very important uh, character in Batman continuity in, in the last two years or so, and more so lately, they've been dealing with repercussions of that. And while it's inevitable that that character will come back because comic books, <laughs> um, it is it's interesting seeing the potential story that can logically play out of that. Yeah. Yeah, there's so much uh, there. Uh, and then, you know, the, the topic that shows up on Twitter every like six and a half weeks is always the Batman, Batman killing, Batman not killing, that whole thing. I mean, I, I, I mean, you go on Twitter, like I said, it's always a topic to such, especially in the uh, the DC f um, uh, fandom. But it also seems like the outside fandom always like always wants to criticize that, especially with the uh, with like Batman versus Superman, especially, um, you know, and a lot of people it's just it's it, it gets to the point where I'm even I'm so tired of even talking about it because it's just like you gave what Ke Keaton a pass. You gave Keaton a pass. I mean, he 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 killed some people with a smile on his face. At I Batman was telling an interviewer about that yesterday because the interviewer yeah. had completely forgotten that yeah. the, the Keaton version did some killing. Especially the first one. It's just one character in the second one, which had not even been in the script. The script did not call for him to kill anybody in Batman Returns. No shit. But Burton just enjoyed the idea of having Batman put the explosive on one of the Penguin's thugs and kicking him off to blow up. <laughs> I mean, it was very. it's very cartoony. You know, when you see that scene, I mean, because it, it's like it's a big dude. He punches him. Guy takes the punch. And then all of a sudden it's like that thing where he doesn't realize that Batman slipped it right into his pants. So they do that whole thing where they look down. Then he punches him into the sewer and walks away and boo. And it's just it, it, it's pretty cartoony. But man, that's, um, you know, the smile that he gives is pretty deranged, too. Yeah. yeah. And, and like you say, the issue just keeps coming up. And, and, <laughs> yes. it, and it is an issue that matters. It is an yeah. issue worth talking about. And, you know, the issue of should Batman kill, especially should Batman kill the Joker or not? No. 
is, is to me more of a, a fan issue. It's, and, it's, and it's a philosophical issue and yeah. a pragmatic issue. For me, what's interesting are the psychological issues of, well, why wouldn't he? Yeah. And for me, that's not what everybody else is talking about. So, by gosh, I'm writing a psychology book. I'm still saying something, you know, else. But yeah, yeah somebody, when somebody comes onto Twitter and wants to ask me this question about, well, what about Madman killing? I'm just like, I've had this conversation so many times yeah. <laughs> in terms of that that kind of level of discussion. Yeah. And and you you can't have a really good conversation on Twitter. Because yeah. it gets to be chaotic. One person may be following you all along the way, but then somebody else will join the discussion. And it's like, I answered that eight minutes ago. Yep. <laughs> that's, that's always what happens. Always well, for what me, happens. that's especially likely to happen when I would get into discussions about Doctor Who. I, I used to be where it used to be where I would get on hours of ranting yeah. about Doctor Who. Um, <laughs> That's a whole other, that'd be a whole other stream right there. No, but yeah, you're right though. It's like, because you can go back and forth. I think I even had a little bit of that today. And then all of a sudden you're trying to like make some points with something with a, a debate. And then all of a sudden you get other people join in and maybe they say something. And then that gets the, the whole conversation just gets into like a different spot where somebody said something even like just came in, like just bl guns blazing. And then they, yeah, they start making the points that you made, mm -hmm. you know, 37 minutes ago you're like what the hell man come on i, I already talked about that so yeah what's really I, I, weird is when a person you agree with comes on talking to you as if they're arguing with you it's like, right dude we are in agreement <laughs> why are you acting like we're having an argument <laughs> or yeah. when somebody is just disagreeing with you and yeah. they think of it as an argument you can disagree you can have different points of view some of the yep. best discussions i've ever had friendliest discussions yeah. Or with somebody I disagree with that doesn't have to be thought of as an argument. Some people are just ready to take it personally. I think exactly. because this bat this our love of Batman in particular, it's so important to us personally. Whoever your heroes are, they're important to you personally. So an attack on them can be taken personally because of that parasocial relationship with, say, Batman. Yeah. No, yeah, you're absolutely correct. I mean, last week and even on Twitter, you know, uh, my buddies that come on here, we we had a, a healthy discourse of whether or not the nightmare look in Batman versus Superman is like definitively its own bat suit. You get what I'm saying? Like, or yeah. is it just a BVS uh, costume with some accessories like a jacket, goggles and some pants? What would you what would, what do you think about that discussion? Do you think the nightmare Batman is like its own nightmare bat suit, or is it just uh you know got some accessories to the the Batman or Superman suit? It's whatever <laughs> the storyteller wants it to be. There you go. That's good answer. Good well, answer. It, it sounds like a cop out when somebody gives that answer, but sometimes yeah. that is the simple truth. Yeah. Uh, Stanley, uh, he would talk about how people would repeatedly ask him. Who would win in such and such fight? And yeah. Stan's answer would always be, whoever the writer decides, whoever the writer yeah. wants to win the fight. Be yeah. be because it's the truth. There are certain things in which you get into, well, what is the truth of that? What's the intended truth of that? Or what is the truth that speaks to people regardless of the author's intent? Mm -hmm. But then there are some things that's like, this one was an arbitrary storytelling decision or a style decision that... It can mean whatever it means to you. That mm -hmm. doesn't have to mean that there is a truth. True. That True. makes sense. And yeah, there you go. Uh, thank you, Ben. It's not its own suit. All right. <laughs> yeah, we were going back and forth. Um, and speaking of that, do you have like any like do you have like a top three favorite live action bat suits? Uh, live action bat suits. Hold on, just a minute. I want to tell folks on on uh, Facebook. Jo hey, join us live now. There you go. Do that. Live, Promote it out uh, there. Live. Join no. us live. We are talking Batman and all kind and Pop Tarts. Right. Oh, yeah, yeah. We're, we're, we're talking about Batman. I should have. <laughs> Maybe Pop Tarts. Yes. Should have called it Batman and Pop Tarts. I'll rename it after. No, I'm just kidding. But yeah, we were just having that fun discussion. Yeah, but it's just funny, like just to go back and forth and just, you know, is it its three own favorite thing? bat suits? Yeah. Three uh, favorite live action bat suits. Live action. Well, the, the first Keaton one. Hmm? That uh, I didn't like what they did to the emblem with Batman Returns, where they add the extra um, points on the on the. That back. was actually on the eight. That was on the eighty nine one, actually. Okay, I'm mixing them up. 
Yeah. Well, where he is now looks pretty darn good. <laughs> um, was eighty nine the heaviest? I thought it was the other way around. No. Yeah, eighty eighty nine had like the the they were they're they're considered Batman bat feet. I, I I didn't know that. I thought it was like a three spike tail, which I actually like because I like it how unique it looks. But I had a costume designer on here who makes like his own bat costumes, and he goes, "Oh, those are actually feet." I'm like, "All right." So they put feet on there. Weird. Okay. But so yeah, I still think you're wrong. I'm looking at the symbol right now. Yeah, Batman the '89 Batman one, the one with costume. the. There you go. It's... I almost wore that shirt today too. Yeah. Batman. Yeah, the '89. Yeah, the Batman Returns had the normal. It had like a longer tail looking on the uh, on the emblem, but it had like the. It didn't have the muscle armor. It had like little venti looking armor. I like the one. Face. I like the one they're doing for Pattinson. Yeah. It it's more practical. Like he can move his head. He can yeah. look more athletic. This is something because does. of the nature of these past costumes. We've missed out on the athleticism of Batman. Yeah. And so with Pattinson, we're, we're able to get more of that. And then the other, because it suits the story and the particular depiction and should not be used anywhere <laughs> yeah. else, Adam West. Adam West. All right. One of three. Yeah. Well, like with those modern costumes, they would not have looked right at all on his show. No, not at all. <laughs> yeah. I, I, mean, I talked oh, about this with that. Well, I talked about this with Adam once. Um, well, I was asking when was the last time he'd worn the costume. He said it was probably about four years earlier. This would have been 2009. So he said it was about four years earlier for a photo shoot. And he mm -hmm. said, although, although the costumes now, they could just put muscles on me. <laughs> That's very true. I mean, it's kind of funny, like how, because um, when you look at, you look at Keaton, Keaton was never, he didn't bulk up. He wasn't, I mean, he was a fit dude, but he was not huge. Same with Kilmer, same with Clooney. And, you know, the suit's always pretty much gave them that muscle definition nowadays well, he, Keaton like, was trying to he, uh, he, Keaton yeah. was trying to add muscle he was working out and um Nicholson asked him why the costume takes care of that and yeah. Keaton was like, you know what you're right oh <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> uh, leave it to the joker to talk you out of getting in shape no but That's it's just right. like yeah, that's very Joker of him. Um, but it's just like nowadays, it's like when you get a superhero role, I mean, right right off the bat, they're assigning you the best fitness expert, the best chefs, and you're just eating nothing but like half chickens and drywall and all kind and you're working out like five hours a day and probably taking some, you know, some other stuff too that they don't yeah. uh, really talk about. But yeah, now it just seems like and then there's been even like uh recently with Pattinson, I, I think I had this debate today. <laughs> On my on my Twitter, it was just like there's some people that think that he's not big enough to be Batman, and it's just kind of like when you see him with his shirt off, I'm like, I don't know, he looks pretty. He looks like he could kick some ass. I mean, he's not Ben Affleck size, but Ben Affleck was a 20 year Batman, so it's not going to be Frank Miller. The graphic novel Batman Returns started giving people a picture of a bigger Batman. Yeah, uh, yeah. and 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 Affleck fits that very well, and that's what but... Zack Snyder wanted. But for the kinds of things Batman needs to do, he's not a muscle man first. He needs to be athletic first. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, and move that, quickly. that kind of muscle heavy look does not fit what he's doing as well. No, especially with a two year Batman, because that's what we're into. Like when it comes to the Batman, mm -hmm. um, how excited are you going to be seeing it uh, next week? Yeah. I've got a uh, speaking engagement at a theater. Um, I was invited to see it in Los Angeles hmm. uh, with um, a, a friend who's uh, a producer on The Flash was going to have a, a private showing. Oh, nice. And, uh, and I had to tell him, I was like, no, that week I've got a speaking engagement at a theater in Dallas. So I, I, I'll do a book <laughs> signing before and I'll do Q&A after. I mean, I could have seen it already, but I don't like to see these ahead of time. Yeah. Um, I saw Shaun of the Dead early. I've seen something else early, Love but uh, yeah. I prefer to see them when they first come out so I can feel a bit more like I'm there with the cultural experience. I agree with you big time because I've I've gotten invited to uh, uh, test screenings and I just don't want to see an unfinished movie, you know, and, and I've talked to yeah. people who've been to test screenings where they're like, oh, yeah, there were some missing scenes. Uh, some of the music was like filler music. You know, it wasn't all complete yet. Although some of those are hilarious. You see somebody walking along like their arm's supposed to have been ripped off and there's a yeah. green glove up the arm. 
Oh yeah, I remember there was like uh, when the f- first uh, Wolverine movie, uh, Wolverine Origins, came out. Somehow, a friend of mine, I guess it leaked online. He got a copy. He brought it over, and we were watching it. And yeah, there'd be like just moments where it just would turn into a previs, you know, image. And I'm like, you're like, it was so jarring because it was like, oh, this is cool, cool, cool. And then all of a sudden, it's just like a previs image, and you're just like, what the shit is this? So it was, what happened? The quality just went down the shitter right now. I don't want to watch this. So, yeah, no. So I'm with you. I actually, like, even, like, I mean, press screenings. I mean, I live in SoCal. I live about an hour and change out of uh, L.A., but just to drive there, mm-hmm. depending on where, if a screening is something, and usually these screenings are during the week. You know, I still have a day job. And sometimes they're at, like, the, you know, well, it doesn't really matter nowadays. There's always going to be traffic going into L.A. And I'm just like, yeah, I... To me, I'm like, I like buying the tickets, go with like either my brother or my nephew or some friends and go to that opening night experience with people. Mm-hmm. I, I kind of dig that better than than getting the early access, to be honest. And I, I love being there, the open night experience with the other people. I remember yeah. opening night, Black Panther. I'm up in the, the top row and there is this like 80 something year old African American woman sitting next to me and <laughs> and she's giddy she's she's like a little child in yeah. those moments uh, just a just of delight over and the, and the whole place loved the movie but i just remember her particular joy yeah. it was wonderful to be there experiencing the movie with her yeah yeah, that's what you got to love. I mean, even with the last Spider-Man that came out, I mean, it, it's going to be crazy to watch um, that movie just by myself here. Like, you know, just mm-hmm. watch it because there was so much there was so much cheering with certain things when they happened. Like when, you know, the, the Spider-Man show up, when Charlie Cox showed up, showed up, everybody when just Charlie was, Cox catches the brick. Exactly. So many things. And it was just such like it was like being at a concert, essentially. So when I watch mm-hmm. it for the second time, it's just going to be like, ha, that was cool. And then it's just all right. I could rewind it and watch it again if I wanted to. That's cool. But it just it's not going to be the same as, you know, when Andrew Garfield pulls off his mask and everybody was just like, oh, my God, you know, there's, no oh, there's this extra tension. It's like you got to stay here at the moment. You can't rewind. Yeah, it's like, you need a bathroom break. You got to decide carefully when to take that bathroom break. When you, might, it's like, you know, and, and glancing even as you're heading, it's like you're you're glancing back. Or there's something going on, on the screen. Before it happen. The room. It happen. It happen. It's gonna happen. Yeah, exactly. You don't want to do that. <laughs> but uh, but anyway, um, so I wanted to uh, get your origin story, which I usually like to do with uh, guests. Um, so obviously you're you you're. You've dealt with psychology and everything like how did you okay so first off where are you from where were you born where were you raised i was born about um two blocks that away <laughs> um, oh that's the truth i i happen to have wound up uh right about two blocks from the spot where i was born don't they usually kind of oh, yeah. some, some people actually say that sometimes you won't even make it out outside of where you are or something like that i always know. encourage people like make sure like if for those who want to wind up where they came from and yeah. it was like, make sure you've lived somewhere else, somewhere yes. further away. Um, and where, and where is home by the way? And then, and, and well, also, and some of them discovered it's like, they didn't really want to wind up home, but they didn't know there were other things. Uh, I am from a, a small town in Southern Arkansas, middle wow. of nowhere. Nice. Uh, just the uh, job opened up at the, the mm. university that uh, was in the town near the place where my dad got his bachelor's where my uncle and grandmother on the other side of a lot of family members went through here um you know this is where i was born i, n- I never lived right here but the family was always around here went yeah. to graduate school at uh, tulane university in new orleans and i eventually wound up back here um, because that's where the job opened up and you know, that's that's what, where that is, and it just so happens the house we bought is, and we're not talking two New York blocks, we're talking two small town blocks away from uh, <laughs> where the hospital was that I was born. It got turned down a couple of years ago. Oh, wow. Um, I did, you can't exactly call it urban spelunking in a town like this, um, but I, I did go in uh, and get some pictures inside the place after some of it had started falling apart. I found the door that did not have a keep out sign, so I was that's not obeying a sign. Yeah. There was no sign on that door, but I got a, a couple of wonderful photos from inside that hospital. And one of them is inside my Walking Dead book, 
But you oh, have a strange abandoned quality like the hospital that Rick wakes up in the first episode. Uh huh. In fact, my editor said you've got to put the location of it under the photo so people will know realize you're not pulling something from the show. Oh, <laughs> but it looked like it looked exactly like it, huh? That particular hallway did. Some of the yeah. others had ceiling caving in. I've got oh, wow. something else where I want to use some of those photos. That's cool. And then uh, when it came to uh, when did you write your first book? First published book? That well, that's Batman. That's Batman in psychology. Okay. So I, I'd had an idea about it in 2007. By 2008, I knew I needed to write the book. I knew it would need to come out when the next Batman movie was. Hmm. So that gave me what initially seemed like three years, but because that the next Batman movie got delayed by Ledger's death, so it, yeah, the three year plan became a four year plan. And and there were things I knew I knew I wanted to do during that time. I wanted to well do some smaller publishing in related comic studies, get to know people in comic studies, get to know people in the industry. Like during that time, I had my 2009 Comic Con panel with Adam West and uh, awesome. Michael Uslin, producer of the Modern Movies, and Jerry Robinson, creator of the Joker. I did not realize that Adam had not met Michael or Jerry before. In fact, he had turned down. Um, he could have been on a Family Guy panel at the same time instead to talk about his current work, but he joined us, I think, mainly because he wanted to meet Jerry. That's uh, awesome. And and he and Michael had never met before, and I knew there had been a little bad blood between them over, even though they had not met. Uh, some yeah. stuff had come up over, would Adam make a cameo in the 89 movie or not? And, it, and you know, because of the way that went, I, I knew Adam had had some, uh, some hard feelings on that, but since I knew there'd been some bad blood, I deliberately sat them next to each other in front of the audience. Uh, <laughs> It, it was it was either going to go uh, uh, very nicely or spectacularly badly, and it went yeah. very nicely. That's uh, good. And my, Michael, uh, Michael, and well, actually, Michael, Jerry, and Adam were all they all talked out after about how they uh, much appreciate it. Michael's been a very good friend of mine for a long time. Um, but and and I've told him later on if I'd already known you as well, I would have asked you before I did that. <laughs> <laughs> right would have ran it by you let you know <laughs> but uh, michael wrote the forward for, for my batman book and for the second yeah, edition he that. added a reintroduction he That's wrote the, he wrote forwards for that uh he wrote forward for the joker psychology evil clowns and the women who love them he told mm. me someday i have to do a third batman related book so he can complete a trilogy of course, you always got to have a trilogy. I mean, that's just the way well, it is. Out of, my, out of my, what will be 14 books with the one that we're turning in this week, um, two people have written two forwards. You know, I've had a number of interesting people write forwards. One is the host of a podcast, a Game of Thrones podcast. He did the forward for Game of Thrones. He was very surprised considering the company I've got him in, like Jonathan Mayberry. And, and, and the actor who plays Lucifer wrote things for the Supernatural book. Oh, um, shit. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, John Russo, uh, George Romero's co-author, who's a, John's essentially the one who invented the, the kind of zombies that we refer to as Romero zombies, mm. because Romero had not decided why the people were attacking the farmhouse. And it was John's idea, make them the recently deceased and what they want is to eat them. So those ideas, John invented the modern zombie. He wrote a forward from wow. a Walking Dead book. Uh, he had not yet watched The Walking Dead. Uh, but he, he wanted to do a good job for me. So he watched that first season and, and I really appreciated him doing that. And so I, I get, I, I'm, a, I'm a professor at a liberal arts university. I get to know some really interesting people and, and have these kinds of experiences and get them involved in what I'm doing along the way. And some of that started, I even mean, I mean, Michael, I thanked him way back when, because I think some of the other, because of him helping me back with that first book, I think made it easier for People like Stan Lee to, to talk to me, you know. Oh, oh, you did this book. Oh, Michael wrote you. Oh, sure, Michael's involved. In me, <laughs> How was that meeting him? That's that had to be. Oof. Uh, well, when I first well meeting Stan. Mm -hmm. Um, let's see. Now, I, I, I talked to Stan before from out in the audience, mm -hmm. and I'd once arranged for Stan to ask some questions from my students. But the first time I just chatted with him. It was right after a friend of mine had interviewed him and he came over and we were talking and somebody mentioned the book that I'd written and and Stan, Stan says, Batman, why would you want to write a book about him? And I said, well, because he's more screwed up than your characters. 
And Stanis puts his hand on my shoulder and says, this man is a genius. <laughs> Later awesome. on, I got his written permission to quote him on that. Oh, wow. That's good. That's a good quote to have right there. Stan Lee saying that you're a genius. That's 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 pretty good. That's pretty good. <laughs> well, I had Stan set up. Adam West used that word. Nice. Um, Robert Kirkman. It wasn't that word. What was he? He said, uh, oh, you're certainly smart enough to be a doctor. That's the way Kirkman worded it. Um, <laughs> but with Adam, it was, I was talking to Adam about something for, for uh, the book. Um he, he had promised a quote and he was thinking about what to say and Adam said to me, well, you're the genius. You tell me what to say. Of course, then his, his manager jumped in. Whoa, 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 whoa. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Pump the brakes. <laughs> yeah, no, Adam is one of these that, um, you know, even after I'd, for, I'd first met him and I had, I had wonderful, wonderful talk with him. I originally arranged through his daughter and then I've, I've talked with him and plenty and um, I mean, the first time we talked was on the phone. And uh, he's talked with me. He's in the middle of making a joke when the call dropped. Oh, God. And you know those moments where you glare. No! <laughs> you just want to look up to that. Yeah. I mean, yeah. It was like, I, why do I have this crappy phone? But he <laughs> called me bla back blaming his crappy phone. Oh, that's good. Yeah. And, and you know, when I would see him at conventions after that, for a little while, I'd be thinking, this is when Adam is not going to remember me. It'd be Travis. Or usually he would call me Doc, uh, which is a good cover. If you don't remember the name, it still shows you you understand something about the person. Uh, but he called me Travis often enough. Okay, he does He does remember. So it's like Doc is Batman's nickname for me. Nice. <laughs> well, the last time I saw him, I had a friend who um, he just had on his bucket list. He really wanted to meet uh, Stan Lee and Adam West. I was like, well, I'm going to have, I'm going to arrange for you to meet these guys. And, uh, that's uh, I was gonna get them both at one convention, but Adam had to cancel. So later on, there was someplace else where uh, I arranged for Adam to meet the granddaughter of Bill Finger. Mm, nice. And uh, Adam had not known I was the one setting that up. So when he got there, he saw me. He's like, "Travis, how the hell are you, Doc?" Ah. And you know, I'm great. I'm doing well. Just while my inner child goes, Batman knows me, and my friend <laughs> Eric saw it. <laughs> 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 right you're just inside you're like oh my god yeah but you know outside yeah. you're just like hey adam what's up yeah that's yeah. crazy man um so so of course uh like when it came to when you wrote the first book then it just was like all right i want to write more books about this partic particular talk topic when it comes to superheroes that was just kind of like i mean how long did it take you to write the first book you said the about four one, years well it depends on how we look at it Okay. You know, I, 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 was, I was born a nerdy child. Yeah. Um, I always loved Batman, always thought about Batman. Yeah. And from when I'd had the idea, I had some things that I'd written, and within a year, they grew to so many ideas, it had to be a book. Yeah. And, and I thought I'd written a lot along the way, but when it came time to actually write the book, I didn't use that much of what I'd written along the way. It was mostly oh, new wow. things. I wrote um, one sample chapter when uh, trying to get a literary agent. And then added a second sample chapter um, to show the variety of things that could be in the book. So one of those was um, the chapter on Freud and Jung, uh, the psychodynamic duo, Freud and Jung on Batman and Robin. Yeah. And the other chapter was the look at Batman over the years, you know, the which Batman chapter, looking at the different movies and shows and all of those. So I'd written two out of the 14 chapters ahead of time and uh, got a publisher lined up very quickly uh but then it was still a little bit before the contract was signed i didn't write the, start writing the rest of it till the contract was signed yeah and so i had 11 weeks to write the other 12 chapters oh shit but that is after all these years of having these thoughts Research. and developing these plans and, and getting this stuff figured out um of course you know that for that period of time i was around the clock batman yeah. Drove my wife crazy. Um, <laughs> there was oh, there was a point really late in the process where I spent so much time looking at the computer screen that I got like snow blind oh, from God. looking at the computers. It, it, it's the closest I can come to, to comparing it. And I'm, I still was like, I need to get this written, and was, I can barely see my screen right now. Um, but, <laughs> and so after that, I started turning all of my documents gray, so good they, idea. So they wouldn't do that to the eyes. Yeah. Dang. As, but I, yeah, so I got that done, and 
then, and it was with a publisher that had been publishing these uh, philosophy and popular culture books. It was with Wiley, or Wiley Blackwell, and they'd been doing those books. So I thought, okay, I can yeah. I can do I can do one of these every year on uh, you know, top topics in psychology related to particular things I like. I'd, I gave them a list of topics I was interested in. I really wanted to do Star Wars. And later on, I did. But at that point, I really wanted to do Star Wars. And the, the publisher's reaction on that was, well, there's no new movie coming out to help us promote it. It's like, Star Wars always sells. I know. Just, <laughs> it's freaking Star Wars. They wanted Star Trek. Yeah. They wanted Star Trek. It's like, well, that's low on my list. And I'm not <laughs> as optimistic about how it will sell as these higher on my list. But OK. <laughs> but uh, the week we were going to sign the contract, Wiley announced that they were selling that whole division. Mm -hmm. And there would be no new deals. Oh wow! And by the time it's uh, so, it was for the next two years. I I didn't have a publisher. I had a book that was the best selling book for that whole division. And and for that time, it was the best known study in most best known book in comic studies. And wow. uh, it, it was it was it was doing really well. I mean, it went rapidly that summer. It went through its first five printings. Jeez. And so it, it did really well, but it, because of publishing industry stuff, I didn't have a new publisher right away. So Jeez. two years later, I was at, so this, uh, so the book came out 2012. Two yeah. years later, fall, of, so a little over two years later, um, at um, New York Comic Con, uh, talking with a friend of mine, we had just been listening to... We'd been listening to a panel on Archie Comics because our mutual friend Michael Yuslin, executive producer of the Batman movies, writes sometimes Archie Comics. Crazy. <laughs> um, and and so, but afterwards, uh, the the other the mutual friend Mark was asking what uh, he was wondering why I didn't have another book yet because yeah. he knew it had been doing well. He knew I always have things to say and think about, and so I was telling him this stuff. And he said, well, what about the editors you used to work with there, wherever they landed? I said, well, if I wanted to write Fortran for Dummies, I could work with my old editor. And we're still having that conversation when, if we'd gone the other way around the escalator, this would have been such a different world for me. Um, we had There were people over here, so we go this way around the escalator, and we cross paths with the editor I had just mentioned. We mm -hmm. were still having that conversation. And there's Connie, and I was like, this is the editor I was just telling you about. <laughs> The one doing the dummy wow. books now. And yeah. she said, well, I was doing that. Now, at where the publisher I'm at now, last week I started doing popular culture. I was like, wait, you need popular culture titles. I've got a serious proposal to shop around. You remember? And th by then, the next Star Wars movie had been announced. Yeah. I was like, you remember that Star Wars book I wanted to do? We agreed there in the hall we wanted to work together. And, and within a week, uh, her publisher had gone through my proposal. And they said, would you like to do that and the Walking Dead book that you have mentioned in here? And, but, and so the the book since then have been anthologies, you know, me and other people, because in those two years after the success of Batman, I heard from so many other people, you know, if we do more books, we'd like to be involved. So those popular culture philosophy books have been anthologies, you know, almost never single author books. And so trauma experts, forensic psychologists, child therapists, family wow. relationship experts, people from a wide variety of areas with all kinds of different expertise wanted to be involved. So like with The Walking Dead psychology, I can have a child psychologist, you know, talking about uh, neglected youth that he had worked with and you know, comparing them we without any identifying information but comparing those case that kind of case to carl when he's kind of having to raise himself at times in the zombie apocalypse especially when he, his dad is further out there um and you know, a, a forensic psychologist comparing certain things to crime and looking at psychopaths and all these different expertise so then we have we have 12 books half of them are on comic book characters um out of 13 books so the, the new one makes it 14 but out of the 13 books i can say exactly half of the 13 are on comic book characters because the walking dead well about half of that's on the comics and half is on the tv show <laughs> so go. six and a half out of 13 books although admittedly of course we bring in movies and whatnot yeah. like, you're, you're talking about batman you've got to talk about the movies too because more of the audience yeah. will know that than any specific comic book story but, you Very know it's a regular psychology class I'm bringing in an example, talking about Christine Sizemore in her case of, of dissociative identity disorder, or when it was called multiple personality disorder. You know what? They don't know her. They don't know anything about her. Yeah. 
So uh, telling somebody about a comic book story is like telling them about a real person they don't already know. So what if they don't know? Is don't assume they know. Don't also don't treat them like they're stupid. If they were stupid, they wouldn't be buying a book. They wouldn't be buying this book if they were stupid. Obviously not. And they would not. No, makes sense. No, and like uh, when we were discussing what what we kind of wanted to like uh, talk about, kind of break down, and uh, oh, you know, yeah. with, the, with the with the new uh, movie coming out. I mean, one of the. Uh, I mean, obviously, anytime. When an, you know someone is tackling a new Batman story, I mean, obviously, Batman or Superman and Justice League were like the you know with with uh, Zack Snyder, and he was heavy on the Frank Miller shit. And I think anytime there's like a new Batman iteration, it's all, Batman Year One is always going to be a given. You're always going to have to look at that book. You're always going to have to just read it cover to cover many many times. Do whatever because you know it's Batman Year One. It makes sense. But then of course you know he wanted to do Dark Knight Returns more style, twenty year Batman. Um, but then, you know, when it comes to Matt Reeves, you know, he talks about the long Halloween, which is obviously one of the best, uh, Batman stories. I, in my and opinion, Nolan, Nolan praised the oh. long Halloween and you can yes. see its influence heavily on him too. Yeah. You could see that. And then, uh, even, um, uh, Reeves said dark victory, which is essentially the sequel to that. Yeah. But then he mentioned Batman ego. And that's mm -hmm. just, that's a book that people do not really talk about. I mean, it's, it's not even a long story. It's a very, nope. It's a short story. It's very contained. It's Bruce dealing with the monster within. And when I've seen the stuff that I've seen for the Batman, I'm like, yeah, you could see elements that that we're probably going to see in this new movie. The graphic novel Batman Ego, uh, mm -hmm. for audience members out there who don't know, look it up uh, by by Darwin. Darwin. Cook. Cook. Yeah. <laughs> and it is uh, uh, re some of the reasons they haven't heard of it. It's not like it has this epic defining moment in the character's history. Nobody was paralyzed in the story. Nobody's killed. It doesn't even have a villain really doing things in it, even though there's a whole lot of discussion about the Joker in particular in there. Yep. But it is an exhausted Batman who gets back into the cave and this shadowy bat figure looms, whether it is Demon. hallucination or talking well, to his own shadow self talking pretty to much. part of his own personality well, he's also lost some, he's also lost a lot of blood too so there that yeah. could be part of it because he he has a wound and then not to mention he just saw you know this poor sap like put a gun to his head and blow his brains out so he is not in the right mind right now for sure when he gets back to that cave although as as the the shadow figure itself says what difference does it make what it is? <laughs> yeah, it's here now, and you've got to deal with me. Exactly. And, and so this, whatever it is, some dark part of himself that it's arguing. So it's kind of Batman's having a conversation with his own dark side. That's yes. what this is. It, the graphic novel is a conversation, and Reeve has said that it is an influence on his approach to Batman. It is. It is. And, and you really have to say Batman. You can't just say Bruce Wayne uh, no. because if he's still in the Bat costume. And we all know that's who he thinks of himself as first anyway. Um, it's a, but he's talking to his own dark side, the violence in himself. And it wants to be unleashed. It's laying out all the kinds of arguments for killing the Joker or killing mm -hmm. villains. But it keeps coming back to especially the Joker. Here are the reasons to do that. And it... it Batman's having this conversation in the end on why it's like they've got to have the give and take. They've got to have this balance and they've got yeah. to have this agreement. It's like, here's why there's a line we can't cross. And it is finally going to be really seriously addressed of this issue of why does Batman not kill or, you know, even though we've, we've seen two live action versions that do. Or if you want to go with Titans, there's a uh, there's a third live action version who has killed somebody. Yep, it's true. It's hinted at in the Arrowverse, but you know I, I don't think. But it's it's well, of course you you see Kevin Conroy play one alternate Earth Batman who has. Um, this you know wh why does Batman? Why doesn't Batman kill? Or people argue Batman kills? Yeah, okay, we can we can easily <laughs> we, we know that. We know. <laughs> yeah. um, but why does Batman normally not kill? And why wouldn't he? It goes back to the issues. I got a whole chapter in there talking about. Yeah. And I'm not gonna. One, well, I don't want to just give the chapter away. Also, I don't want. No, you don't want to do that. Nah, and we're talking ego here. I mean, they talk. It's. I mean, the, the one of the biggest things, like when it keeps on 
when he's having um, the conversation with Ego, um, I mean, why he keeps bringing up the Joker is because the the dude, um, you know, and I'm not the, the book's been out for a while. If you haven't read it, well, really, no, it's we'll, Id, huh? Really, it would be Id. Id. What? Yeah, so oh, it's just that... the violent part of him that wants. Oh to yeah, act that's on very true. Impulses. It's yeah. Really, Ego would be if we want to go with Freudian on these terms. Ego would be the Batman who's there doing the talking to this other part of himself. Ah, good point. Never even really thought about that. Yeah. Huh. Hmm. Yeah, I tend to think not... Jungian on this because yeah. the, I mean I'm not a Freudian or a Jungian, but yeah. in terms of that story, there's there's a very clearly, and he's talking to the shadowy part of himself. If you want to yeah. go Freudian, the one doing the talking is the ego trying ego. to pull in the values of his uh, yeah. super ego, but he's really damn tired right there and it's a conversation between the ego and the id oh wow i didn't even think about that, that that's interesting but i mean like one of them i mean the the guy who ends up so he's wounded totally effed up exhausted bleeding and this one dude's about to just jump off the bridge buster and um he saves him uses like every bit of his last strength to save him but then when talking to the Buster, Buster mentions how the Joker's escape. He's going to go after me and my family. And then it, it, then he find, and then he tells Batman, I killed my wife and daughter, and now I'm going to kill myself. And then he does. And then it's just like, so all that, being super exhausted, trying to save him from jumping off the bridge and everything, it was all due to the fact that the Joker is going to get out there again. And then, and then of course, we have, when it's going back and forth between um, Bruce and uh, his uh, his darker half it's i mean the guy's like we have to kill the joker we have to kill the joker i mean there's so many reasons that and even just you know reading it and stuff you gotta go like yeah you mean why and it's kind of funny too because tim burton said oh yeah we're just gonna kill the fucking joker in the first movie done they don't need him but you know but yeah i mean he gives there's the story sets it up where you kind of go yeah i mean it almost it makes sense why haven't you killed the joker <laughs> The story sets it up with a reason for him to question his own mission. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, what is the point of what I'm doing? Yep. Uh, it's, it's like, am I succeeding at anything? Especially if the, these criminals are going to keep doing these things. And the patents in Batman, the patents in Bruce Wayne is stressing over this too. He's two years into his mission and crime is worse in Gotham. So he's that is giving him already reason to question Am I achieving anything really? Have I possibly made things worse? Yeah, you know, when the Riddler, this version of the this violent version of the Riddler comes along to really amp up the the heat of this question. Yeah, I mean, and, and it's funny too because uh just watching clips and everything i mean one particular clip from the batman is like when he goes uh i don't know if you've seen the funeral clip um where bruce is i mean obviously this mayor that we see in the trailer who's died and then you know bruce is so focused on the child like his child like uh the mayor's child that's just sitting there he's so focused but he's so like and anybody else who's like trying to talk to him he has he is not saying one goddamn word to him his his main focus is like this child and obviously and then going back to batman ego what they do i mean obviously in the story they flash back to christmas when um you know when well first when i guess you could say that ego was first born because you know bruce little bruce gets a a zorro toy and that kind of like starts the whole idea of what batman ends up being because you know we always know that bruce was like a big zorro guy so naturally that's where he got his inspiration from and um there's one in particular, like, uh, cause I just, I read through it again last night, uh, to brush up for this was, um, Bruce, like when, when, when Thomas gets, um, called to go, uh, ba basically treat somebody, but obviously the guy ends up dying. He brings Bruce with him and Bruce sees the guy. Well, first before when they're on the car ride, uh, they talk about the pearls that, that Thomas gave, uh, Martha. And she like, you know, cried happy tears. Bruce didn't understand happy tears. There's something that kind of like, like I was thinking about. It's like, he was so young. He never knew about like happy tears. Like he thought you just, when you cried, you were sad, but he didn't know about happy yeah. tears. And then what happens shortly after? His parents get blasted in front of him. So it's almost like he never, like Bruce Wayne, maybe never really had 
happy tears in his life or something like that. And maybe that le led to some of what's going on, especially in the story. And what he uh, associated with the happy tears are involved in him getting killed. Now, I've seen people say Batman doesn't cry. It's like, man, you can find so many examples of Batman crying. So many. Uh, but it's usually, it's almost never a happy tear. It's almost over things that have distressed him, things that have um, made him sad. He's distraught over something that has happened to someone. Yeah, no, it's happened. And, and, and it's, it, it's funny too, because uh, the demon, uh, Mr. Ego also brings up Harvey uh, when he's trying to give him like, you know, things, cause he's talking about all the different, the rogues. I mean, there's, it's even funny too, because for a brief moment, you see like Hugo strange talk about schizophrenia and the split personality uh, of Batman. And uh, but then they bring he brings up Two Face and uh, I, I, I also have to throw in for the audience. He used the word schizophrenia incorrectly, but we'll be talking about oh, uh, it, fictional writers who use it incorrectly. So you know, don't blame <laughs> don't blame him. Okay. <laughs> don't blame me. Okay, I'm just saying that's what was written in the book. There you go. Yeah. No, but uh, I you know I do um, I do a Batman I do a Batman stream every week with uh, you talk to Scott McClellan Squadcast recently. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we do a Batman stream for, you know, we just break down each uh, Batman, the animated series episode. And when it came to the Two Face episode, they really did a re really great job because, you know, when looking at the story again and you know, how he brings up Harvey and how Harvey was and he, and he was even shown in the in Dark Knight. I mean, of course, uh, Dark Knight, they didn't have it where they were like, you know, big time friends or anything like that. It was kind of a different story, but it still had that same story of, well, if Harvey Dent exists, that means Batman might not have to like Harvey Dent was the white knight essentially where the dark knight doesn't have to exist. But then of course he had this dark side to him and this, you know, dual personality or whatnot. But, um, um, but in the, um, the animated series, um, two face part one and part two, I mean, you see Bruce really just like, he, he wants to help his friend out so much that he's like, he's not sleeping. He's in the cave, exhausted. He's got all the psychology books out. He's trying to just figure out how to help his friend. And I thought they did a really good job um, with that, with that episode. Uh, 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 while you had that, I've also been thinking about uh, still on the happy tears thing. Cause in, in <laughs> our, in our, well, in our feed, somebody's uh, talking about it here, about uh, how he cried in flashpoint when he got his dad's letter. But that goes back to the point you were making about that thing with the happy tears is still associated with something terrible that happened then afterwards. If anybody exactly. knows in the comics, what that version of Thomas Wayne has done lately. <laughs> Good point. Good point. Yeah, I know. People having conversations in the chat, so. Yeah, Danny O'Neill, and then to what you've been saying since then, uh, <laughs> Danny O'Neill uh, talked about, I was like, well, yeah, Batman, while he wouldn't have the patience for a lot of aspects of, of social sciences and the softer sciences, he would absolutely have studied the psychology and want to have pulled everything he could out of there. You know, not just to understand the criminals, but to help people like Harvey. And, uh, you know, Denny made this comment. You know, since Denny, Michael wrote the forward, but Denny wrote a, an introduction to Batman and psychology. And he says, well, you know, he doesn't think you know, Batman would have the, the patience for a lot of those things, but he'd read this book. He'd have to, wouldn't he? <laughs> yeah, of course. It's about him. <laughs> no, but uh, yeah, I mean, well, I just thought like when, when he brought up like Harvey as, uh, you know, as part of it, when he's trying to be like, hey, I mean, you know, when he's trying to give him shit to like be like, hey, we got to start, you know, he, he brings up like, you know, soldiers, how you could bring, you know, back in the old days, you know, you had these soldiers and it's like and there's there's going to be casualties of war. You could mm -hmm. take like somebody that is working at a diner and then, they, you know, you could just totally just uh, shape them up to be like a soldier and everything. And then he even goes back in and like really digs and says, you know obviously he talks about Zorro and how he understood that casual, there's going to be casualties of war. You know, you just got to really understand that. But, and then when it comes to the, I guess you'd say the climax of the whole thing was, is like, you know, he basically gives Bruce a gun to kill him, to kill ego or whatever the hell. And Bruce still chooses not to do it. I mean, that had to be, I mean, that's, I, I want to see this fucking story live action. God damn it. <laughs> well, somebody could do it. I, I think an animated short would have more freedom to really Probably. play with the trippiness of it, though. Yes. Yeah. It's the way that it flashes back with certain things and showing like the different villains and everything. Mm -hmm. And it's funny, too, because even Con he even um, talks about 
Yeah, the, you know, Bruce Wayne's life. I mean, and I actually wanted to ask you this too, because I had Dr. Andrea on here. I don't know if you've talked to her, uh, Dr. Arkham Asylum. I don't know if you. Andrea and her. Mindy. Yes. There you go. Yeah. I always. We, we did a number of convention panels together um, yeah. quite some time ago. And, uh, and, and we hadn't lately because, I mean, we're each doing our own thing. Yeah. I mean, there have been a bunch of people who would suggest. Uh oh. I think we might have lost them. Internet connection. Uh oh. It's not me, is it? Yep. I think we lost them. See what happens. It was uh, it was the demon on the other side. All right. We'll see. Hopefully, we get Travis back. This is uh, this is a very awesome conversation that we're having. Um, we'll see what happens. I think his internet connection. Yep. Anyways, what are you guys doing in the chat there? Come on, relax. Dave should, I know I should get Dr. Drea back on. Hey, get Drea and Travis back on. That'd be a freaking, that'd be a hell of a conversation right there. But uh, we'll see what happens here. I don't know. Let's see. Let me tip, tip, back. Nope. Looks like we lost him. All right. We'll see if he pops back in a, a little bit here. It's that, it's that small town Arkansas internet right there, man. Oh, yeah, I'm loving loving the conversation here. You guys got a lot to say about the psychology of Batman. Like I say, if you guys have not read Batman Ego, it's a, it's a small story, very very contained story, but it really just like hits. I posted a picture last night because you know I wanted I was brushing up on it. I got the book right there, and it's just that that shot they they reference, of course, the 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 origin of Joker, because obviously ego is just all about, um, all about that. Oh, you're back. We are back. Oh, you're muted. You're muted. Wait, hold on. Are you, you're muted. There you go. Well, <laughs> still nothing. No, no, I was just bowing. Oh, you, yeah. Ah, nice. That was good. That was good. I like that. <laughs> he was like, yeah. Now we've got uh, some of the I've got some of the best Wi-Fi in town, and it is still unreliable. <laughs> I was about to say, well, small town in Arkansas, I could see yeah. it, not, you know, you know, not being as strong. But uh, thank you for returning. Uh, well, I forgot exactly we were talking about Dr. Drea. That's right. Yes, we were on Drea. Uh, yeah. yeah, with our Arkham Asylum podcast, which for a while she was going well through Batman the animated series until she she well ran through that series, but she still has plenty of things to talk about. Oh yeah, of course. She has a popular great. podcast, and she's a great speaker. Uh, she and I were both in Necessary Evil, the supervillains of DC Comics uh, mm. documentary. It's full of actors and comic book creators, and the two of us. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Yeah, the the ones who made the documentary, they were planning to do a follow up documentary. Um, which would have a lot more to do with me and Drea, but uh, Warner Brothers didn't allow them to do the follow-up. Oh, those silly gooses. Jeez. That's right. Those guys. But no, she was great. And um, mm -hmm. um, what I loved about like, like, like listening to her podcast and then just talking with her, I mean, we always talk about, you know, obviously the the split personality of bruce wayne but i love the fact that she brought up well it's actually more like three personalities you know of and that is exactly what i say in my book and that's what christopher yeah. nolan says yeah exactly i mean it's just you know you got the you got who he actually is and then you got the bruce wayne persona and then you got the batman persona and you know it's even brought up in ego too where he mm -hmm. talks about like you know his life his life as bruce wayne and it has like various shots of like either women that he's like you know flaked out on or you know hey you know ha let's have a round of tennis over here you know he's got to play that playboy billionaire type and he, what's going to be interesting about this about the batman is you know, this, this, what I always keep on saying by what I've seen from the Batman clip and trailers is I'm like, this Bruce Wayne doesn't know how to be Bruce Wayne yet. Right. He, years in, he does not know how to be Bruce Wayne. He and has not yet developed that public Bruce Wayne act. Yeah. You know, he is, uh, we're so accustomed to that always being there. Uh, I mean, somebody earlier this evening was asking, oh, I mean, you know, he was saying he wasn't that pumped for the, 
Batman film coming up. It's what's going to be there that we haven't seen already. So I'm going through. Here's a list of things that we haven't seen before. <laughs> and part of it is that yeah. you know, he, he, he has been so dedicated to his mission, his determination to be Batman, be above all else, uh, that he has not just neglected that part of his life, but he's even neglected to really develop a public persona there. So yeah, he has the the public Bruce Wayne act. He also has a Batman act. You know, the one who, you know, where Christian Bale's version says that, you know, Batman can't be hurt. Batman must, you know, be invincible. And Alfred said, okay, but you are vulnerable. Yeah. You can be hurt. <laughs> so yeah. there, there is a Batman act, even if the Batman purpose is what is definitely what's truest to his heart. So, so yeah. yeah, there are there are these two different acts that he puts on, these public personas. And then there's the guy that he really is, because it's not a bat whose parents got killed in that alley. You know, he, if you go to who, who he is, he's closest. It was Selena said in one of the comics that he's still that little kid whose parents uh -huh. got killed in the alley. Yeah, I think they're going to really tackle that, too. I mean, I, I what I was really um, liking when I was hearing more details about it. And then they're showing like Wayne Manor, how Wayne Manor almost essentially looks like it's almost condemned. Like it hasn't been kept up. The bat cave is like in a train station. It's like somewhere. Um, and it's just like, I'm like, yeah, when people say like, well, what, 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 what are we going to see here that we haven't? I'm like, yeah, like you said, there's a fight. There's a laundry list of things that it seems like Matt Reeves is going, all right, no, we're going to see this, this. Yeah. You're going to have some familiar other stuff, grappling hooks, beating up people. Yeah. Of course it's going to be the normal shit, but uh, my biggest thing, and like I said, from that funeral scene, it's just like he does not know how to be Bruce Wayne yet. Right. He is so like he is not. You have like the 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 lady that's running for mayor, busting his chops, saying like, "Hey, your family was like helped out a lot, and you haven't done shit." Even though he's doing you know kicking ass at you know uh, in the wee hours of the night, but she's like, you know, you could be a philanthropist, you could be this, and he's just not even responding. The only thing he was responding to is that kid. You know, and obviously that's always going to be an aspect of it that gets brought up in ego as well. Where he, it, it, but what's funny about this, and when I was reading it again, you know, after he's busting his chops about the the rogues gallery, the villains and everything, which also reminded me of that one Batman, uh, the animated series episode in uh, season two when he's on trial. Remember mm -hmm. that episode? Yeah, we're like all the you know they basically they're blaming. They're blaming uh, Batman for their creation. But then at the v end of the episode, the, the uh, lawyer uh, lady, she just goes, well, actually, you created him, which was always like a very interesting, you know, story point when it came to that, that whole thing. Because, you know, it's like who did create who? And I love the fact when new people get a hold of the material, they kind of like I think Burton was really fascinated on the villains more than Batman. It really shows with those two movies. And I think he even admitted it that the villains were always more uh, fascinating. Bruce is very distant in both of those two movies. Yeah. That's one of the reasons Batman Begins is my favorite Batman movie, even though I can go for all kinds of reasons. Why well, here's the Dark Knight, plenty of things that are better structured and all and more powerful with the Dark Knight. But Batman Begins is my favorite Batman movie because it's the first one where we really get to relate to him as a character. Yeah. And, and it's because of what Burton was doing. We discover him through other people. In, in the first film, we discover him more through Vicki Vale than anybody else. Yeah. And in, in the second film, and this goes into something that uh, Reeve is touching on. Well, actually, Burton touched on something that Reeve is exploring. I said that backwards. Uh, early in uh, Batman Returns, I think I said Batman begins a second ago. Early in Batman Returns, when Batman is just, Bruce is just sitting there in the dark, not doing anything until well, the bat signal awesome. comes on and yeah. it springs to life. Yeah. He is not even pretending to be as involved in social life as he did in the previous movie. He's yeah. grown more distant by the beginning of Batman Returns. So Good Selena point. in that movie gets him back in touch with being Bruce Wayne as a person. Yeah, because he goes to that ball. He goes to that costume uh, uh, ball or whatever the hell from Shrek. Yeah, The scene where Bruce and Selena, everybody else is in costume with masks. But, but not that Selena, their costume is to dress like a regular person. <laughs> exactly. I know. So, I mean, it's it's funny, too, because I always say that when it when it came to when you look at Batman 89 and Batman Returns, it was like 
Warner Brothers were like, okay, Tim Burton, we want you to do something like this, like this, like this. And then when it was so successful, they were like, do whatever you want for returns. And it shows. It's very much a Tim Burton movie. It's Christmas time. You have that Danny Elfman score that is just popping like, like, you know, that that in that Tim Burton way. And um, but I mean, what I really I mean, he pretty much I mean, there's some things that get a little crazy, like when Catwoman literally takes a bath and she's just licking her costume. It's a little strange, <laughs> but then you got, you know, you got the penguin, which he yeah, which which he totally, instead of just being like that gangster that has like a funny nose and a, a monocle uh, in his eye and a, a long cigarette, he was like, no, he's going to actually be a creature. And I love the fact that with the other iterations, you know, in the books or even like in the games or something, is they kind of combined that. And now we're going to, Reeves is like, all right, but now we're going to get back to the gangster type, which I mean, still awesome because I cannot believe that's that's Colin Farrell. I mean, my God, when you see oh, that. No. <laughs> well, he looks he looks so much more like um what, what's his face from Spin City. That's not Spin Stuart Pinkton, is it? That's oh, I know what you're talking thing. about. I know what you're talking about, but I can't remember his name. But he's like in so many different things. Yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. Somebody will say it in the chat, probably. Um, but yeah, somebody's talking about bacon donuts in the uh in the chat, and that sounds interesting. It sounds amazing. Anyways, but uh yeah, but I like the fact that. Reeves chose to, all right, we're going to do the penguin again. But I, I mean, I mean, even going back to the Riddler, the fact that, I mean, it's funny because I have the, I have two Funko pops of the Riddler. One's the Jim Carrey version full on in the costume with the cane, the hat, everything. That's the comic version. And then he got the one with duct tape glasses outside of a, <laughs> of a, essentially a gimp mask. And yeah. it's just, it's just amazing to see both of those versions right there. And I'm so excited to, to see like this killer seven type Riddler that we're going to get in the psychology of even that right there. That's going to really fuck with Batman big time in this well, movie. Each of the, the three villains, because people argue with us on the word villain using that for Catwoman. Of course. Uh, she's a crook. She's a thief. Uh, yeah. It's a, uh, I guess she was at live action. She was at her most villainous in the old Adam West show, but pretty much. Uh, but uh, the of the three of them, with each of them, we're seeing some things we have not seen on screen before. With uh, the Penguin, we're seeing him as the club owner, which has not been in any previous movie because it wasn't nope. introduced until their one year jump. And, it, and it's the iceberg lounge too. Yeah, he's got he's got, he, the penguin has the iceberg lounge, which has not always been in comics. No, uh, and it, it, that that surprises some people. Think it's like, oh yeah, that has not always been there. It has no. not always been such a when when they added the iceberg lounge, they fleshed out the penguin as a character so much more. I mean, Burton was right when the studio insisted he include the penguin. Burton was right. It's like there's not that much to him, and th and there was not that much to him. Uh, and back then uh, yeah. they did it they did an interesting job on him in gotham and, and played out with different layers of them and some aspects I like, you know, yeah uh, i like the gotham penguin i had trouble with a skinny penguin but <laughs> especially when some of the aspects of the psychology of the penguin there are some reasons he's he would stay physically bigger because he wants to be a bigger man that's yeah. so central to the psychology of the penguin he, he has what's informally called a napoleon complex and I won't go on too much because I've said that before, but uh, he, he <laughs> wants to be the bigger guy. The hat makes him bigger. The umbrella makes him take more space. And that oh, belly sure does too. But yeah. even with the skinnier penguin, although he's not skinny in the last episode, which takes place 10 years later. But even with that skinnier penguin, he still wants to rise up and be a big man in town. He wants to be a big guy in the city. And now you have Colin Farrell playing a penguin who is actually part of Gotham life. Part yeah. of high society in gotham owning the club and these even though he didn't have the club when he first appeared he always wanted to be part of high society from back when he first appeared he wanted to rise up in high society and be a gang boss and so we're getting these aspects of the penguin that have been there that we haven't seen on the big screen with catwoman she's there to get him back in touch with other causes, other things to take an interest in and helping people in other ways, in, in addition to punching bad guys. Uh, of course, then with the Riddler, we're getting this deadly killer Riddler who he thinks he has some grand purpose. Yeah. And it's uh, he, he the history, the history on, yeah, the history on 
on Edward and, and Bruce is going to be interesting to see play out because obviously we've seen like there's pictures up on a board. I don't know if they've, you know, the crime scene that they find and uh, you see young Edward. That's like, uh, I guess he might've been at one of the, the boys homes that the, the Wayne's like funded or whatever the hell, or that's going to be interesting to see like what, what's, what's, what's Edward's vendetta? Like what's his, what, what does he have against, um, against uh well the waynes first off you know and there's there's been many theories about that and then even going back to uh batman ego um well, i mean one of the things that just strikes you right off the bat is like that opening page of it's almost like uh, you know you got the main cover then you got this other cover and it's literally batman that's inside like buildings like he's he's gotham he's so obsessed with like protecting i guess you could say his city that he's just like you know i just wait i love the way that 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 um that opening like little uh, cover looks like. And, uh, you know, it adds to the story too, because he's so obsessed with protecting this city so much. And then, like you said, in, in the Batman, it's to a point, it's like, you know, two years in, am I actually doing anything here? Am I actually making a difference? You know? Yeah. With the, the earlier films by the second one, well, Batman is established. Okay, Batman arrives in Gotham in Batman 89. He arrives in Gotham in Batman Begins, or he's recently arrived in 89. Yeah. He arrives in Batman Begins, and then by the second film, well, he's well enough established. We, yeah. we don't, we haven't seen that in between period. You know, on, on in film or TV, we have not seen that in between period depicted. Yeah. And so this is very much good. Just when I heard that he wanted to do it two years into Batman's career. You know, where it's still early on, but Reeve was absolutely, we're not having him arrive in Gotham again. <laughs> yeah. And then, of course, you know, I mean, I mean, do you think that even though they, they've really, like, when they've had those conversations the uh, about not showing the Waynes getting murdered again, do you think we're, we're still going to probably see something along the line? So, I mean, we, I mean, it almost seems like you can't have a Batman story without having some kind of dream thing or a flashback or something where we see a gun, we see some pearls dropping or something, you know, I mean, it, it's it, what's, what's always cool about it though. It seems like anytime that anybody, any director approaches the Wayne's getting killed, they always have a unique way. I did not think it was going to show up in the Joker movie. And I was like, Oh my God, they're doing it. <laughs> they're going to do it. Ha! Ah, look at that. And they, they made it, you know, Todd Phillips. It's interesting. Yeah. It's because uh, one of the discussions about, uh, you know, who's the real character and all, um, yeah. Michael Uslan, his feeling is that when the parents get killed, Bruce Wayne died in that alley, that the entity, Bruce Wayne, died there in the alley, and, and the, the, the being who then was left behind was Batman. Now, it's not quite the way we think of people in terms of real psychology, but it's a wonderful storytelling perspective, and it's reflective of some, some real things. But the, oddly enough, the film Joker came closest to looking like that because the Waynes have been killed, and there's Bruce Wayne, and unlike all these other depictions that we've been seeing ever since the 70s or 80s, Bruce did not drop to his knees. He's still mm -hmm. standing there, and as that camera backs out Back to the alley and, yeah. sh and bruce shrinks there into a shadow in the distance of the viewpoint that's moving away about the only scene that's not from arthur flex perspective that kid looks like he's batman already yeah seriously right i don't know what they're gonna i mean well, you know when it comes to that whole ending and the way that that movie wrapped up i don't know how what the sequel is going to be involved i don't know have you heard about that? How they they're supposedly going to be a Joker too, they're and I'm just kind of. Like, I mean, originally they said we've got to find the right story. You know, otherwise, yeah. there's no no reason to it. Like, okay, that's a good way to start. It's Always, like, you've got to find the right story, or you won't do it. And yeah, of course, because I mean that character is so different in certain ways. He's definitely not the same Joker. No, he's not. He's not. I mean, I mean, when it comes to the Joker, I mean, and even going back to uh, Batman Ego and seeing that 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 those two pages where where Ego brings up the Joker and how that origin started with the Red Hood and be falling over into the chemicals and everything like that, essentially saying that, hey, you created him, buddy. Look at what happened. And like when you showed up, like he was like, stay back and boop, oh, he tripped. And it was your fault. Um I, I was looking at that. I even took a picture of it last night and posted on Twitter. I was like, man, if Reeves kind of like gives us anything like that, because yeah, we got, I mean, Burton showed us something similar, I guess you, you know, obviously, but 
I don't know, just something in the, in the vein of like the whole Red Hood scenario, because we don't know exactly. We, nobody actually knows who the Joker is. I mean, Burton. And it's best yeah, that way. For it is best that way. For purposes, he needs to be mostly an unknown. Yeah, he, he should be. I mean, Burton gave him a name and then said, well, instead of Joe Chill killing the Waynes, we're going to have Jack Napier, which cool. I, you know, I'm perfectly OK with that. He was had his own story and his own iterations of mm -hmm. everything, and it, it worked fine. But he but, becomes uh, his own character. Jack Napier is that specific character. He is the Joker yeah. more so yeah. than the Arthur Fleck character, but he is Jack Napier prior to and while being the Joker. Yeah, no, yeah, you're right. And and then when Nolan took the approach with Ledger, I mean, he's so much like he's I, I love it when they, they talk about how like Nicholson was more but you got like Cesar Rom uh, Romero, which was more the clown type Joker, uh, that kind of guy didn't want to shave his mustache, just painted right over it, which is always funny. I saw like a really good shot of George Romero, like putting on the makeup. And it's just funny because he just totally refused to shave that mustache of his Um Never would I never noticed it when I was a kid, but then when it brought to my attention as an adult, I was like, "Oh yeah, wow, it is right Once there." Once you see it, you can't you never, see it. <laughs> you can't unsee it at all. Every scene, I'm like, "There's the mustache." Um, but then you know when Nolan took the approach, he kind of took the approach of like, "Oh, this is like a guy. This is like an anarchist Joker. He's he's not the gangster Joker. He's not trying to create any credibility or anything. He just want like like what Alfred says. He wants to see the world." burn and we never know who he is bruce never figures it out it's just a, i mean the opening scene he's working with these other dudes and he's got this crazy diabolical plan where he ends up being the only one surviving this bank robbery and i mean he's brilliant but then he's just like what is his what is his end game essentially is he just wants to he just wants to see everything burn he doesn't want exactly money or anything it's just i love that approach i mean i think that's why dark knight People just when they say what's the best comic book movie, everybody just goes to that because mainly because it's for performance. good reason. Yeah, yeah, for good reason. Like it really is. I it's funny because I'll go back and forth, like especially when it comes to Batman movies. I mean, yeah, that's always like my favorite. But I'm all, I'm with you too, and other people have said it to me as well. Is like Batman Begins. I mean, that could just also get up there for other reasons. I think it's the best origin story for sure when it comes to origin stories of all comic book movies i think batman begins shines the most because i thought it did a great job but yeah it, it can go back and forth with all that but i think it's but the tone shifts between two both of those movies too is kind of interesting when you if you watch them back to back you're like yeah it's a little bit different this time as opposed to that first uh go around that no one did when people have asked me well oh, who's your favorite joker is like it, it's it's <laughs> it, it depends it, it's a matter of what fits the story you can't mix and yeah. match them you can't take the romero joker and insert him into no. the dark knight you, know, you can't take so the, you can't take arthur fleck and put him in the 66 tv show it doesn't matter what it which joker fits the story and then how they're playing these characters like for I, I got some problems with that Jared Leto Joker. However, okay. um, I will at least I will, will credit this much that for all the, the degree to which it seems to be crazy for the sake of crazy, menacing for the sake of men menacing, we only get him through Harley Quinn's point of view. And Sorry, Harley girl. Quinn at a particular point in her life. You know, we, we never see more of him. And so I'll 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 give that qualifier. To, to how we see the Jared Letter Joker. It is yeah. Harley's skewed point of view. That's very true. And, and, and it's kind of curious, too, because obviously, you know, with all the Snyder Cut stuff that happened, now we have the Ayer Cut that, you know, we're all trying to be like, hey, maybe we can get the Ayer Cut out because David Ayer has come out and said, like, yeah, my movie got my, my movie got effed with, too, to the point where it's like, yeah, there are many Joker scenes that are cut out of that. So I think... I'm wondering if uh, his original cut kind of gives a more point of view of not not just through Harley. Who knows? Because, yes, if you watch Suicide Squad, it is very much through, um, like you said, through her point of view. We're only seeing him through her point of view. And I'm kind of wondering if Ayer, because apparently they said they shot like the, a lot of his stuff got cut out. If we're going to see, you know, just just him just being him is it always just gonna is it not gonna be through her point of view so that'll be interesting 
to, to well, see. When you, hear, when you hear about the interactions between Margot Robbie and the folks directing and writing that film, it sounds like she had a far better understanding of Harley than they did. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, when the director is saying, just, just be scary as hell. And she's like, that's not what Harley's about. And you know, she's right. Yeah, no, no. She, she did her homework. She definitely did her homework. Mm -hmm. Um, when it comes to all that, um, did you, uh, I mean, obviously you saw the Zack Snyder's Justice League. Um, oh, right? yeah. Yeah, yeah. So what did you think of the Joker in that? Yeah, in that I, I watched, well, well, when it's this vision nightmare fantasy sequence. So yeah. again, it's through Batman's point of view. Okay, there you go. And, and it's, it's not even as Batman saw him in his memories. It's how Batman sees him in a fear for the future. Hmm. So, you know, where he isn't fitting the previous one, it's because it's a different person's perspective on what we're getting there. And <clears throat> the, the, we live in a world thing, because that was in the trailer, not the film, but uh, that, that <laughs> was distracting. It's like trying to weave in the memes. Come on. <laughs> we live in a society. <laughs> yeah, thank you. I knew I was yeah. saying the wrong. <laughs> yeah. like somebody in chat's probably already saying, oh, nah, he said nah. the wrong word, but, it's like, <laughs> but say it to make the point. Somebody will correct your memory for you. <laughs> right. Um, so, but when it came to, uh, like, speaking of the Joker and Robin, and, of course, obviously, death in the family is always a big, um, it's a big story, obviously, in the in the Batman canon. A lot of people talk about it. Um, when it came to Batman versus Superman, I mean, obviously, when we saw those first trailer, that first trailer, and they showed the Robin costume, it's got the ha-ha jokes on you, Batman, on there. So we know, we're like, oh, shit, they brought in the whole, like, uh, you know, Joker killed Robin thing. Is mm -hmm. it Jason Todd? Is it Dick Grayson? There was a lot of back and forth. Um, Zach was like, no, I, I wanted Dick Grayson. I, my story, it was Dick Grayson that got killed. And then when I had him on, on, on the Vox stream for the first time, we talked about that. And he mentioned that the reason why he wanted that for his story is because he felt that if it was Dick, if it was Dick that got killed, that, that, would send Bruce into like this whole other path of like where he kind of was 20 years. Like what were your, what were your thoughts about that? Like as it not being Jason Todd, because obviously it would strike Bruce different if it was Dick that got killed as opposed to Jason. Well, with Jason, of course for a while, my answer on why is he different in this movie than other versions? Uh, my answer for that was kind of like, why is, uh, how, how in the world does that empathetic kid become Anakin Skywalker? How does that, punk anakin become darth vader and for yeah. a while my answer was because that's what george wanted and uh, <laughs> eventually i thought of, of of good explanations like the anakin change i will get back to the relevance here but the anakin change like his how anakin like the empathetic kid in episode one how he becomes that jerk anakin it's kind of like um the changes you see in someone who becomes a addicted to some serious drugs where it's interfering with their lives and it's like yeah it is it's like he's getting hooked on the dark side that change in personality does seem to fit that mm -hmm. and then they they do it again in the more recent than the later movies when the the dynamics of the family with leah han and their son is like they're dealing with a child that they've lost to drugs now getting back to the, the the Snyder thing for a while my explanation on why is he why is this different why did he go this way when he did in the comics my answer was because that's what Snyder wanted you know, <laughs> Batman v Superman takes like 14 ridiculous coincidences to get these guys into their fight which just makes the point of it's really hard to make that and then it takes a really conveniently timed coincidence on their mom's names to solve it yeah uh, but uh there was somebody who'd read uh, my book and a part in the, uh, maybe the trauma chapter, maybe the Robin chapter. I know it was the, definitely the trauma chapter. Uh, I was talking about how after Jason dies in the comics. Now, initially, for the next month's comics and right after that, it doesn't come up because they'd been written already. You know, he died by phone vote. Uh, but, but in terms of looking at it psychologically, ah, Batman's not addressing this. And you know what? For people in, in a state of PTSD, that's pretty common. But the ones in the worst PTSD aren't addressing things during the month afterwards. And so they're going to have worse. And then it goes further along. You're getting into the stories. Batman's getting more violent. Batman's mm. getting more self-destructive. Marv Wolfman, when he's writing Batman Year th 3 and then more so in uh, Along the Place of Dying, 
gets into the fact that Batman has gotten more violent and more self-destructive. Alfred's commenting about how, you know, it used to be not that normal, not that frequent for me to have to stitch you up. It's happening so often now you're getting so much more destructive and self-destructive. So he was on a really bad path after Jason's death uh, until a, a, a Tim Drake shows up and, and helps Batman ground himself again. And somebody once asked me the question, well, what if Tim didn't show up? Could he have stayed on that path and wound up the Batman that we see in Batman versus Superman? And I was like, you know, and I, I really appreciated the fact that they were building on my logic there. <laughs> but I was like, that's a brilliant question. That is a wonderful question. I, I think that d- really does help uh, explain. It's like the path that he'd been in before Tim Drake showed up in the comics is a path that could wind up with where he is in Batman versus Superman. Yeah. So it doesn't it, have to be it doesn't have to be Dick Grayson. I think some of that goes back to Snyder's old disdain for heroism. Yeah, it's he he has a disdain for heroism. It's easy to find in his history. He used to say he would never want to do a Superman movie. <laughs> and then he did one. Yeah. Um no, I, I always thought it was interesting because it's like, you know. You know, because what would have more of an impact? Did he feel more of like a failure if it was Dick that got killed um, as opposed to another Robin and there wasn't another Robin? And I think he always like was Zach always had a plan of like, I mean, obviously, when it comes to movies, I mean, there's so much, so much story that you could fit. that You could just cram into these movies and, then you know, power to the filmmakers to try to do as much as possible to like cram like, hey, remember this part? Remember this, you know? And, um, you know, it's really difficult. And then, of course, fanboys are like, what the hell, man? You didn't do it right. You know, that's always the way it is. Like, that's not the way it's supposed. It's like it's supposed to be not the way. Well, why know? tell us the same story exactly. somewhere else in the exact same way? Let's exactly. do something interesting and clever that says something else, too. Says yeah. something more that brings the best of what we've seen already, but still has something smart and new to say. Amen to that. Amen to that. And then, but did you, did you like the fact that, I mean, even going back to what you said, it was like with the whole Tim Drake thing was the fact that Bruce was on this path of just being like, all right. I mean, and, and what I, when people comment about him killing and branding people and everything like that, and they're like, what the hell was he doing? I'm like, it's addressed in that first Alfred and Bruce scene when, when Alfred drops the paper and goes new rules and Bruce is just shaking it off. Like, We've always been criminals. What are you talking about? And then Alfred's like, uh, I don't know about all this. Yeah, it's, was- a, it's a new level of the escalation that's been building for it's yet another exactly. step in what he's been. Because it's escalation. Well, it continues to escalate unless something reroutes a person. And as much as we make fun of that Martha moment, <laughs> as, it, and as silly as it seems, sometimes it takes some simple little thing to yeah. make a person reflect and, and on the path that they've taken. Sometimes it's just seeing their own reflection at a key moment and, and, and seeing what they're becoming and thinking about and having that moment of clarity. And yeah, the, the Martha moment, especially the timing of it, is still incredibly contrived. Uh, but it is, oddly enough, his reaction is true to real psychology. Yeah. Yeah, it was like a like all of a sudden it just like it just rang true. Like all of a sudden, I mean, he was pretty much all he had to do was just drop his arm, and Superman was dead. You know, it, that 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 spear was going to go right into him. But then that one moment, and then he's just like you could just see it happening where he just you see it happening in his face, and then he throws the spear away. I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah. The I know that's always going to be like the the joke meme and stuff like that, the Martha moment. But at the same time, there's a lot there when you get past that the coincidence and all that stuff, you see how he just right there goes, oh shit. And then right after that, he's like, no, 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 no. Even though you're Superman and you could probably fly and go, you know, rescue your mom very easy. No, I'm going to do this. I'm going to take on a half a dozen dudes and I'm going to save your mom. And he does. And when, I mean, and that's, and it leads to one of the best, I think, you know, Batman fucking, you know, fight scenes where he just beats up these guys like crazy and then saves Superman's mom. I thought, you know, it's just it's it's great. So I, it, it was almost like when that happened and he wanted to really redeem himself, I guess, and just save save Martha in, in his and in his brain. It's save Martha, save Martha, save Martha, save Martha. 
And I think that had, you know, obviously that had a lot to do. Obviously, Superman gets killed. And then when we get to the actual Justice League, um, Zack Snyder's Justice League, we have a different Bruce. We have a different Batman. It's not that same Batman that we had that was just like, I don't care about anything. I'm going to brand guys. I'm going to shoot stuff, blow up cars. Now he's got a team. He's got people. You know, he's got he's got Diana. He's got Barry. He's got Victor. It's like it's almost like what you were talking about when somebody says, well, yeah, if Tim Drake didn't come along, would he be on that still on that path? It's almost like if the you know, if Clark and all these guys didn't come along, he probably would still be on that path, too. But then all of a sudden we get this different ba uh, Bruce and Batman in where he literally goes, faith, Alfred, faith. It's like, what? <laughs> You were branding you. You were branding guys in the last movie. Now you're just like faith, <laughs> like well, okay. but in the in Justice League, either version, yeah. he's apparently not killing people anymore. Yeah, he's not. So he's yeah, but well, well you know, we're I just mean, not seeing it on screen. But it, well, you got to go with the story you see to a large degree. Like, he doesn't right. seem to be killing people anymore. No, he doesn't. Well, see that mobile just... still has some big damn guns in it. It still has some, well, you got parademons, you know, you got a key. I mean, does that qualify? I know there's, it's funny too, when it comes to the argument, sometimes people will be like, oh, he's still killing these aliens. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> of course he's going to kill these, these hell beings. They're called parademons for God's sakes. They're from a whole other planet, a whole other realm of whatever the hell. It's like, who cares about that? But I mean, it's, that's it's like, it's like shooting, you know, flying sharks that are attacking. Right, <laughs> exactly. Right, you're gonna have piranhas. Dude. He's shooting piranhas. Big, He's shooting piranhas. buggy, big, winged, piranhas. butterfly looking, bug looking piranhas. That's what he's yeah. doing. That's what he's doing. But, um, but yeah, when it, um, I just always love that transition, like you know, especially you know, and we saw the, the theatrical version that was all over the place, which is you know, um, you know, um, but then of course, when we see the four hour version and see like it all break down. Well, what were your initial thoughts when it came to uh, the full-on Zack Snyder's Justice League? Enjoy it? Oh, yeah. Actually, yeah. Um, I had been, <laughs> been kind of worried. It's like a four-hour movie when I've already seen the main parts already. And then, well, I'll watch half tonight. I'll watch the other <laughs> half tomorrow night. Um, and then four hours later, I've seen the whole thing. Uh, yeah. It moved. Uh, it, I mean, the first half is a lot slower. And yet, overall, it was still moving at a much. It was moving at a better pace than I was expecting. And mm -hmm. uh, no, I was I was very, very interested in that. There are a couple of things where Whedon wrote better lines because that's his thing. And there are some some issues that he got into, uh, yep. like like then actually discussing whether or not to race Superman. Uh, but you know, and. Of course, Ween's version, Wonder Woman doesn't blow a whole lot of dudes away in front of a you know, school group of children. Uh, <laughs> Come on, that was cool! <laughs> but for the most part, the starter version <laughs> is clearly the better one. <laughs> no, I get, uh, um, and what are your thoughts about like uh, how Keaton is coming back as, as, uh, as Batman? I'm excited. I'm excited to see what happens. Yeah. You have some sense of what what happened to him over the years. That's and, what I'm curious yeah. about. Yeah did did he and his Selena hook up and have a daughter daughter named Helena somewhere along the way <laughs> more than long enough? Let yeah. Let's have a sense of what has life been like since then. Now, like with Spider Man No Way Home, we don't know much about what their lives have been like since then. We we, we really have because yeah. they did not mention any villains we didn't already know about. Uh, we know that. That, that 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 was always interesting to me because you know they have that that moment where they talk about oh yeah I fought an alien and I fought an alien and they only fought an alien yeah I know they only mention they only mention like the villains that we saw but I'm like well hasn't it been like ten years shouldn't well there it, it be... was, I mean they did that deliberate for one of, I mean each of the other Spider Man we found out something that yeah that Toby and his MJ made it work out mostly and. That uh, the Andrew Garfield Spider Man has gotten more violent. You know, there was somewhere along the way he stopped pulling punches. There's uh -huh. like this, there, we, even though we don't know specific things he's done, he didn't bring up any villains that he's fought since you know, a guy in a rhino outfit. Uh, that he <laughs> yeah. we know something about the emo. We know something about the emotional journey they've both been on. 
Yeah. And they deliberately decided not to go into other story details because they didn't want to distract from this still being. They were there in service to the Tom Spider-Man story, and they were both happy to do it that way. Although, Andrew, it was, well, okay, only if Toby's on board. But uh, And now, Andrew's the one we... Because Toby, you feel there's a more of a complete journey. We don't have to see him play Spider-Man again, even though we'd enjoy yeah. seeing him Spider play Spider-Man again. Absolutely. We don't have to see him again. We have a sense of him having a full life. With but Andrew. With Andrew, he didn't get his Amazing Spider-Man 3. He's Jeez. left in a terrible state after that mess of Amazing Spider-Man 2. God, and, and even if it and so but and we yeah. see he's he's got some personal redemption in this one. We want to see where he is next. Yes, we, we want, want to see, see that. something else. And and, and I like the Spider-Man of Venom's universe. Exactly. Oh, that's that's yeah, I totally agree with that. And 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 I even like I think I asked a question on my more normal live show is what if they do an amazing spider-man 3 do they just totally just get rid of what they were trying to do with the sinister six and all that stuff and just kind of show where he is i mean i guess that's what they have to do they have to just kind of throw all that away but i mean so does that mean when we if we actually get an amazing spider-man 3 we get that mj introduction his mj which was supposed to be an amazing spider-man 2 shaneline woodley shot scenes oh yeah all, that's yeah right. they all got removed which was weird because it's like, man, that I thought that damn set that up. I don't, I don't know. know. She might be like uh, Robin in the Burton movies. They cast a Robin for Batman '89. Yeah, that's and, true. And right, Marlon. Like, no, no, we're not going to include you. The story works better without Robin. They yeah. cast a Wayans as a yeah. Robin. In Marlon Wayans. Returns. Like, nope, you're out. It still works best if we cut Robin out of the story. So there, there, there was Marshall always Robin. Be like that. There was always Robin in there. Uh, I'm gonna bring somebody in, Mr. Ray from you know he uh, he uh, you talk to Scott and Tom uh, Tim. He uh, works with them. He's part of the squad cast crew. What's going on, Ray? How's it going? It's All going right. pretty good. Yeah, yeah. I, I I'm I, I'm I'm taking a break from I I, I was having a uh, <laughs> was having a meta moment. Um, uh oh. Which, which which by the way, completely agree with. Your described we, we, there is a especially the other problem with the third amazing Spider Man is you know there there were there are leaks we've seen actual photos of Shailene Woodley like as yeah. MJ like and and the, and the clips like that that one clip of him talking to his father in the in the, the graveyard that yeah. has like made the rounds over the years so it's like yeah there's it's way too incomplete we need that third movie at the very least we need that third movie and you know what well, and, and and also on top of that. Into the Spider Verse doesn't help it either, because <laughs> now we're thinking of Emma Stone as Spider Gwen. Oh, that's true. It's like, yes, come on. Even though she's not voicing ahead. it, yeah, but yeah, but but she, but Spider Gwen. I mean, yeah, no, the, the like, new Hawkeye is voicing her in that. Yeah, I know, right? Uh, yeah, um, uh, Haley Steinfeld. Haley I mean, yeah, she's all over the place, man. She's just like the it yeah. girl, man. That's she's all over. But but at the same time, when you look at that character, it's like, yeah. We could easily, or they get a, and there's been, you know, I don't know if it's rumors and not really. I think it's just more theories is the fact that, you know, why couldn't they bring Emma Stone back to, because if we have this multiverse concept, Give how can we multiples not? of spider Gwen? Why do we only have to have multiples of Pete? Exactly. Yeah, there, there, there's no reason for, there, there, there's really no excuse at this point. Truthfully, there, like there's nothing in Canon that says you can't bring her back oh no you totally and, and imagine imagine bringing her back or imagine okay so imagine this i mean the whole thing when it comes to andrew's um spider-man is you know he tried to save her she died and then he got his redemption a little bit in no way home by saving this mj um tom tom holland's mj imagine if there was like a moment in amazing spider-man 3 where he's falling and somebody swoops in and saves him and guess who it is? Mm -hmm. Spider Gwen. Oh, yeah. you know, I mean, it almost writes itself. You know, it's it's almost one of those moments where when you're watching No Way Home, we all knew when we saw in the trailer that MJ was falling. Yeah. We're like, Andrew's going to save her. It's kind of obvious right there. <laughs> so, I, I mean, at, at the very least, that was the hope. Yeah. Like, I, I, I really was. I, I honestly was not expecting the movie to like be as on the nose about it as it was that that was that was really a surprise that but the way that they did it and and i love it when you know when they land and mj is just like oh thank you like are you okay and he doesn't say a thing but you see it on his face you oh, yeah. know exactly what he's thinking he just 
he just doesn't say anything. He's holding back tears and he just nods. And it's just like, oh, that was a perfect way to do that. Yeah. Well, you, you, well, you, we you've, said it, you've said it before, Dave. His his emotive acting, like his facial yeah. acting is just... Andrew Garfield, ridiculous. man. That <laughs> yeah. guy knows how to cry. <laughs> he oh. knows how to do that. Yeah. He knows how I, to I see somebody in here saying, Spider-Man talk, time to tune out. Hey, if we're talking about Spider-Man some way or another... We're still talking about Batman. We're talking about guys who lost their parental figures. We're talking about guys carrying their right. guilt. It's it's just comparison and contrast. <laughs> you got to follow the implicit aspect of the conversation. Uh, uh, well, yeah. I, and and, and, and I've, I've said this. I, I've tried. I've tried to implore people with this. And it again, I, I have to put this disclaimer before I say this every time. Is of course. Like, with all due respect to Superman fans. With all due respect to Wonder Woman fans, Flash fans, Aquaman fans, with all due respect to Avengers fans, there is Batman and there is Spider-Man. They are 1A and 1B, and everyone else is several levels below both of them in terms of popularity across the planet. That's just that that's not even subjective, truthfully. If we look yeah. at merchandise, if we look at how many movies they both continue to get, no matter what happens with everybody else, like so that's and, and and there are there are tons of similarities you know i just um okay i i i just watched a i'll go ahead and and, and put this out there because uh i've been doing my catch-ups for my catch-up on dc tv for dc tv squadcast there's a lot of dc animated universe stuff i never watched because when i growing up i only watched batman the animated series <laughs> well, so you start with the best of course I, yes absolutely it's it, and it's still the best it subjectively speaking but like yeah. i've been getting caught up and i will just say that this sunday's episode i hope is shway enough for everyone oh wow that's <laughs> nice. you said shway enough oh yes. i think we kind of got I, that idea right there so yeah but but i but i i couldn't help but draw some comparisons to spider-man with that version of the character because he's in high school he he has a lot of the same like wise cra wise cracks when he talks like he he's much more of a talker than bruce wayne oh <laughs> And, yeah. and just and just the whole like the the idea of balancing being a superhero with your personal life and school like what was there was that one episode where he had to you, you know the whole met class the family the family class where it's like you have a sack of flour this is your pretend kid you've got to keep it for a week and you know like take care of it and you'll be graded on this and he had that egg baby it's the most hilarious <laughs> most hilarious episode of the show maybe that's right. <laughs> That was that was such a that was the, the, by far the, I I laughed the most during that episode, but just it hit me. It was like okay, he's well, essentially like a Spider Man version of Batman. He <laughs> very much is, and it's funny too because uh, on the last episode of Batman the Animated Stream that uh, me and Scott were talking about, it was um, it was that one episode with the, that the intro uh, the strange secret of Bruce Wayne, where Bruce goes to that resort. And uh, Dr. Hugo Strange, one of the only times that he's shown shows up in the actual Batman, the animated series. I know he shows up references or something like that, maybe in the Justice League series or something like that, uh, that we figured out. But, you know, he has a machine, which very much was like when we were talking about it, like, oh, Jesus Christ, Joel Schumacher and whoever wrote Batman Forever. They totally ripped off some of this stuff because Bruce is, you know got this machine with like these prongs to his head and on the big screen right there hugo strange like even though he's fighting it it's a cool little sequence because you see young bruce and you see this crazy dream sequence where he sees like the bats and the ah uh, you know and, and whatnot but there's a scene at the end because you know we get joker two-face and penguin showing up because strange is trying to sell oh i got hey guys uh pious bitter gets this tape that you know uh who batman really is and um, of course, it all falls flat and blah, blah, blah. But there's like a scene where Batman's like hanging off the, 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 the plane. And then he does, they're like in the desert and there's like cliffs and stuff. And Batman like does the grappling hood stuff. And I was like, I literally wrote in my notes and I told Scott and he started laughing. He goes, you're right. I'm like, he does some Spider-Man shit. Like he literally like grappling hooks onto like a cliff thing and swings, uses like you know, this force. And I was like, geez, this is totally like Spider-Man stuff that is happening right here in this episode. So, yeah, well, I mean, back in the 50s, it's not like Batman went swinging around town. 
Batman yeah. and Robin were not just regularly swinging from one skyscraper <laughs> to another. We take that for granted in the comics, topic comics now. Batman yeah. and Robin and Spoiler and the whole Bat family, they're just swinging around town as if it's as easy as Spidey <laughs> shooting his webs. Where did that come from? I know. Where did it come from? You, um, uh, Travis, and both of you, actually, have you guys read uh, any Batman imposter books that have come out, stories? No. Yeah, you should so check it is, out. What is that? What is? I forgot who the writer is. I have uh, only the first two issues. I think it was only like three issues so far. Um, it's a three-year Batman. And uh, the costume very much takes takes a lot, lot from um, the Battinson costume, to be honest. Um, but it's basically, it's a dark, super dark, gritty um, version. I mean, obviously there's been many, but it's it gets to a point where like, you know, you got this, you got this detective that is trying to figure out, you know, is Batman really like, did he really just kill like these guys by pushing them off a rooftop? But it's obviously not. That's why it's called Batman imposter. Um, but she brings up like when, when you see like the comic, the panels where she is trying to be like, all right, what do I know? And then she talks about, what do I know about Batman? And yeah, I mean, obviously with Spider-Man, you know, he could just sling, sling, thrip, thrip, whatever you want to, the sound effects called. And then it's like, I, I feel sorry for the person who has to clean up all that thing sometimes. But when it comes to Batman, <laughs> well, I mean, will dissolve in a few hours. Oh, that's very true. I mean, that's true. The science of it. Yeah. So that makes sense. Um, but when it comes to Batman, I mean, he's got, I mean, it's literal cables and you know, zip lines and stuff like that. So most of the time he's probably not going to, you know, he's not going to be swinging around like that, obviously. And, but anything he leaves behind, that's evidence. And that's in this story where she talks about that, how they've gathered evidence like zip lines and, and, and rope and stuff like that, which I was like, oh, that's pretty cool that, you know, that a detective who's trying to think of like, you know, trying to piece things together. They sh she mentioned that because like I said, it is a three year Batman that is evolved. And there's like this whole subplot with Leslie Tompkins, you know, that really, you know, back to the whole psychology of the whole thing. I mean, she really like, she gets to the point where like, you have to have sessions with me or I call the cops and tell them Bruce Wayne is Batman. That's how like, Oh shit. She's not she's not effing around in this story. So pretty cool. Yeah, that's that's one of those I'll read either when it's complete or more likely yeah. ignoring my history uh, yeah. after uh, six months. <laughs> I'll, then, <laughs> I'll then binge six issues. Yeah. yeah. It's, I mean, they, they've been out for a bit. And it was funny because. Yeah. Yeah. No, 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 not yet. Um, but um. It was one of those where, like, I, I'll I always do this. I like once, like every two months, I'll go to like uh, before I go to the movies or something like that in my hometown that's over the hill right here. Um, I'll go to this big comic book store that's in in, in uh, on the corner over there, and I'll just spend probably like over a hundred bucks and just books, books, get some, you know, just whatever. And then they'll sit, they'll sit on like on my couch for about another two months and then i finally go okay <laughs> let's sit down and read all this <laughs> you know i, I, I finally got in there dc universe infinite has been like oh mm -hmm. for me seriously like <laughs> oh i love that it, uh, I, I, I love what they've got available i mean it used it used to be a mess of an online site and with that much to it, it's oh good i think the marvel yeah. site was the one that used to be truly hard to find anything and then eventually i went back to it and the marvel's got a very good online site too but it, it, uh, it, i've i've really relied on the dc site for a while now it, it, it the marvel site has gotten better it's still not like their curation is still not in the same place yeah. case in point i was talking about the the meta moment that i had earlier i i've, I've taken a break from because i was sitting I, I i'm in the middle of scott snyder's new 52 batman which i've never read before so this is a new about, experience. About how far along are you? I am about. To, I am a couple of issues from finishing Death in the Fam Death of the Family. Okay. Um, because Scott advised me that it would be a good idea because I've been reviewing these for the uh, the Patreon on my site, the Flycast, and he advised me that it would be a good idea to get through Zero Year before Tuesday. So I said, "All right, let me power through this." 
Okay. Um, and this this is based on some speculation on things that we have seen in trailers, and and, and he has not watched any of the clips. Well, I and have. the importance of the Riddler in that storyline. Yeah, he mentioned that too. Yes, he he did bring that up. But I was literally earlier, I was reading Death of the Family while listening to the score. <laughs> And it was oh, just, that... <laughs> yes. And it was just a yeah. really, it was one of those like unique experiences where I was like, I'm, I'm reading a Batman comic that I've never read before listening to a score of a Batman movie that I haven't seen yet. Yeah. I, I I'm just in Batman mode now. Like I am, I'm just, I'm it's hard not ready. to be, it's hard not to be. I mean, like it was funny because uh, there was like a, a clip of man, I don't know about, I mean, Ray, we're in the same page where anything that comes out for this movie, we can't help watching. Yeah. I, I, you know, there's sometimes there's movies where I'm going, I'm not going to watch, not going to watch. When it comes to the Batman, I can't help it. I'm like, yeah. And there's like yeah. a, there's like that beautiful shot of where we actually find out what the, the logo is kind of for. I, that we are all speculating, the, you know. The, that was like the first time I saw a shot where it's like, okay, maybe I don't know if I wanted to see that shot, <laughs> but yeah. I still yeah. looked at it's it. It's a three-hour movie. There will be plenty <laughs> yes. of surprises. We yes. can watch, you know, a lot of clips and a lot of trailers, and there's still a whole lot more movies. We've only seen through. about eleven minutes. The, 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 the <laughs> well, score. Maybe. Well, and the, and the funny thing is, like that the, the score is like an hour and fifty six minutes. The officially released oh, version, shit. which of course, and it that that does include the three themes that were already previously released for Batman, Riddler, and Catwoman at the end. And there's also a, a like a twelve minute long piano sonata at the end of it called Sonata in Darkness, which is really good. But like, it's that's just the released music because they always I fully expect this. I'm gonna. We're gonna. There's gonna be a quarter of the mu of the music that we hear when we see the movie that, are, that is not gonna be in that official release. And I'm gonna be irritated. And I'm gonna wait for a deluxe edition. And be like, give me all the the music, please, because I'm tired mm -hmm. of you skimping on. Because I'm gonna. I know I'm gonna hear like of all the greatness that I've listened to like thrice today. I've I've listened to it three times. I've listened to the whole thing three times today. I, it, it's I I'm ready. I I am ready for this movie. But like I know what's gonna happen. I'm gonna get in that theater. And a scene's going to come up, and I'm going to hear something really awesome, and I'm going to be like, it's not on the soundtrack. I can't <laughs> listen to it when I get home. What is wrong with you? Why would you do that to me? But but yeah, it's two hours and 55 minutes, and I, 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 I got to tell you, like, and it's tough because I see a lot of perception out there, and I'm sure you've seen this, Dave, and, and uh, maybe you've seen this too, Dr. Langley, but like the, the whole there's this conversation about how grounded this movie is going to be. Yeah. And I've seen the phrase Nolan 2.0, like get thrown around Twitter. And I'm sorry, like after, I don't know if, have you listened, how, how much of, have you, did you listen, the score officially released today? Either of you. I haven't listened to any of it, sadly. I've only listened to, like I said, the, the main Batman theme, the Ca okay. Catwoman Riddler theme. And we got Mr. Scott. Yeah, I want to see, the, movie. I right see the movie first. Yeah. Hey Scott! Now Scott's jumping in on the party. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry you started you started talking about the music, and I was like, okay, I have to I have to interject at this point. <laughs> now I must speak. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, well, it would, just what I was going to say, and Scott totally chime in on this. Th this movie does not sound grounded. Oh no! No 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 no! <laughs> it does not no, sound no, no, grounded no, no. at all. To be honest with you, like if I if I'm comparing this to, to to Zimmer and James Newton Howard from TDK, oh no, this is this goes much further. This this is some <laughs> weird in between between Zimmer and Burton. To be yes. honest, oh I'm sorry, yes. uh, I'm sorry, Elfman, yeah. right, Elfman, Elfman. 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 Yeah, yes. I said Burton, but I was thinking Elfman. Yes. And, but it's about him being emotionally ungrounded. Mm, <laughs> Yo, I trust like me. that. I like that. No, in the midst I, of a world that is grounded. <laughs> the world the world is grounded he's not so much tim and i just finished recording the what i said please tim call it before the batman because it's basically just us in conversation talking about our hype for the batman movie because we're both going to get to see it on tuesday so we'll he's going to probably drop this tomorrow us pre-talking because our review of the batman will drop on friday morning so, like, for the normal people who go to see the movie, our review will be out. So, 
I had listened to the entire score. I'd read the junior novel prequel, which is really interesting if some of the concepts discussed in the junior novel are canon and show up in the movie. That's what you're talking about. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm so ready for that. <laughs> but listening to the score and Ray, I was not familiar with the fact that uh, Giacchino uh, does. Uh, Gino. Giacchino. Giacchino. Yes. I, I get yeah. that. <laughs> we, 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 I forget how many weeks ago that was we we found like steven found the clip we established that we were all saying it wrong, <laughs> literally, wrong. Literally, right. if, you go, if you go to his twitter he goes my name is pronounced jaquino and yeah. i probably yeah. just spent the entire episode <laughs> of our last episode saying it wrong but oh yeah just, of course <laughs> but i've got two tracks that i know are my favorites on the soundtrack mm. and okay. all right which ones i want to hear it uh <laughs> <laughs> Look at Ray's like cool. Bat in the Rafters Part Two. That's so good. <laughs> Which yeah, but it's so obviously good. is got to be the climax of the movie. Like, has just, to, yeah, it has to be That's musically. Like and then well, even the title. Yeah, even the title. And then the the track that obviously has to be the Batmobile chase mm -hmm. because it's called Highway to the Anger Zone. Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. That totally. Yeah. I, well, I, 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 yeah. And that was, that was one of those when I listened to it, I was like, like the first time I listened to it, I didn't necessarily put that together. But then the second time I was like, okay, think of the, think of the, I got you. Think of the, think I of got you. I got you. Right. Yeah, and, yeah. and I'm just putting it together in my head. I'm like, oh yeah, that's what this is. No, no. <laughs> I didn't even need the title. You just listen to the music and it's like sounds like a chase sequence. This sounds like a car chase. Like, yeah. yeah. And I was talking to uh, the other Tim, uh, Tim Gannon from Beer with Geeks at Thought Bubble Audio. And he was like, oh, no, this is this is this music is very driving and unrelenting, pun intended. <laughs> I was like, yes. Yeah, it sounds like a car chase. And I was just like, it's that one where like you're driving. It's like when you listen to a good James Bond soundtrack and you're like. <laughs> oh yeah, this is where the Aston Martin is like whipping around because it's like you you're driving and you just suddenly want to start your your friction gets a, it gets a little heavier as yeah. you're as you're driving yeah. the car. Yeah. Yeah. But uh yeah. those two are my favorites. So it's and also good to your point, Ray, it's like two hours worth of music in a three hour movie. Maybe there isn't a whole lot of unreleased stuff because I can believe in a three hour movie there being like an hour of unscored scenes. Yeah, something about an unscored. I mean, going back to Dark Knight, that that um, when the Joker was trying to get um, what's his name, or we're trying to get Dent, uh, who's in the armored truck. That whole sequence. I mean, I think it's like uh, scoreless until Batman shoots out of the bat of the tumbler on the bike, right? I think it depends that's on like, what you mean by score. There are a bunch of places in the Nolan film where there's this very low tone to put you mm. on edge. Yes. Um, and, and, and sometimes it's it's obvious, but sometimes it's only there. You got to listen carefully to realize it's there to keep your nerves on edge. Mm. Yeah. Didn't that, think that, about that. No, that, that's he's right. Now the the scene you're talking about though in Dark Knight, you're right. It is it is a silent chase until the bat pod shows up. Okay. It is it, it, like as far as like, no, like there is no score behind that. But no, there are other moments that he where he's right, where like within the whole trilogy where that is the case. But that's the thing is like I, I there are the low moments in this score aren't that low. <laughs> they just aren't. They're just not that low that like they like you're still hearing like even like one of the lower like one of the the, the lower, I guess octave ones in it like that the, the ones that, that isn't quite as hard charging and this is where like if we've dave this if you've watched the clips don't tell like, don't blah, 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 blah. no i'm, <laughs> I'm not gonna say, won't say any of the clips don't worry no, I, know scat. I will say like and, and I, but I'll they're great about, aren't they yeah they're so fantastic <laughs> they are, they're really, they're so good. i've they're seen real. the movie in three days i'm good thanks <laughs> but the but but uh jacchino does this I, he does this with all of his scores and he, he did it with Star Trek. He did it with like, uh, I think he did it with Rogue One where like he comes up with these punny titles for his tracks and the <laughs> great with war for the eight uh, war for the planet of the apes too. Yes, you're right. He did. The great thing about his puns is you won't fully get what they mean until you've seen the movie. 
That's after awesome. you've after you've seen the movie, you'll totally you go, be like, oh, okay. yes, yeah. absolutely. You'll be, so once you've seen the movie, you'll go back and look at these like, OK, now I got OK, I get what that means. So there's a couple of these, though, that like point to things that we've seen in the clips. Yes. Yes. Like the one that's called Funeral and Far Between. There's another <laughs> there, there's two others. And I don't even know if I should name them because, I mean, you haven't seen the clips, so it's not like you know what it is, but. I'll tell you, Dave, you'll understand this. Like, if you listen to Escaped Crusader. Oh, Jesus. Yes. <laughs> yes. You know what that is. Woo! You know exactly what oh, that is. God. And it's, you, it, you, you're not, you're going to know exactly what it is, too, yeah. when you want. I mean, oh, when I still, clip, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. but I, I still love the first track. Uh, like, the first track was the one that led me to the, understand the puns, because the first track on the, on the score is called You Can't Fight City Halloween. Oh, <laughs> mm -hmm. this movie's gonna have so much like long oh, Halloween. Yeah. I mean, uh, again, won't say anything, but yeah, there's well, uh, there's another yeah. track called "The Great Pumpkin Pie." Oh, I want to know what that means. <laughs> and I I want to know I I because I'm like, wait a minute, the the Great Pumpkin Pie? So are they riffing on Charlie Brown? The Great That's pumpkin what I pie? thought. Like, is that <laughs> you know? Is, but it is also that makes that... me think Thanksgiving because when I think of pumpkin pie, I think of Thanksgiving. So yeah. if we're kind of going with this sort of like the hot, you know. Maybe there being some holidays involved, See, like the okay, long that was Halloween. The question, that was the question I was going to ask. Back to the long Halloween. Oh, zing! Mm -hmm. That's that was the question I was going to ask you guys. Is like, do we think that this movie is going to take place like within a couple of weeks, or is it going to span over a couple of months? A few I, months? Think, I, I think it's what entirely. I think it's entirely possible that it's a couple of months. I do. Yeah. I think it's very possible that it's a longer timeline that we're dealing with in this movie. Which is not, you, which we're not used to with Batman yeah. movies at all. No. What do you think, Travis? Do you think it's going to take place over a long? Be whatever the storyteller. <laughs> oh man! <laughs> I, thank, I, you you know, know, thank you for the chance to, for that callback. Right? Yeah, I know. I'm about to say, I'm like, if you don't title a book like that in the near future, <laughs> you know, just have that whatever. The I never wanted it to make. Nobody will know what the book's about. What is this book about? It's about the people who wanted to make something. Yeah, no, but uh, yeah. I what? What do you really think? Like, if you had to like guess, though, would you think, think that it, it takes? It will seem like it covers a larger span of time than we're used to yeah. with a lot of the Batman adventures. Although you can say, well, Batman Begins covers. Yes, yeah, yeah. It's 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 this story at this point in time, a story at this other point in time, but then the big current adventure is. However long they're dealing with the Joker there. Uh, no, I, I think it is for a three-hour film and them not revisiting the origin as literally as has been, been done before. Logically, it's going to cover a bigger span of time. I, however, I will tell you this. When it comes to the origin, once again, depending on how much of... I, I have to believe that concepts introduced in that junior prequel novel had to come from at least someone giving the author some bullet points about, hey, you need to include this stuff in oh, this yeah, book. Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, I I'm going to tell you, there's going to be there's some twists. Like, Ray, remember before our Time Cop review when Jordan said he's really interested? Oh, was it you or Jordan who said, I was really interested where Gotham is when this movie starts i said that because he said he he and tim were saying they're interested where gotham ends up at the end of the movie and i'm and i'm like no i i'm very curious to see what because this is a gotham it's very I, I think it's very possible we're going to see a gotham we've never seen before well i'll tell you as far as the movies go we're going to start in a place that the movies have never started before if the concepts introduced in that prequel novel play into this movie. Interesting. It okay. was, I, I read this last, I read this a week ago, last Friday. And I was like, like my, my antenna were up or like, Ooh, I like where this is going. Well, I, I, Pat, Pattinson kind of hinted at that. He said that, I, I think he was the one that said that the way the movie starts is unlike how any, any other, other Batman movie Batman has started. Movie. Yeah. So it's, it's very, like, okay. it's very noir seventies. Like, and yeah. that's also interesting. Cause they keep on, they keep on referencing 70 cinema 
And there's at least one major concept that the novel introduced that is also very 70s Batman. If you're familiar with the Denny O'Neill, yeah. the Denny O'Neill, Neil Adams era of Batman, there's a concept that I was like, oh, I know where you got this from. Like mm. the definitive period in comic book storytelling of Batman. <laughs> there it is right there how so, dare you it's no, for the, the, <laughs> God, for i because i've look I, i've been watching the, the 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 feed too for those who don't know exactly what novel you're talking about what title do, do they look for if they want to find that it's it's literally called before the batman yeah it's like a prelude comic um hold book, on whatever. props give me a second yeah, he like yeah. Right. Scott's yes, one of those. those. That likes to, he likes to show us uh, figures and and props and everything. I'm surprised he didn't have it with him. I, I actually am surprised the, too. Usually like, he just has to reach down and go here. It is right. The fact that I hate to get out of point, Stephen, and... that it wasn't at my ankles like everything else tends to be. <laughs> <but>. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There it is. Okay. Right. It's yeah. only nine ninety nine. It's a glossy hardcover. It's got a pull out poster and some photos. Wow. But I mean. Even the audiobook was only two hours and 20 minutes. I mean, and that's an audiobook, and I read faster than an audiobook reads it to me. But uh, <laughs> I mean, but this is it. And but it's you know, safer with the audiobook when you're in the car. It's not well, as that, safe using this when you're in the well, car. Well, I mean, it depends. If, you ha if, you're, if it's at night, some asshole behind you has his brights on. Yeah, you could pull out a book and be like, oh, I can read now. <laughs> That's an old George Carlin joke, by the way. Anyways, uh, yeah. I, I, but, <laughs> but, but I mean, now some people once again, and I always call it the prequel junior novel because you've got to understand this is that you would find this in the kids section of a bookstore. It is not a terribly complicated story, and Bruce Wayne for most of it is seventeen. So it's oh it's, wow, okay, yeah, it it's not meant to be a adult novel the, the the adult one that will be based off the movie will probably come out after the movie is released it's right. a ya it, prequel it is it is a it is a, i would honestly i wouldn't even call it ya ya suggest sorry being the english teacher uh ya <laughs> would suggest something more on a teen level this really more strikes me like sort of a middle school middle school level okay uh, at least of a reading level um but with some really cool Fast and the Furious references that I felt, let's just say that the Batmobile we've seen in the trailers makes a lot of sense when you read this book. Oh, okay. okay. So that'll right. probably help then. Um, and then, okay. So like another thing too is like when it comes to the age of Bruce Wayne in this movie, obviously it's a two-year Batman. And then I, I just wonder like, what references are we going to get? Or is there going to be any kind of League of Shadows thing? Is it going to be kind of, no. like, you don't, you don't think so? I don't think so. I don't think so. Either. Nolan relied on it so. Heavily. Yeah, he did. It was yeah. so yeah. central to his stuff. I think Reeve absolutely is not going to do that in this movie. I yeah. honestly, and I think I've I've talked about this with Ray. Uh, you know, I feel like what, instead of League of Shadows, what you're going to end up with is you know more of this, more of this kind of Alfred, because mm. the Andy Circus oh, yeah. Alfred is definitely going to be more of a Earth One Alfred, and you know, like like. And I was telling you, Ray, like more like Sean Pertwee in Gotham. Yeah. You know what's funny about that, Scott, was the other day I was because I was I, I listened to our conversation that we had before Time Cop the other day again. And I was thinking about all the comparative ages of the Alfreds in live action. And I realized that like Michael Caine, Jeremy Irons, Michael Goff were all in their like late they were like in the early 70s like late 60s early 70s i think irons was like 68 when he did Zack snyder's justice league like five years ago and now he's in he's like 73 and like so all of the so like alfred like those were all older alfreds but sean pertwee was like mid to late 50s when he did gotham and andy circus mm -hmm. is mid to late 50s now so it just makes sense like from an age standpoint that yeah they are the closer they're going to be the, the the Alfred comparison is closer between those two than they would be with any of the other versions of Alfred that we're going to see. And, well, th and there's also the idea of there being more you know, like once again, going back to this Alfred, this is, as I call it, this is the badass Alfred. This yeah, is <laughs> we want the badass Alfred. No, right? we're, we're, I, and I, I, I think we're going to get it. And I think it, 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 it's certainly a younger Alfred and. I, again, this points to there. there's further. Andy Circus is a mid 50s. He's like, yeah. I think he's, 
I think he's like I think he's mid to late fifties, if I remember yeah. correctly. I think he's either fifty seven you know or fifty nine. There's um, um, going back through uh, Batman Ego 57. again. There's a, there's a there's a there's a line in Batman Ego where he yeah. or I think Ego sure. talks about like um, uh, talks to Bruce about being like that celebrity kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And I was like, when, when I was like reread that, I went, oh shit. I mean, there's a line in the first Batman, the Batman trailer where he goes, you're turning into quite a celebrity. And I was like, mm-hmm. oh, there's one little, maybe little reference for Batman ego that, you know, we're getting right yeah. there. Like I, I didn't catch that when I watched that first trailer until I reread ego again. Well, well, one so. of the, cli- one of the clips that I'm sure you watch Dave, the, the good morning America one. Oh yeah, <laughs> that was well. That that, that was that's because they had him on the show, so it was a clip of him, and it's yeah. That I'll I won't go any yeah. further. As yeah, thank you. As a, you, right. your restraint is appreciated. Thank <laughs> yes. Well, I mean, it's a, it's a Bruce Wayne and Alfred back and forth. It is. I mean, well, right, because so, oh. but it was oh, it, okay. it, well, yeah. It's it's. But I I still think my favorite clip is the 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 GCPD one. <laughs> um, <laughs> you, you, you know what though, uh. Um, how do I let me? I'm, I'm trying to think of a non descript. No, I'm trying to think of a non I'm such a party pooper. This. I know. I am no, such no, no, a no. party um, pooper. Yeah, but we don't want to. But but there's people probably go. in the chat that don't haven't even seen the clips. Here, too. We're, 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 it's good to be resistant. I'll, 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 I'll use this. They one. know where they are. I'll, 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 I'll call it this, Dave. I'll, I'll call it the burglary. The burglary. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. yeah I, mean, I mean, obviously, yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah, 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 but it's just, but there's just something about that GCP. Have you seen all the clips, Travis? By the way, I think so. Yeah, okay. Do you know, you know, the GCPD one we're talking about, right? Gordon, yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, it's oh, just one of those. Was a surprise. That, that's still the most <laughs> shocking. No, it, it, it that's still we're the not going to give that away, but that was we're not going to give that away. No, I, I want Scott to shit his pants when he sees that. Scene. Yes, yeah. thank you. That's, that's yeah. what I want. The and beauty. you want to be there to witness it? <laughs> but then well, he can be, but you know, he has to make a bit of a trip. You right. better live stream that. Um, no, yeah. but yeah, I know it's it, it's one of those where you, where you watch it. I went, what the. Uh, and immediately just watched it like five more times going, did that just really happen? What? Well, the, well and, and, and Twitter totally had like I, I t- half of Twitter totally went WTF. <laughs> Why did that happen? <laughs> yeah. like, what is we need you answers. Don't know. What's funny about that is like, I'm like going, okay, I need to know the context. Why did that happen? And the aftermath, I, I'm like, I got to know, like, like that's yeah. that, that scene right there. I mean, I mean, when it comes to anything that was in the GCPD, I mean, this is not giving anything away because it was in the first trailer. I mean, we saw where Batman was like on a uh, table or something. I don't know if he was knocked out. And then he like tries to start fighting some of the cops and Gordon slams him up against the cage. The yeah, that's in right. the fandom trailer. That's gotta, I, yes. I'm thinking that's probably the same scene as this one. Maybe not three hour movie. Who knows? Um, but I'm just kind of going like, I want to what the what is happening right there? where Batman is losing his shit and Gordon literally slams him up against the cage. Like, dude, I mean, and it's right. funny too because Jeffrey Wright, Gordon, Hey, he, he, it's like this. I mean, he's a, he's a short dude, but you know, Jeffrey Wright, Gordon is like, Hey, I mean, he's like being that, that father figure Gordon, which I always really liked um, when it came to like Batman, the animated series especially but i just like the fact that it's like oh are we gonna get more of that you know when it came to the the burton hey, and hey, schumacher hey, not short he's 511 yeah but yeah but you know pattinson and the boots and stuff well, like that I, like free well but i i i do love his design though like like how they had because he's that's like the it's like the closest you can get to jeff it's like the closest you can get to gary oldman without being gary oldman as far yeah. as the look that they've given him uh and he's lieutenant gordon because it's only yeah. year two, so he's not even same thing as like how uh, Gary Oldman was. But I think with this one, I mean, I, I, they did a good job with you know because when it came to the uh, original movies, um, who was uh, who was Gordon in that? I always forget his name. In, uh, uh, like Pat Burton Hingle. movies. Oh, and, Pat Hingle. Pat Hingle. Pat Hingle. Yeah, but he was never. It, they never really tried to grab that Gordon Batman relationship. Like, no, you know, you got a little bit of it. You, you got a little bit of like, you know, like. Gordon was knew that he 
you could tell that Gordon and like Batman 89 knew that he wasn't like some menace that was going around killing people. And then when it came to Batman Returns, I mean, Travis and I were talking about it, how literally you have, you know, B Bruce just sitting in the dark and waiting. And, you know, you have right before that, you go, Gordon, you see him, you know, show up to the scene where the circus clan is going crazy. And he goes, you know, say, you know, shoot up the signal and blah, blah, blah. And then after all that madness, like he tries to talk to Batman, but Batman's just walking. And then he just goes, we'll see. <laughs> and then he just walks off. And you don't really have that dynamic, even with the Schumacher ones as well. So that's why when Nolan came in, it was like it was a good little dynamic when it came to uh, Gordon and Batman all the way to even like I rewatched Rises when Gordon was in the, the hospital and Bruce just like puts up a ski mask while he's wearing a, a suit and to visit him. And, you know, I mean, it fits the story full on. But I think when it comes to this version, we're going to get more of that. Like, I don't know. I just think we're, we're definitely going to get the crime scene. Batman shows up. I mean, we saw that in the first trailer where you see the point of view of Batman, you see Gordon walking and you see all the cops and the feds just going like, what the shit Batman is here. What is happening? That's also what I'm looking forward to as well. That has not been shown in other iterations is a crime scene visiting Batman. The, the, the idea right. that he, the idea that he's like the meddling private detective, where it's yes. like oh, that is they, something oh, oh. that has been missing from Batman throughout these films. Is Batman yes. as detective, uh, Michael Yusin, and he's showing it's like okay, the previous ones he's showing Batman titles, this one he's showing detective titles. Michael, who's been you know making his living on producing these movies for so long. He has been complaining for a while. Well, not complaining, but saying he really wants to see Batman as detective. And we have the closest we've come to that is really when Batman on his own steps into an apartment investigating and Scarecrow yep. ambushes them. And that's about as much as cool. we get of Batman as detective. And they said yeah. this is going to be Batman as detective. And of course, that goes back to why the cognitively oriented Riddler is the great enemy for him on this one. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we, it, there was a little hints of it with Nolan, like like you said, when when, it, when Scarecrow and Batman begins, then there was that one, you know, that part in Dark Knight where he showed up at another crime scene to take the bullet out of the uh, the brick, and then he tried to figure out. He's relying bullet. on the the James Bond tech. Yeah, and, I know. Mm -hmm. I was, uh, we need a smarter Batman this time. We need one smart <laughs> enough to be a real detective, not one who is like, well, Bane broke my back. I will now go after, after him and try to attack exactly the same way I did before. We need a smarter... <laughs> I, I love the Nolan movies, but we need a smarter Batman. Yeah, you know what? When I was revisiting, when I watched Rises again last weekend. I mean, it's not... I, it's it's the weaker one of the trilogy. It definitely is for me. Um, one of the things that's like, I mean, I get what he was going for, but it almost seems like he all had a whole different idea for a third one. And then, of course, when Heath Ledger died, I think maybe things changed. I don't know if he was going to incorporate the Joker again. To me, maybe he was going to. Who knows? Um, maybe I don't know if he's ever talked about that, but. But I mean, yeah, when when the Bane thing happens and then he breaks his back and then he heals up uh, and then he tries to do the climbing thing and then he falls the first time. I'm like, how did he not break his back again? Like, <laughs> like yeah, you know, I was like, I'm like, because when we saw a guy try to attempt to get out of the hole, he broke his back and died. But Bruce, who already had a freshly healed back, fell and didn't nothing happen? I mean, it was just it was just always kind of that part was always kind of strange to me. I don't know. Actually, that's the part where the Dark Knight Rises did have to take quite a while, you know, for the amount of time involved in him. He oh yeah, broken back. That that had to take about six months. That whole mm -hmm. that well, Gotham yes, was under lockdown for all this for quite a long time. That's, that's a good it. point. Yeah, there's a there's a there's a time jump in in there. Oh yeah, there definitely is. Yeah, yeah, your back just even though you're Batman, your back doesn't heal in like two weeks. <laughs> you know. Yeah, I, I mean, well, you know, with the like, the books that they're referencing, you know, the the Knights Fall books. You know, I mean, that's when Brain, Bane breaks his back. I mean, obviously he's had a commission for a while, and then you got you know as as Rally whatever Azrael, Azrael. Azrael. I never can never say John Paul Val. I've read yeah, Nightfall. Paul, I've yeah. actually read Nightfall. 
<laughs> so. It's not so proud of you. I am yeah. so proud. <laughs> but did, but you also, did you also read Night's End also? Though? And Night's Quest. Oh, uh, and Night's Okay, Quest. you're going too far. You're going too far. You're <laughs> three, you're talking three about four. the guy who's read The Death of Superman and Funeral for a Friend, but hasn't read The Return of Superman. I, well, it, well, That's and, not and, where and, the real story was. Well, well and, and, and it, 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 it gets even weirder because I've also read Hunter Prey. I, know. I, I, I went past Return of Superman. It's like I skipped Return of Superman. <laughs> I didn't mean to do that. I'm totally gonna read all of it over because I really like that Superman. I really like I really like Funeral for a Friend. Like I that was I, I, I really like those stories. But like no, um, the it, death of Superman is this big multi issue fight. I mean that's and and Mike Carlin and others who were involved in the story say the real story was what came after. Yes. Mm. Yes. Like with tying it back to Batman, the 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 story is what comes after Batman's gun. Although, uh, although I think I honestly think Nightfall was a better story in terms of character than the death of Superman had been. Well, because I like what I like about Nightfall is you see Bane as this super genius. He's like, no, I am going to wear this man out, which mm -hmm. is. Which is funny because then the breaking of the back moment isn't this huge. It almost isn't the moment itself isn't this huge triumph for Bane because no. Batman's exhausted. The brilliance he's sick. and he he's was sick, sick too. and he was yeah, sick. He was sick too. Yeah. So the, the 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 glory is the fact that Bane orchestrated this this whole series of events to when he finally faces Batman. Batman's got nothing in the tank. Yeah. And and right. it really is just he shows up in the Batcave, takes him, bends him over his knee, and Darn. that's all she wrote. So yeah. the yeah. one thing that bugged me in it, I mean, it's wonderfully constructed. It gives Batman a lot of little victories along the way. Uh, but Bat Bane just decides he's going to know Bruce Wayne's identity, so he does. It's like, well, that, that's <laughs> Later on, the bit with Lex Luthor just decides he's going to know everybody's identity, and he hasn't used that information better in a certain movie we've discussed plenty. But it's like that—that that one, I honestly think Bane just knowing Bruce Wayne's identity takes takes away from some of the other strengths of that story. Mm. I didn't even think about that. I'm like, how did he? F yeah, he found out from. Mm. No, he just he just figured out. He didn't even he give it any out. reason. He's like, of course I can figure this out. But Hmm. You, you know, I, well, and it's interesting because the, the, the whole reason that I've read Nightfall, it, 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 I, I could certainly stand to reread it because it was many years ago that I read it. The reason I read it was because so many people I knew were angry about Batman and Robin. And I knew nothing about the character. So I'm like, OK, let about me... the movie. Yes, the movie. Yeah. yeah. So I said, all right. Let me read what the character actually was in the comics. And I was like, okay, I get why you're mad. I, I, I get why you're mad. I, I, I understand. Okay. So I, I glossed over because the idea, because, because their biggest issue was that he was mindless and had no intelligence in the movie. And they're like, no, he's actually this and he's brilliant. And he does this and he orchestrates that. So I didn't even complete I, the whole idea of him figuring out who, bruce wayne was was like okay i you know like that's that wasn't a, a thing that like necessarily like crossed my like, of course think... he's smart enough to do that but man a whole <laughs> lot of other people are of course smart enough and he goes, and, uh... i mean at least in dark knight rises there is a logical reason for him to know yeah yeah, yeah. there is he, a logical well, reason no for one, him to know. that's no one for you well yeah and i'll yeah. told him it's, yeah uh, <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. Ross, well, yeah we still haven't quite seen bane in in, in uh live action there's okay, so there's that mindless thug from Batman Ampersand Robin, but the one in the Dark Knight Rises, he's it's more of a mix of Bane and Ubu. You know, where he's doing all these things out of loyalty to Talia. That is not what motivates comic book Bane. No, you know, and then no Venom. Venom is motivated Venom by either. challenge yeah. more than anything else. Yeah, he he yeah. like like and this is where you know the the this is uh, the the nihilism, like the, the the grounded nature of what Nolan did instead of Venom. He's wearing a mask that gives him an anesthetic so he won't be in pain. So he yeah. so he feels no pain. Like that's his yeah. answer. No, that's real pain would, real bane would draw strength from his pain. <laughs> real <laughs> pain. Well, well, because well, right, be extremely painful. Yeah, when, if I take that the mask, vo off. the voice never bothered me. The, 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 no, the, you know what? <laughs> you know what? 
Tom Hardy's a beast. He created a voice. It doesn't bother me evil, e- evil either. But um, you know, it's Tom just Hardy very... rocks. Tom Hardy's Tom yeah. Hardy is awesome. Yes, he is awesome. You know, even though you know, I, you know, apparently he bumped heads with Charlie Theron and uh, Mad Max. Which that little did, did you guys see that whole thing? I like, heard there crew. was a kerfuffle. I did yeah. not dive into the kerfuffle. Apparently, crew members talked about like one specific moment on there mm-hmm. where Tom Hardy was like three hours late to set, and she was super pissed, and basically was yelling, you know, hey, this. She she was like. This cunt, she called him a cunt <laughs> and said, oh, like, every minute that he's late, charge him a hundred thousand dollars. And then when he showed up, she was screaming. And then he like approached her, like, what the hell did you just say to me? And like she felt threatened and it looked really bad, like they were in each other's faces at one point. I don't know. Well, like, him, oh, him getting never annoyed heard will immediately look threatening. No, well, he's probably still in character. The guy's like pretty method of what mm. I gathered. You know, <laughs> maybe he was wearing that. He, he, you know what? The guy really acts well with mask over his face. I mean, let's face it. You had Dark Knight Rises, uh, Dunkirk and Mad Max. Where it was for like a good 20 minutes. He had something over his face. Guy knows how to act with his eyes. That's for sure. But anyways, besides that, Tom Hardy's awesome. <laughs> you know, he's that's pretty the, awesome. That, 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 that's the first I heard of that. No, but like, but, but it, okay. Like we're talking because this was another thing that came up, you know, aside from people oddly complaining about Pattinson's body. Yeah, no, we keep on going still, through that. Still don't get that dumb shit, but whatever. The other thing that's come out is like this idea of, oh, we're going to go back to crappy Batman action scenes. And I'm like, uh, I'm sorry. They do- Listen, I, I love Christopher Nolan. He's one of the greatest auteurs in my lifetime. Absolutely fantastic. Oppenheimer is going to be amazing. He cannot do fight sequences. He can't. Yeah, he can't do it. And the and and the Batman action in that in the Dark Knight trilogy, the, the fight sequences are like the worst. Like there there are fight sequences in the Burton movies that are better than in the Nolan films. So Nolan needs I, to rely on fight choreographers more. Yeah, he really and, does. And a second unit. Because that's the, yeah. that's part of his problem is he he never works with a second unit, and right. so because the second unit is the one that would normally do those, like it wouldn't always you like they, yeah. that that would like a lot of times on on big sets like with those types of with that type of choreography it, he doesn't, and it's not just that the choreography isn't great like the moves especially in Dark Knight Rises they might be the worst in Dark Knight Rises. Well, there's literally a guy who doesn't even get touched and he falls back. We've seen that. Yeah. Shot. Like yeah. on the rooftop, where literally a stunt guy didn't even. There's nothing that Bale does for him to fling himself backwards. But it was like somebody was somebody took the gift from one of the the, the Batman trailers where uh, Battinson is like beating the crap out of guys with that sniper rifle. Yeah, it's, that's it's the so one badass. The, yeah, and, it looks I, great because I, but it's methodical, and that's the they think it's too I, slow. I, and I, like, and, no. and, 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 I, and he grabs the barrel of the gun and I, goes boom like I, that. I, I said. Like, what? I, I tweeted, I said, this gif is better than all of the fight action in the Dark Knight trilogy combined. Just ask them how many of them have beaten up guys with sniper rifles. <laughs> if they've got the personal experience to really compare. Exactly. That's the way to approach it right there. No, but uh, yeah, yeah. When you watch, I mean, I think, you know, when it comes to Nolan, he's he's all about scope. And I mean, one of the best, I guess you could say, choreographed stuff was like when, you know, in Batman Begins, Liam Neeson, Christian Bale, Bruce and, uh, well, you know, before we knew it was Roz, that they're on like uh, the ice and they're sword fighting. It's a great scene. The, the, but mind, all- your, the, the, the mind your surroundings. There you go. Find your surrounding scene. It's a great scene. Fantastic. I mean, obviously, it's like, you know, there's intertwining with other things, too. But it's all scope. It's all the beautiful fucking the location and and the cinematography. Uh, I think that's where that I mean, that's just where Christopher Nolan shines. Like you said, he doesn't rely too much. He's not relying on his fight choreography as much. That's why when we saw BBS in that warehouse scene and we actually got a Batman that was like, holy shit, look at him go. Look at him go. It was like, oh, you know, I mean, he was took yeah. on half a dozen dudes and it was and it seems like this Batman's going to take on way more. Jeez. I, 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 I just think that a lot of people that are I think 
there's going to be, and I'm not saying that he's going to go like full BVS or like full suspension of disbelief, like we saw with the Snyder movies. But I think that Reeves and, and I don't, I feel like did people just forget the two Planet of the Apes movies that he did? Like, which are incredible. <laughs> it's not like he can't do massive action with CGI. Like he's <laughs> done this before. So yeah. I feel like what we're going to see next week is he he found the sweet spot. I feel like he's found the sweet. And and listening to the the, the scorer today has only cemented that belief that he has found the middle between Nolan and Snyder. We are not going to get the, the grounded. It's not going to be Nolan 2.0. It's not going to be quite warehouse. It's going to, he found that middle and maybe it'll lean further towards warehouse at times, especially that one scene that what the, from one of the, the second trailer where like he's in the dark and all you see is the only illumination is the bullet muzzle fire, the muzzle fire. <laughs> that is that Jesus, like, <laughs> oh yeah. 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 So I remember, I, 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 geez, man. I still remember watching that. I think I did I do it live? No, I don't think I did it live. Maybe I did it live. I don't remember. Um, when yeah, the DC when that was happening, I literally was going, What is happening right now? Because it was just like and it's just like he's just just walking like he's fucking Superman and just taking the bullets. And I'm like, All right. <laughs> Holy crap. Right. I'm wondering, I'm like, that's another thing I'm curious about is um the costume and making the costume and what that material is, um, I'm sure it's going to get explained. I don't know. I mean, three hour movie, of course it will. It but I'm kind of already going got a little explained. No, gonna... get expl- okay. It's a little just... explained. I'm just, just yeah. saying. Okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, obviously, I... when it comes to Batman, he's always going to have a bulletproof suit. I mean, I don't think there's ever going to be a Batman unless you watch, you know, some fan. It's not movies. entirely armored. Uh, Pattinson was talking about this. It's like there are specific sections that are armor, but there are yeah. places on there where he's vulnerable. Yeah. So then and it's, it, and it's a trade off because they wanted this to be more athletic than previous Batman. He is not fully armored. That's good because, I mean, oh. look at the pants, especially. The pants look like normal, oh, yeah. like they look like, like the army pants, kind of like the nightmare pants. Yeah, it, it, he's, not nightmare. Wearing tights. He, yeah he, he's not wearing he, tights. He's not wearing tights. <laughs> well, but also, yeah. where, I mean, I know people always want to go, why don't you go for the headshot? It's like, well, honestly, anyone who's had firearms training, they teach you. Go for body mass. Why? Because it's a larger target area. Yeah, it's very you know, true. Frank, Frank Miller actually addressed that in terms of the yellow oval. Right. Give him a target. Well, she Miller usually did it without the yellow oval, but one where he has him wearing the yellow oval and Batman's narrative thought box is, you know, why do you think I put a target on my chest? So they'll aim for the armor. There you go. See, that's that makes sense. And But then we find out, like, when it came to... I mean, I guess all the bat costumes, maybe, but I mean, it was very much shown in BVS and 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 even Justice League. And then, of course, with this, it's like we've seen shots where like he does get a headshot, but the cowl is also made of material that is bulletproof. So he's already got that figured out. So, you know, your move, bad guys. <laughs> You gotta find that sweet spot. Well, it's always probably it's always, somewhere right here. I don't know. Well, but there's it's. But I like the idea because I always put like, them in the legs. I don't know. What I also like is that you know the ones like where if they try to take the cowl off, it like yeah. electrocutes exactly. them. Yeah. Like, and that's in several iterations, and it's also in the comics. It's like I know people love the idea of like the spandex costume, but let's be honest, there are things that even in the comics where it looks spandex. The suit can do things that if it was spandex, that wouldn't work. Well, I mean, look at Batman the Animated Series. I mean, that's full on supposed to be like spandex. And how many times that we, have we made comments, Scott, about, you know, these guys, these goons rapid firing their Tommy guns. And, and it goes Batman around it. Like, Batman's just like, oh, no, I must duck behind cover. Ah, you know, and it's just like. It's. It, I mean, they're 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 really bad aim. They're fucking stormtroopers. They are stormtroopers. You know? I really mean, they are. They they can't hit. They can't. They couldn't hit a. You know, broadside of yeah. a barn. Yeah, yeah. There's the saying. Yeah. So, you know, Travis, I don't. Uh, we're not keeping you for or anything like that. Do you have to go. Anything? Oh, okay, I'll just make That's it sure. Me. Reading the but, gallery, not butting into them too much, but I talked the way, a lot before these guys got here. If I wanted to leave, I'd have been gone. 
Okay. <laughs> just making sure. Just making sure. Oh, you know what? I, I need to go tell my wife goodnight. She, she went to bed long ago. Uh, By the way, when you first showed up, I really thought your book, bookcase behind you was real. Oh. No. <laughs> yeah, until you did that. I was like, I was like, at first, I was okay, like, oh, well, that, cool. okay, well, that, 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 that pierced the veil for me. I thought it was yeah. real. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was like, I saw you adjust, and, and then all of a sudden, I saw it move, and I was like, oh, crap, it's not. That's cool. I was like, no, yeah. that's there because uh, I'm only I mean, I'm, when I'm at my office, my office is the background. You know, oh yeah, my office full of Batmobiles and whatnot, and uh, but here at home it's either the brick wall or the books because uh, well, my wife doesn't want everybody to see the house. Of course, of business. Okay, okay. Now I want to ask you guys because we've talked about the bat suits and stuff like that. Let's talk about our top three favorite Batmobiles now. Because what's interesting is what's interesting too is like um, you know even going back to Batman Ego, I love the fact that in Batman Ego they use like the old style like Batmobile in that book. Like I have a model that I got for for Christmas, and I'm like, oh yeah, eventually I'm going to put it together. There's a lot of pieces. Who knows when I'll get to it? But I was like, oh, yeah, I forgot that he used this style Batmobile, that kind of first style with the the, the face in the front of it. And it kind of and looks, giant you know, fin down the middle. Yes, yes. I was yeah. like, oh, yeah, I forgot that in this book, <laughs> it's very much that old Batmobile. But I mean, for me, it's um, it's uh, I would say I would say, you know what, to be honest, it would be 66 Batmobile third. Second is um, Burton's and then Batfleck first. I don't know. I just like that mixture. I don't know. That's me. What would you say, Travis? Uh, the 66 has a really special place in my heart. Yeah, it really uh, does. There's, there's one of the really old ones from the 40s. It's not quite the very first one called a Batmobile, but shortly on it's got a little got some red on it too and with this big mm. fin on the back but with some red i love that one uh bell finger's granddaughter athena she had asked me what was my favorite uh, batmobile and then i found out the reason was because she she painted me uh, a, a, a picture of that particular batmobile and if i want to go uh, for a third one it's um that that burton one is really special but i prefer the the one in Batman the Animated Series, which is based on the Burton one, yeah, yeah, I, I it's sleeker, it, it's totally suited their storytelling, and it's 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 just as impractical as the one in the eighty nine. <laughs> but in the world of the cartoon, yeah, you accept it more easily. So I would say Batman the Animated Series, <laughs> that old one from the comics, and the Adam West sixty six. Yeah, no, no, that's a good one. I, mean, I think uh, on our first episode of Batman the Fan Animated, we talked about the opening. You know the opening sequence that you get in every episode, which if you, if you're a true Batman fan, you, you never, never skip. skip the, no, you never no. skip the intro. You you listen to that over and over again. Mm -hmm. You watch all that. But I mean, when when the Batmobile fires up and you see it going down the tunnel, that shot where it's like a still shot of the full in frame, but it's like passing through. It's such a beautiful shot, and it's like yeah, it's ridiculous, but because yeah, the. the the the, the, yeah, the still, hood is like there's long. no reason for the chassis to be that long. Yeah, it's like, hey, no, come on, no, Bruce, no. you're not a, you're not a, you know, you're not, you know, making up for lack of other but things. Are I, you? But the one you were talking about from Ego, with the one with the head in the front, the middle yeah. fin, it makes an appearance in the series. It does. In the, does really? in the mechanic. In the mechanic. Yes. yes. Oh shit! The because that was there's so many wonderful episodes, but the mechanic. Oh, is that's such right. A good one. Yep. Because that, because wow. that, because that was the backstory. He needed a new car. That's yes. how. So no, he so actually. That, that's literally the line. that says, "I need a new car." Right. <laughs> so, so he didn't technically design that one. That was Earl. So I guess it's Earl's yeah. fault for making it as impractical as it wow. was. But I, it's also funny too because if we're talking about continuity, there's a little bit of a jump there because you get the episode of the mechanic that shows Earl designing it. Yet in Mask of the Phantasm. Bruce sees a very similarly designed car at the World's Fair. That's true. <laughs> That's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There have been a lot of Batmobiles, a lot of chances for inspiration. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I'll, I'll make it work. I can headcanon this. I can head headcanon this puppy. Um, but um, yeah, what's your set? Oh, I'm going to be honest. Um, you know, I have to incorporate 
the comic book Batmobiles because I also I like subscribe to like the Eagle Moss collection of like all these like different Batmobiles. So, Eagle <laughs> Moss. Oh no. Oh no, you're they're all in my classroom. Oh, dude, I always e- love I always love showing off like I have like 60 something Batmobiles. Dude, dude, you know? e- e- Eagle my Moss. office has a hundred forty five. E- 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 <laughs> Eagle Eagle Moss is a rabbit hole that will e- e- it will vaporize your wallet. Oh god! I had I was subs- yeah. I was subscribed to the Batmobile collection, and mm-hmm. they screwed something up. And the only reason I wasn't getting any more is because they screwed up on their end, and my can and basically I just canceled the subscription. Uh, but there is. I remember it because I used to have this Batmobile coloring book when I was a kid, and I think it's the. It's either it's a seventies Batmobile, but it just looks like it looks like a Lotus. You know, mm. if you remember the Roger Moore era James Bond movies, there he he drew, he drove the Lotus Esprit. He mm-hmm. didn't have the Aston Martin, and there was a Batmobile in the seventies that looks like a Lotus, and oh. except for it was blue. And I, I think I've seen that. I think oh, I have it, seen it, that. it was yeah. the Batmobile for like a nice chunk yeah of this of the 70s and that one always appeals to me i i love the fact ray that you just saw batman beyond let's just call it spade a spade i know what you did i i know what you did last week um i I told you it was going to be sooner than you thought (laughs) i do love the batman beyond batmobile it is a cool design i like the way it interacts with terry's suit and also tim and i were just talking the red the red color that you get when he's in the cockpit totally reminds us of all the red hues that matt reeves has been doing with the batman market definitely definitely we see some we see some cross-pollination there and and there's just something cool because i also feel like grant morrison was inspired by that when in his Batman and Robin run, when Dick was Batman and Damien was Robin, they had a flying Batmobile that mm, kind of <laughs> looks a little Batman Beyondish. So I, I feel like it, it, it's a nice, it's a different one. Uh, but you and I talked Ray on, on Squadcast about how I'm really looking forward to seeing Re- uh, Pattinson's Batmobile oh in action my God. because it's a muscle car. And mm-hmm. and remember what I said, Ray, people were complaining and I loved how their complaints was my compliment. It looks like a car. Yeah. Like, right. Th- yeah. I, I don't, the, I like the fact that it looks like a car. Well, it, it, it's such a, it's weird because you understand the complaint, but it's still silly. Cause it's like, well, why wouldn't he drive a car? You know, and yeah. look, my, my, Batman. My, yeah. my, my non-negotiable with every Batmobile is one thing. Atomic batteries to power a turbine to speed. You give me that, <laughs> you g- 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 give me that fire coming out of the back and I'm, and I'm sold. That's all I need with the, that, that is, that is the non-negotiable. Give me that with the bat. So when that was in the first fandom trailer, I didn't give a shit what the car looked like. I, you gave me my atomic batteries, to power turbines to speed. I'm good with it. And I like that. It's blue this time. Like instead of, instead of the, the orange that it normally is. So yeah, I'm, I'm very curious. Hey, about that. <laughs> <laughs> That's the yeah, one that, you're talking about it, with the red. It, it's yeah. not practical. How the hell are you supposed to have a good view of the road with that big bat face there and all, but <laughs> I love that design, especially considering it's time considering yeah. what the cars looked like in the forties. And you know, Jerry Robinson comes up with this. I loved it. <laughs> I love the red right there. Yeah. I mean, it's similar to that for, yeah, that, that first Batmobile, but yeah, yeah. it's yeah. But how exactly it's like, you're not going to have a good line of sight with that face. right now. <laughs> No, but it, when the, the, the first one, which was, which was all dark blue uh, yeah. with, with, with that face, it was the first Batmobile. Yeah. It, as right. opposed to Batman driving around with, a red car for a while. It's a red car at one point in one point where it looked just like Bruce Wayne's red car. Huh? <laughs> but uh, <laughs> it's a, th- this is when they finally started giving us Batmobiles. And then yeah. the touch the red that's added to it, it started to say, we can flesh this out. We can have, start to have more fun with this. And then we just see all these endless, uh, many different designs of Batmobiles. 
Um, the one that was in Titans was actually pretty decent, even though we get a glimpse of it. Of course, me, it's like I want a toy of every single Batmobile de de design ever, so I can put one in my office. There's still room. They're saying, yeah, you can the find one in Titans felt like this is what the animated series would look like in live action. Yes, that is that it, it had, and it, it really did. It's the one that Scott just sent. Yeah, yeah. It also it's also the one that I think if you look at the post crisis Jason Todd, I think that's the one he's boosting the tire. Like when we talk yeah. about Jason Todd boosting the tires off the yes. Batmobile, that's mm. what he's boosting the tires off of. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that one right there. He's that. That's the one, or at least close to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it had more right. of a square nose. And... Yes, very much. Yeah. Um. So I, yeah. I, 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 we, we had this discussion in our our, our Batman eighty nine review because we because that this always there, there aren't any bad I think we all agree there aren't any bad Batmobiles but like even the Batman and Robin go kart they, they, you know it's <laughs> like and 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 they it it's it it was just a, a different design they went in a different direction <laughs> right and, it was, I, it was I'm it was sure. interesting because the fact that it was like a one seater and it was just like no roof, and then it had a a, a motor it, that looked like a crazy sparkly washing it, machine thing. It it did remind me of Disengage Go Kart from the '66 <laughs> movie and, and the '66 show. Um, because uh, Travis, when I was in my Joker phobia for five years of my life, I latched because I Jack Nicholson scared the hell out of me when I was a kid. In he also scares the hell out of people in life too. So. That's yeah, true. Yeah, yeah. That's very true. No. But I I latched on to sixty six like a secure like a like Linus's blanket yeah. from it, <laughs> for when I was a kid until I got over my fear of it. Now I love eighty nine. So I've seen all of eighty. I've seen all of six. I own sixty six. It was on sale like two years ago during work from home for like twenty bucks. I'm like, yes, I will buy it. So I have the whole thing. So I uh, yeah. I, I have a, a personal attachment to that. So yes. The concept of the because it because what that's that's a link that's a Lincoln Futura, uh, yeah, and it's, it is, and, but yeah. it's crazy because when you look at the actual concept car, it's like pink, it's pink and yeah. white, <laughs> and they and can only go 40 miles an hour, <laughs> right? Yeah, um, so that, that, that that's on my list. Um, my number one is definitely the animated series, the, the, the particularly the original, the, the the one that we were talking about, the impractical one. That that's that's mm -hmm. my favorite design. I love how sleek it is, and it it just fits the aesthetic not only of mm -hmm. like Gotham in the show, but also all of his gadgets, like it everything that he had, like even the like the grappling hooks and all that. It just it it all came. It was all, all that dark deco. Like it all looked yes. like some. It's like someone put a a art deco wash over even the props it was like if if deco designed the gadgets this, right because that grappling hook i'm sorry the grappling hook is the most impractical we've joked about this on the fan stream. that grappling hook is the most impractical thing you try holding that thing where like two fingers go and two fingers go on one end two fingers go on the other and your thumb <laughs> hits the button i'm sorry how do you hold on to that sucker See, yeah, that, that shot right there. That's, that's gorgeous. That shot right there is beautiful. I can yeah. hear that I mean, shot right now. I mean, when I when I said mine, I I didn't think we were going animation, but yeah, I would agree yeah. that this would be mine. It, it, that, that, that's that's my top. That's my number one. Uh, the, the tough one, the, the the ball breaker here, because like I've got this one and I've got sixty six. The ball breaker is okay, eighty nine, and then. BVS. It's like which of those two? Because I really do like the BVS one, like a lot. Nobody's picking the tumbler. See, and I that's know, right? the other. I know. See, I've actually never been a fan of because I, it, it's the most. It's the one that looks the least like a car. I, yeah, but I. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but but I, I I still like. But that that's okay. I guess the ball breaker got bigger. He's yes, flying on rooftops. Right. Yeah. The, 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 no, the the tumblers. Are, I love the tumbler. The tumbler the was like great, it, it but... suited Nolan's story. Totally, did. but it felt like we went a while without a Batmobile while he was riding the tumbler. Yeah, true. yeah, I, I, that, that that's true. But I but I I also like the like for people that didn't like the practicality of how everything was explained in those movies. I actually did like that. You know, it it had a, a however practical the explanation actually was. At least there was an explanation for why it was designed that way because it was supposed to be. be, be fly over a river towing cable to build bridges and they they yeah. can never get the bridge to work but this baby works just fine you know like yeah, that yeah does it come in black yeah, yeah. so yeah. so yeah but it 
I, it, it, but the B, the BVS one, the BVS one yeah. is really awesome. I really like well, that car. When it came to the BVS, it was just like, it, like it, it just, um, it just got to the point. It was almost like, I mean, we, we, we've heard uh, Mr. Patrick Tatopoulos talk about that design, how he just literally the first sketch was on a napkin. It was on a yeah. cocktail napkin or something like that. The thing and, and, that. But it was like it was like it almost like he was like going, OK, you had the tumbler that had that was like this. It was like a tank with wheels. And then you have the sleekness of like the, the previous Batmobiles. And it's almost like he kind of combined it. In no, my... that's exactly what yeah. he did. I think yeah. for me, though. I never could truly appreciate that Batmobile. Oh, until Scott, we saw oh, an action he froze in, a little bit. In, Sorry, in Justice League. Yeah, I froze a little oh. bit in my back. Am I? Am I yeah, you froze a little bit, like yeah, well, right, right. It was like so climactic. You were like, <laughs> and it's yeah. just like it just froze a little <laughs> but, bit right there. But it, it, no, it, no, it, no. But but you're right though. You're right. It really showed what I, it could do in Justice League. It it, it did, but I I feel like the chase scene with KG Beast was awesome. Oh, yeah. <laughs> He's great. I mean he and, and that was where like I, I got shades of the tumbler because this thing is blasting through walls and like yeah. busting like he shot that hole through the boat and like flew up, flew flew through it. Like the only thing that could literally stop the car was Superman. And the funny thing was, like, when that scene happened, I'm like, oh, well, the car's busted. How's he going to get back? No, he drove the broken car back to, like, sparks flying all over the place and the hood gone. Great oh. Like, top down, he drove it back to the Batcave. I was like, okay, well, and even the car still ran even after colliding with Superman. Yeah. So I was like, all right, you know what? I got to <laughs> give it up to that car. That That's it's it's, it's a lovely vehicle. But no, it. it I mean, it, it's firepower was definitely on display oh. with Justice League. Uh oh, where do you go? I don't know. Yeah, well, he he had some freezing moment. Yeah, he had a cat call him out too. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's got he's got a he's got a he's got an infant. Maybe the he infant. Does. Oh, well, yeah. similar. All right, now, the, cat, the cat that I just landed in is back here saying, "Well, I need treats too." But no, you don't. Welcome back, Scott. <laughs> Streamyard decided to be a little punk. What can I say? Yeah, uh, yeah. Streamyard can yeah. be a little biatch like that. No, but uh, I mean, you know, it's funny. Like when it, I, it, I even did. I, I like the Batman Forever Batmobile. It's interesting. <laughs> I mean, it's it's got like. Um, I mean, obviously, they wanted to do a whole new design, whole new everything when it came they to wanted Batman a new Forever. toy to sell. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Totally. <laughs> But like, I mean, it, and it's, it's, got it's a like, story. It's a new story. I mean, that's 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 what's so interesting. I mean, I I mean, Batman Forever holds a special place in my heart always because you know, being like when it came out, I was I loved Jim Carrey. I was like, oh, this guy, I love this guy. You know, Don't, you know all the movies that he did. You know, Ace Ventura, The Mask, Dumb and Dumber. Before that, it was just like, and then watching In Living Color, I was like, oh, and he's the Riddler. Holy crap, it was crazy. And then of course. I remember watching it, you know, opening night, stood out in the rain in this crappy theater in my hometown and just loving it and watched it probably like two more times because, you know, it's just it was a new Batman movie. And and hopefully we can actually get a, you know, maybe we'll get a Schumacher cut. Who knows? It's been a while. But but when it came to that Batmobile, I mean, it, I mean, yeah, did it have <laughs> it had like a grappling hook that shot up to and it literally did that whole slam onto the wall thing and drive up the wall hey kind of cool <laughs> but you know i like the fact that it had like lit up like you know like rims that didn't spin it was just like covers on the wheel that had bat symbols on it and there was a lot of uh val kimmer batmobile that 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 he just had like a lever that just kind of went Sheesh! you know it was like a a whole little handle that he pulled back to make it go faster. But, you know, pursuant to what Scott was saying about the Batman Beyond, and I, 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 I'll bring this up on Sunday in DC TV's podcast about how <laughs> that Batmobile did fit the aesthetic of Gotham, where it's like, okay, you don't need a Batwing and a Batmobile, just combine them because yes. everybody's everybody's flying it's anyway future, it's, it's in the future you might as well do it yeah right so it was a so it, it, it was very much a batmobile that fit the aesthetic of the city you could say the same thing about batman forever and i'm really mm -hmm. like excited quite honestly scott for like that for for that next squad cast movies review i i am actually very much looking forward to revisiting that movie and 
probably being more favorable to it now than I have been in the past. That was not one that I saw at the theater, but it was one that I got for Christmas on VHS. So like that was a Christmas morning, like, Hey, new Batman movie. All right. And that's why I've seen it so many times, but like, it's a very, it's a highly stylized Gotham city. Oh yeah. That's, that's when the neon really started. Oh coming yeah. In. And, and, it, and then, it's, but it's the whole city, right? It's not. Oh just yeah. The whole city stuff. is like just, it's a cyber punky neon, Yes. I, I, you know, and it's not that bad. I think it got worse in Batman and Robin for I'm sure. I'm gonna say the cyberpunk aspects are far more in uh, Batman yeah. and Robin. It's like, yeah. What the hell? Is... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, it, 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 it's I funny when you, when you watch that. when you watch the Schumacher ones. It's like Batman Forever is definitely watchable. There's things in there where you're like, oh, and, and like I said, it holds near and dear to my heart. And in and it actually connected uh, Batman to an even bigger DC universe. I mean, the first time when 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 Bruce literally says to Dick when he wants to leave, he goes, where are you going to go? The circus is halfway to Metropolis right now. Everybody was like Leonardo DiCaprio in fucking, you know, Hollywood. <laughs> Dude, he just yeah. said, oh, the Dude, he said Metropolis. Yeah. Oh, it God. took so little to excite us in 1995. Oh it took so little. We, you know what? Now you know we're what? so spoiled. Yeah. There, there, there was there was even you know because I, I, I didn't see that one in theater, but there, there was a similar moment when we because we did see Superman Returns in theaters. Yeah. And there's a moment where the reporter actually says the name says the says the name Gotham. Yes. And yes. my and my buddy like turned to me. He was like, "Hey, Gotham." Gotham. Yeah, yeah, he, yeah. You, know, he, he got was, the elbow. <laughs> you're like, dude. I know. Right. I don't know. I know. I feel like what My a elbow. big deal it was when they finally referred to Gotham and then finally referred to Bruce Wayne in Arrow. Yes, That's true. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. It took five seasons. Wanted to make this joke about Bruce Wayne, and he talked to a higher up who said, yeah, "One of the folks who'd always been saying, no, don't bring up Batman," and then gave the approval. Yeah, yeah. No, I, you, you're right, Travis, because it, it took them five seasons. And up to that point, mm -hmm. yeah, the running joke was, OK, well, they, they're just using all the Batman's rogues. They, 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 season three, they bought it. They brought in Raish and Nissa. Like they're like, OK, well, well, that one was originally pitched as a Batman series and they were told they couldn't do Batman. So they did Arrow instead. The show that starts off a shame, reading a, the that. superhero show that starts off ashamed to be about superheroes. They had to learn <laughs> yeah. by degrees what kind of story they were telling uh, 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 and, well, and it's it, like it's boy it's, it's it's boiling the frog in water it's like it just yeah and, 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 and they were they were thrown into that fire by the flash because the yeah. first two seasons this is why a lot of people like dig the first two seasons of arrow and don't really like it after season three a whole uh, nearly as much yep because yep. the first two seasons they didn't have to worry about they didn't have to worry too much about suspension of disbelief but then once you bring a speedster in <laughs> from central yeah. city it just things you have to match what they're doing and they didn't balance it all that well and that's for the rest the of the show the reeve batman story will never have i was just about to say that character. travis yeah yeah because we we even uh i mean um robert pattinson a couple weeks ago said in an interview that they discussed superman you know, a couple of times, blah, blah, blah. And it was just like, you know, yeah, discuss. That's one thing. If, if Robert Pattinson and Matt Reeves were like, hey, what if, whatever the fuck, you know, whatever. But then Matt Reeves recently was like, now, nah, I mean, why would I want to expand that? We have a whole bat universe that I can expand. That's what I'm wondering. I'm like, how soon do they actually do the Robin story in this version? Three year Batman. How long? I don't know. Well, I mean, first off, I I don't have an issue with them not connecting it. I don't. I'm I don't I'm, either. I'm completely fine with them. I think doing a lot that. of people are, it, 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 especially, and it and it and it's not just because of all the. I, a lot of people, I think, are okay with it because of all the trouble that there has been with the DCEU. No, that's not really my reason. My reason mm -hmm. is because I like. There's so much in that world that you could flesh out without having to worry about the rest of the Justice League at all. And we've yeah, never really said we've... that. They, they've got a, all this stuff, all this story worth telling. So yeah. many things from the Batman mythology alone, they don't need to get into the rest of that because it suddenly changes suspension of dis disbelief. Mm -hmm. It changes the nature of the world they're in. And he wants it to feel even more like the real world 
than Nolan's did. He wants it to be truer to human nature, and that requires being truer to reality in other ways, too. And, and it sounds like they have at least some expansive ideas. I mean, they're going to do two HBO Max shows at least. They, I, I keep waiting for them to say they're going to do a Catwoman show. Here's hoping. But like... And then, and then that's even separate from talks of you know him and Pattinson already talking about the sequel because this movie's going to succeed. Oh, it's all right. Yeah, it's going to get so, a sequel. So, so it's like they they've already got ideas in there. They're already fleshing out ideas, like just in in terms of concepts, like okay, how far are we going to go? That's why when I when people are like, oh, we're never going to see Mister Freeze, we're never going to see the more fantastical villains. I wouldn't say that but at Re all. Reeves has talked about Mister Freeze. Has talked about Freeze. Kind of like yeah. yeah, I mean, I, I mean, how many times have we talked about like, okay, how take you know just reference Heart of Ice first off? <laughs> I mean, well, I know, don't think you'll have a cold ray. Yeah, that's the I thing, don't though. I think you'll have that's a cold ray. There but reference the it. humanity. Reference the humanity yeah. that's within that story without the 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 super. You know the you know you can have something there. And I'm kind of curious of like how Reeves would actually approach such a such a character like that. Try to ground that character because you know it's easy to do with the Joker, Two Face, Catwoman. It's easy to do it Riddler. It's easy to do that. But when you have like these characters that you know kind of start crossing they that line, meta humans, of like, yeah, become like yeah, yeah cross we, that we, meta human we, we, level. It's like okay, how do you approach that? I think Mister Freeze because. You, when you see that story, when you get that backstory, and especially, like I said, you reference that Heart of Ice, you know, episode, which is so good. I, well, the, if you mean, take out if you take out some of the the crazy, you know, the rate, you know, the the ice gun and stuff like that, you still have plenty to work with right there when it comes to. Nora doesn't even have to be in cryogenic stasis. No, he could be desperately trying to save. His wife's life. She could be alive, yeah. Without she could be awake. Her being frozen in mm -hmm. a way exactly. that requires sci fi. Totally. Mm -hmm. but, but I, I still wouldn't put the sci fi past Reeves, though. No, no, he'll put a little bit in there, of course. Yeah. But it, it, it's yeah. got to feel real. Exactly. Well, I listen. I, he, I was so, and I, I, I never, I still haven't fully watched Cloverfield, but like I was sold, you know, the, him and Andy Circus. Caesar, that that's well, that sold me on anything that the man does with respect to science fiction and anything involving any type of suspension of disbelief with visual effects. Like I, that was like a tip. I, I sold. I I trust that you'll find that balance. But you have not completely. What 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 point did you quit watching Cloverfield? <laughs> no, it's it's yeah. It, seriously, it, no, it, it 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 wasn't a. It was a case where um. The first time <laughs> that I saw it wasn't necessarily above board. And so it was like intermittent. Like I've seen bits oh, and okay. pieces All of right. it. Like the old days when people would watch the, the scrambled porn and know it somewhere in there. Anywhere. No, it was in a binder. It I, saw a a a, I saw a, a boob. It was in a CD <laughs> binder. Because you remember back in the day, like we, they had people, people had binders of CDRs <laughs> with stuff that they had gotten from you know the likes of LimeWire and no but know, like uh, you know but what I love about Matt Reeves and and thank you for bringing up Cloverfield uh Travis is the fact that he's had hold my beer moments and the the three examples are oh found footage hold my beer I'll do one about a fucking monster attacking New York and he did achieved and then when it came to, okay, we, uh, we're doing a Planet of the Apes, you know, franchise, it got introduced by, I always forget the director who did the, the first one, but then it was like, all right, now you take it somewhere. And he said, hold my beer. And he did. And he, he like made it where it was like, how the, how was this not more nominated for awards? Andy Serkis should have got nominated for even acting as Caesar for God's sakes. Cause he did such a great job. I mean, even though like, it's not, you know, you don't there see him mo -cap still doing the mocap. He's still doing the mocap. The mocap is excellent, and the yeah. acting is still all there. Now he's got Batman, and everybody's going like, what can you do with Batman? And then when that first trailer came out, he literally was like, hold my beer. Well, and technically, he has another, because I have not seen it, but I know people who Let are me in. like, 
Let Me In, which is a yeah. remake of a foreign film. Really and great. I, and, I know, really and I know people who have seen both versions, like Richard Newby, who loves horror, and he's like, no, oh, the Reeves version, like, Surpass, it's really like, good. It's, it, it, the it, remake surpasses the original. I'm like, dude, dude come Chloe, 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 what was her name? Chloe, I hit forgot girl. her name. Yeah, hit, yeah, Chloe, hit girl. Chloe Moore. So excellent. I mean, oh, it is Chloe, like Chloe, Chloe, Chloe Moritz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Moritz. Chloe, yeah, there you go. Chloe Grace Moritz. Yeah, Grace Moritz. There you go. Mm -hmm. No, I mean, I mean, she shows her chops. The movie, like, it's like it's a slow burn, but it's so like. You watch that, and then when you're done with it, you're like, Jesus. Like, it's just, it's one of those movies where it's so, it feels indie, but it's, you know, but it's not, I don't know. It's very hard to explain that movie. But yeah, Matt Reeves is just, he's a, he's a special filmmaker, man. I tell you. Well, I, that he fandom also trailer. directed Seagal. He also what? He directed Steven Seagal. Uh, Under Siege 2, Dark Tower. I don't know. I thought he wrote it. I thought he wrote. He, no, I think he only wrote it. He only wrote. He co-wrote that or something like You're that. You're right. He didn't, You're right. You're, he wrote, yeah. That's right. He wrote it. You are correct. That's yeah. Right. Somebody, because you know what was funny? Because I remember on Twitter, back to Twitter. Oh, somebody, I, didn't I was, know that. Yeah, didn't yeah. Know that either. Somebody, somebody actually. Okay. So when I posted, like somebody like uh, tweeted out like Matt Reeves movies and I quote tweeted. I'm like, Matt Reeves doesn't miss. And then somebody goes, "What about that under, but under siege yeah. too?" That I hard on a train with a chef. I, I, yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I didn't, I, I didn't hate it. I didn't, I, I didn't. But, hate uh, it. but I was like, I was no, like, yeah, I'll I'll admit, I, I enjoyed it. He did, he did. His first directorial debut was the pallbearer with David Schwimmer and Gwyneth Paltrow. Paltrow, though, I had no idea that he directed that. Yeah. So wow. I was like, okay, maybe he has one miss. First one, that's about it. But when it came to when Cloverfield came out, the guy has not missed. I'm sorry, you know, he has not missed at all. But because Cloverfield, man, that even the marketing behind that movie, I mean, that you know, leave it to JJ Abrams to do some good stuff with that. I still remember the seeing, I remember um, and I've said this before on the stream, it was like it was uh, the first Transformers movies movie. Uh, I remember going and me and my friend, you know, op it was like opening weekend and that trailer played, you know, mm -hmm. with the whole like found footage at a party. And then all of a sudden something crazy happens they're on the rooftop. You see the explosion and then they're on the street and then Statue of Liberty head. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. And then it literally didn't have a title. No it title. Just a date. No title. Just yep. a date. And mm -hmm. everybody literally, I remember just everybody in the movie theater went, I mean, uh, me and my yeah. friend looked at each other like, what the, what the fuck was that? And I remember being obsessed with, what is this movie? We, we, and we all did the same. We have the poster with no title. We, we, yeah, exactly. We, we, it just has a date we, with the, we all did the Liberty head. We all did the exact same thing when we first saw that trailer. That was like the first thing we did when we got home. It was like, look this fucking shit. What is this? What the <laughs> hell did we just see in that trailer? Like, and yeah. they and they and they ran with it too. That's the thing. This was before social media and Twitter because it was like two thousand seven, eight. I think it was eight actually. We this was before like the whole. Twitter. Yeah, no, barely, it was, Twitter barely existed. Yeah, it, it yeah, Facebook was around, you know, of course, but it's like, it what just, the I, hell does the title I, mean? I, even I think, when you reach the end of the movie, exactly. Yeah. And then it was just like, you know, and then there was like they did this whole thing with like slusho. There was like slusho. Slusho, like slusho yeah. is the uh, that's a JJ Abrams. Drink. Yeah, that's a JJ Abrams thing. He, it's it's even in Star Trek. I know. It's one, yeah, it's, what, it's it one is. of the drinks that Uhura orders at the bar. <laughs> In the first, in the first, even incorporated in that, yeah. I miss that. I miss that. You know what sucks is the fact that like the the newest Cloverfield that came out, Cloverfield. What was the one that came out on Netflix or whatever, where people didn't really like it? See, you guys don't even remember it. Oh, no, I don't remember it. Paradox. Yeah. Paradox. There you go. It didn't really work because Cloverfield. Um, uh, what was it? The the address something Jen something. Cloverfield, Cloverfield Lane. Lane. Cloverfield Lane was a hit, and then they were like, oh, then we got this new Cloverfield. And then it was like the Cloverfield paradox, and everybody was like, eh. And then it just it just went away. And I'm like, God damn it. I miss that where you had like this brand new franchise, and they were trying to like do this crazy marketing where people were trying to figure stuff out and what's connected and blah blah blah. But then when Cloverfield Paradox came out and people didn't like it, they just 
abandon it. And I'm like, oh, by the way, the- Ray, yes, it, it slush. I was wondering, yep, slush appeared in an episode of Alias. Um, yeah, two it's all epi- JJ stuff, two episodes of Heroes, uh, no. two episodes of Fringe, and nope. it's in Super 8, and an episode of 11 22 63. All Abrams. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. So well, see, I miss that kind of stuff. It's like, where are you, JJ? Like, well, I mean, it, I thought it, Warner Brothers bought you for what? I, 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 you know, my fa- you know, my favorite JJ, my one hundred percent favorite JJ Abrams thing that he does. Forty-seven. The number well, that's, that is all throughout Alias. That is it, so it, throughout it, it, Alias. It, 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 well, it, it, but it's it's it, it's in Star Trek. It's in like he. But that's a thing, and it, and it, others have done this. Like, it, I, actually, forty seven is a Star Trek thing. It's funny that Abrams like leans into it himself because Star Trek was already doing it. Like in in like TN, especially in TNG, because like Joe Manoski was like he went to Pomona College and was part of the whole like when the forty seven movement started out there with the with the joke proof. Because um, that's the thing is like this joke proof that like all numbers add up to forty seven, and it just turned into a thing. Oh wow! So like forty seven is. Like that's a number. Like if you see that, like when when JJ did it, yeah, you're right. It's all over Alias. I there's a clip. In fact, if you get the if you got the DVD set, oh, one of the which, special, I, which 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 I which I did. I've I've got the you I have the, the Rambaldi. You have the yes, Rambaldi I have the Rambaldi box. box. You yes, asshole. I do. You have the of course Rambaldi he does. Box. Of course he does. Damn it. You want me to go whip it out, Ray? Yes. Just to... Yes. Go ahead. <laughs> okay, hold on. Go get it. Go hold get on. it. Give me whip, a second. Whip it. Whip, yeah, we always oh. love it when Scott whips it out. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, it, it's, well, welcome, I, I, welcome to the vodka stream, Travis. Yeah, where <laughs> where Scott whips things out. Yes. Anyways, Excuse um, me no, but I, but I miss out. I miss I miss that kind of stuff. I'm like, you know, where it's like, you know, we have all these big IPs and superhero stuff, but I just miss it when it's like fresh things where you're like, I mean, that was so beautifully done. Like when that trailer, like again, that teaser when that hit, everybody was yeah. like, what the fuck was that? You know, there it is. <sighs> That's gorgeous. The Rambaldi box. Yes. Yeah, and it was so awesome because it opens up and then there's a secret <laughs> compartment in the bottom mm-hmm. that has the special bonus disc. And yes, there's a special feature that literally shows you every time the number 47 was snuck into the series <laughs> for all five seasons. Yes, because he and it, it it's 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 gratuitous. It, it is, is gratuitous. It, is it really is gratuitous. Let's see. Um, oh yeah. Sorry, I got quiet. I've just been trying to figure out why in the world. Has the chatter on the YouTube feeds gotten to talking so much about stovetop stuffing? You know what? When it comes to the live chat, they they've they, they, own, they have I, their I own fun. thing. They've got their own thing going on. They have their own thing going on. It's like we're just background noise, you know, kind of thing. <laughs> and they're having their own fun. <laughs> That's usually how it is. That's usually how it is. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that, that, Eat, laugh it up, fuzzball, right? There it that, is. That, that's there another is. one that that was also on sale. I also own it digitally on, off of uh, off of Apple, but I don't have I, I don't have the Rambaldi box. Want that Rambaldi box? It's awesome. It's probably like ridiculously overpriced. Don't just on own them now, digitally. But... Because they the things you buy can go away. Yeah, yeah I know. You don't actually and... own them, right? That's right? Yeah, that's if you really love it. Get the physical copy. Well, I, 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 it'd be great if they would, you know, remaster it. You know, make a make a new Rambaldi box for a Blu-ray set. That'd be nice if they ever yeah. cared to do that. But oh, you well, really well, uh, want, but you've you really got to follow stuff like Arrow Films and Diabolical and Zavi and all of them. Because did, did you see what what I just purchased today? That got announced today. You, you, you're 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 in your blackout. You're you're in your blackout on on Twitter. So no, I didn't see it. Um. Uh, <laughs> they released a a uh, limited edition steelbook 4K remaster of Wild Things. Oh. Really? <laughs> really? <laughs> that movie gets a bad rap. It's actually a really you know good what? Movie. Okay, 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 okay. okay. Scott, the, okay. Of the, the ending, the the the, the ending. Ending. Okay. end of the credits. Okay. Okay. That's let's, what let's, makes it a smart let, movie. Let, let, let's, okay, let, okay, let, okay. Let, okay. Let, Everybody let, thinks about Wild Things is always the pull scene, the three way. That's what three way. Yeah. <laughs> All that stuff, the sex. But when you actually watch the movie, yes, it's fucking good. It's good. People. It's really good. Yes, it really it, is. Yes, that that that's your cover story. It was no <laughs> better than I expected. And then you get at the end where they're showing how things fit together. It's like yes, this just jumped into something else. Yes, yes. it's not or bad. The I actually have to watch uh, the movie. Uh, spinoffs and sequels that. 
just tried oh. to replicate the same thing. It's like, okay. no, we already uh, yeah, uh, it didn't, uh, work. Uh, it didn't okay, work. Okay, but, but okay, but I Scott, mean, they it, had a great cast too. I mean, Scott, was, Scott, did, did, is is that why you bu- did you buy it? Because it's a good movie. Yes, I actually okay. did. All right. Cause, okay, cause... okay, <laughs> Ray, you're not, you don't, you don't think it's a good movie? Have no, you... I haven't seen it. I can't, oh, say, I can't say one or the other. I can't say one or the other. But okay, but 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 Scott and I have had numerous discussions about Ray. You got to watch it. Actresses. Okay, I mean... and okay, yes, Ray, no, you have to watch it. Was, you have was to a good watch reason it. to watch that movie, but the movie is yes. actually good. Okay. That's the thing. It's All like right. they sold it. They sold it on. Oh, this is you know hot fucking Cinemax after dark. Shit well, now we've right oversold here. it. Go in expecting crap. Yes, and you need to go way expecting crap. There, okay? and, and, and then you watch it, and you're like, you're the sitting best there going, watch it. Expect crap. Yes. Yeah. Expect crap. I, I mean, this set does look awesome. This almost looks like an everything blue set. Truthfully, like this, like when they place in uh, Florida, right? Yes, it is Florida. Yeah, that, that this Florida, is Florida, hot, muggy Florida. And, and, and you know how I feel about steel books, so it's yes. like yeah. one of those where, like, but but yeah, I mean, come on, Nev Campbell and Denise Richards. Can't go wrong. Who's who's going to argue with that? And in Blu-ray, you can get a better view. Exactly. And oh, this is 4K. <laughs> it's not just Blu-ray. It's 4K. Oh and... wow. <laughs> Oh, I got the hiccups. Shit. <laughs> we, we go ultra. We go ultra HD. Oh, the, the, the ultra. That, that just that reminds me of Futurama. Uh, like he he was he was too young to he was he, they, like they he got to like 130 like because he was de aged and he's like oh, I'm too young to rent ultra porn. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I still love the story that that's how Blu-rays run out won out over HD DVD was that the porn industry went with Blu-ray. Mm-hmm. That was in Tropic Tropic Thunder, right? That's yes, also, it was. That, 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 that's because oh, that's how VHS beat out Beta. That's exactly how VHS Repeatedly. beat out Beta. Uh, high Def was the first time that uh, a change in the video tech was to porn's disadvantage. With every single level before, it's like porn was the first to just embrace the changes, the better video. They determined who won over what, which format was going on. Until you get to high def, it's like, oh, do we really need to see some of those details? Can we wear corsets and so forth? And and yeah, it's like the, the shot in uh, Friends when uh, Ross and Rachel are watching their home porn. Oh, that's a, oh, oh. Oh, oh, no, 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 no. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I remember that episode. Yeah. You're like, that <laughs> That episode was funny because, yeah, because they're watching, they're like, have you been working out? Yeah, I have. You know, like, oh, that's, oh, you've been, you, you're like 10. Oh, yeah, I just spent, you know, a weekend and blah, blah, blah. And then all of a sudden it gets to the point where, oh, oh, oh. I guess we now have to tie it back to Batman porn parodies or something to, uh, you know. Oh, did you hear you know, about that? Like, like, yeah, somebody, somebody, somebody actually posted on Twitter. I saw it today. They were like, B- Batman porn parodies exist in the Batman universe somehow, you know, like, they I mean, obviously, yeah, because if you think about it, it's like in Gotham City or wherever. It's like, yeah, if you're talking about a modern, you know, actual Batman and it's like. And people see them, it's like, yeah, somebody's making a porno version of that. So, so, well, so, you know, so, Batman people, can't sue you because he'd have to reveal his identity to do right. that, yeah. especially some of those worlds where he's a little further outside the law. But it's like, okay, <laughs> he can't sue you, but he can come punch you in the middle of the night. Why? Well, <laughs> so, somebody has, you know, like that. Like people talk about, like I, I saw that earlier today. Like, uh, like someone was talking about, like it was a question about favorite bat suits, and someone had commented. Both suits will stay on during sex. Yeah. Oh, I saw that. So, like, yeah. there's so it's like there's there, someone in Gotham. Plenty of people in Gotham have Batman <laughs> fetishes. That's, <laughs> that's like, even the title of uh, Batman Catwoman uh, story. Of the title of an issue at the beginning of New Fifty Two. Most of the clothes stay on. You know, when Batman. Oh wow. Batman have rooftop sex. Um, is, is it is it one of the cat? Is it Catwoman one or Catwoman? Because Catwoman one was the one that ended with. A sex scene that yeah, was, I think, I, yeah. And so the last page, uh, I think that's where it reveals the title of the issue has been <laughs> "Most of the Clothes Stay On." <laughs> that's hilarious. Hey, right. Well, we always talk about that. I mean, when you talk about nerds, you know, and then you know, we're all like all about this, and then you know, we always joke about like, 
how sexy the costumes could be. It's like, yeah. Well, that's also why different. that was actually one of my favorite arcs in Tom King's Batman run was that two issue roof was rooftops. Mm. Rooftops was uh, yeah, that, and I think Dice is right. It was it was Rebirth. Yeah, it was Rebirth. Cause, Tom cause, King was re- yeah. was was that one. Yeah, that yes. was a that was a really good story. I, that I, was also because Tom King also did that. I am Bane. Uh, yes, it, story that was really when well, you guys were talking earlier about how Bane would just work through the pain. Oh, that's totally what the no, I, I, read that, I read that story. Roof, yes, you're was correct. Rooftops was right after I am. Yes, rooftops was right after I am. Yes, right you're wrong, but and most of the clothes stay on that woman number one, 2011, new 52. There it Trucks is. Around. Most of the clothes oh, stay on. Right. No, but I, yeah, I, 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 I mean, I, but I'm I'm with you on rooftops. I, rooftops is actually probably like, and it was just two issues, but it was like one of my favorite like little mini arcs, like in the because I read like the first thirty issues of Rebirth of like that of Tom King's, which is why I, I I'm not on the I hate Tom King bandwagon that apparently many others are on. I. Nah, I, I, when, like, when, I like his writing. I, like, I love Tom King's yeah, writing. When, Re- when, Rebirth, yeah. when Rebirth came out, I was like, I was all about it. I was like, all right. I, I wasn't big on New 52. And then when I was like, when I heard about Rebirth coming out, I was like, all right, I'm going to start fresh with all of this. I have just, yeah, I, I went hard on Rebirth. And then it kind of just went, and then it just kind of went away, right? Oh, yeah, it did. It kinda, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I, it, it was that was you, you were talking earlier, Dave, about how all, you, all the first issue covers I have, all of them, you, which were great. You, you you said you were talking earlier about how you went to the comic store and just spent a hundred bucks, and then the books would just sit on your shelf. Yeah. So like when I, I well, I'd for talk, a couple you know, like I, like a month, and then I'd be like, all right, time I, to crack them open. After BVS came out, I had expressed an interest to a buddy of mine about finally reading the comics because there were so many comics that I hadn't read, and so I went to him. My buddy Nate, who's one of the biggest Batman fans I've ever known, like he's much bigger Batman fan than me. I said, "Okay, Nate, where's a good starting point to like start reading the comics?" And this happened to be like, I think late April of 2016. So he's like, "Okay, Rebirth is about to start. This is actually not a bad time to just jump in." And I was like, "All right." And so for a year, I was insanely trying to buy every rebirth book yeah oh all of them oh and that only and it only lasted I, a year because it got unwieldy it got very yeah unwieldy. yeah yeah it was way too much and then you yeah. got to really guy you got to start picking like which stories am i still invested in yes. you know I, I, mm-hmm. you know you know what you know what stories were oh, you know when it came to geez. rebirth <laughs> oh there it is there <laughs> she is um no but like um some of the good rebirths were, were, you know, Superman had a good one. Oh, Tomasi. 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 Oh, yes. Although, yes. That was, that was, yes. Superman. Okay, yeah. okay. That Tomasi. had a great, that had a great one. Was, Batman had a great one. Uh, um, uh, uh, Green uh, Lanterns. And uh, then the Hal Jordan Green Lantern. Core also book. I, I, yeah. I loved, uh, if we're talking green, I loved Percy's Green Arrow. I really like Percy's Green, green Arrow. Arrow. Was good. Um, I liked I liked Red Hood and the Outlaws. That was good. Yeah. Yes. 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 That Outlaws was also was good. good. But I, it, you know, Tomasi. Not what they did with Starfire. No, no. Mm-hmm. This Red is the, no. The this Outlaws. is the not the New Fifty Two one. I, I, the Rebirth one was Artemis and Bizarro. Yes. Mm. Oh, the um, Rebirth one. Okay. Yeah. Yes. But but yeah, the, we're talking about yeah, Rebirth. The, the, Tomasi Superman was good, but you know, I Action Comics. They brought Jurgens back for Action Comics. Yeah. I loved that Action Comics run. It was so good because I because I'm a Jurgens disciple. I love Dan Jurgens. Yeah. Uh, except for Great Return Jordan of Hill. Superman, apparently. But uh <laughs> <laughs> well, um, Jurgens, Jurgens can tell a serious story and be fun. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. But uh and, and, but also uh James Tiny and the Fourth uh Detective Comics. That was a really good run. And quite honestly, I like that better than King's Batman run. That's the place where t- where yes. Ray and I Ray and I, I think, part I think- I think uh, one of the best in Rebirth was All Star Batman. Oh, did you guys you guys read? Oh, oh if it was Scott, uh, we were sorry. Oh, Scott Snyder. Yeah, if Scott Snyder's name is on it. I buy it. Like that. I mean, just, I mean, I mean, go on, I mean, it was so great. Well, like because I think Batman had like three different books when it came to Rebirth, but All Star Batman, where I mean, the cover was literally him holding up his fist, and he was bloody 
all like from from his face down to his torso. Well, and he was just like, that's, that's, that, that was a Jacques story, I think, had that cover. Is that what it was? Well, it starts off with John Romita Jr. on the Two Face story. Yeah, and, yeah. Two Face story. Okay, and then right. and and then there was a second arc that had mm -hmm. Jacques art. And then oh yeah, the, you might be right about the Jacques art. Yes, yeah. I think you're right. I think you're right. But I but regardless of the art, I just love the story of you know that that, that Batman was and Two Face, and it was like it was like a road trip story with Batman and mm -hmm. Two Face. Mm -hmm. And I was like, you've never really seen that before when it came to a Batman story where it's like, you know, Batman's really trying to like, you know, he's got to take Two-Face to his end. But they have this history of Bruce and Harvey and they kind of, you know, they revamped it where it was like, oh, yeah, they went to uh, where I think they were with, either boarding they school, I think, together. Yeah. together. yeah, right. There was like this whole backstory that was like incorporated into the main story. And I just thought, man. That's I mean, it was almost like it was like, an, you know, when you talk when you talk about Logan or old man Logan, it was kind of like that kind of aspect because you had a bunch of other people in the Batman universe going after them to kill them. Yeah. Penguin it was, was like big it was outside that. continuity. Who cared where it fit into continuity? Exactly. It exactly. Its own very solid story. That, yeah. that, that was it's actually the great. first Scott Snyder I ever read was yeah. like the first 10 issues of that run. Yeah, it was first a great story of that you know what you know what was it was like a uh a, a, a kind of an underrated run i thought in rebirth was new superman i really oh, yeah. like new superman oh yeah with the uh the, the it was the like a superman yeah, the chinese superman yes. Chinese oh, yeah chinese superman yes no that was good too yeah, yeah i like i run. mean they had a, they had some good they had some things going man i mean i i, I remember like the 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 first editions, I have so many of those first editions when they were like up close, like the up close in their faces, like all all the first editions were just up close in their face. And mm -hmm. and then they and then they even brought in like, you know, Suicide Squad versus Justice League yep. at one that, point. That, 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 was, that, was, that was five issues with uh, Max it, Lord. Yeah, that yeah. Was, uh, Joshua yeah. Williamson wrote that one. Yeah. Did he? Yeah. yeah. But even like the first issue of... um rebirth suicide squad i mean that went hard where they were taking on zod and i was like yeah that Whoa. was that was that, that was yeah I, well and i had read it because i think that was because this was the summer before the movie was coming out mm -hmm. so yeah. it what well, sorry in a lot of cases and, and this was all, this reminds me of the other I, the wonder woman run that was rucka and uh um well, depend, and then you had you had Nicola Scott on Ooh. year one, and you had Liam Sharp, Liam Sharp on, Lies. on Lies. Yes, yes. I was reading year one for like knowledge. Like reading year one helped me understand the movie a year later. Like it did. <laughs> like it totally did. I was like, oh, okay, I, I I I get it now. All right, it just you know, like I, yeah. When it came to Rebirth, one of my favorites was the Trinity rebirth i don't know if did you guys read those I did there was a there was a, a black mercy oh, storyline there was that, a, that one yes, yeah there was but the first story was like them going to their childhoods each one of them mm -hmm. yeah it was like a weird mind fuckery kind of story and then you find out who was controlling it of course but it was just like it hit hard like when it came it was like all right we're gonna go we're gonna do a trinity storyline and they just like went hard on, you know, going into their their psyches and shit like that. And it was actually really good. Yeah, I thought the Trinity ones. Up, oh, the cat went away. <laughs> she was like, "I'm done." What's the cat's name, by the way? Uh, this, uh, she's still right here. She's, that is Spunky. Spunky. Oh, nice. Good name. Good name. Seems no, like it. Yeah, the, uh, we named her well when we got her at the Humane Society. She was born at the shelter, like mm. five week old kitten. And she just started waving us over. Come play with me. Come play with me. And he said, like, "All right, she's got spunk. We want her." <laughs> nice. It's like Good choose man. the cats for their their character. Yeah. 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 I um, our late cat uh, Chaucer was was basically as dog like as a cat could be. I I I will still never forget when Liam when Heather was pregnant with Liam and he would lay on Heather's belly and Liam would kick. And it was literally watching Chaucer play whack-a-mole. Like, 
Liam would kick, and he'd be like, <laughs> "Like, he's like, what, 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 what is this?" And that yeah. cat loved Liam. The two of them had they had a connection. They had a connection, and so when we lost Chaucer, it was so hard on oh, man. on Liam. But I remember using my I, I love my wife for this. My wife, he, he had he ended up getting cancer, and I remember my wife using kryptonite to explain cancer to a four-year-old you and you it, got a good one you got a good one Scott. <laughs> i mean because it, it, it made sense <laughs> yeah a four-year-old yeah. who has no, me as no, a father no, that, that's a good way to explain but, it yeah but, but 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 you but you named you named chaucer no no that was <laughs> heather brought chaucer into the relationship so that oh, was just yeah. serendipity then Oh, yeah, that, you that, remember, that, that, Heather and I met each other on Match.com based on the fact that we'd both gone to England in the same year, just oh, like okay. three months apart. All right. <laughs> I, I was just saying, when, when, when you said Chaucer, I was like, oh, well, that just makes sense. Scott, the English teacher, had a cat named Chaucer. No, no that was my wife, the English teacher, who had a cat named Chaucer. But okay. the, the shared common interest is what makes it all fit together. There exactly. it is. Oh, my, remember, the cat good. I named, who's still with us, is named Selena. So let's oh, I mean, naturally, <laughs> naturally. How'd you come up with that name? I, I'm trying to figure well, that out. Well, it helped when we got the cat. We thought it was a boy and I named it Dickens. And then we took it to the vet and they're like, sorry to tell you this, but the cat's a girl. And I went, yeah. I literally. Selena. A, <laughs> Selena. Selena. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yep. That makes sense. No, like, yeah. You know, when it could, it's weird because I've never growing up. I've always owned dogs. Um, but you know, my, it, it's funny when you said that, uh, Scott about, about your cat being like, it was more like a dog. My, my, uh, my dad actually had a cat. He was named as Taz and that name fit that fucking cat because, <laughs> because <laughs> it was, Taz, yes, this cat, this cat was like, I mean, they, they had three cats and the other ones were more like relaxed, like normal cats. You dangle like in front of them, all of a sudden Taz would just. You know, just like, and then, yeah. But there was times where I would like, when I was visiting my dad, I would be like, oh my God, this cat is like a dog. And he's like, yeah. And there'd be times where I'd be, I'd run like across, like, you know, the living room or something like that. And he would chase me. And then I would stop and then just look at him. And then he would dart underneath like a, like a chair. And then I would look at, let him, his mouth wide open going, <sighs> I'm like, how is this? What the fuck? This is a dog. And then, and then, of course, a when panting like cat. Relaxing, <laughs> yeah, a panting cat. I'm like, I'm surprised his tongue wasn't hanging out. And I'm like, geez. But he was just like, what are you doing? What are we doing now? What are we doing now? You know, but then, of course, when it came to just, hey, let's relax, he would just fucking lay on you and just pet him and he would act like a cat. But man, if you get physical, it was like a dog. Like, yeah, that's why they named him Paz. Perfect name. Paz. <laughs> yeah. Poor guy. That's, man. That's, man. That, yeah. that, that's yeah. generational, too. How many people in the chat know what ta who Taz is? Oh, I know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Come on. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Travis is like, hmm? I don't think. Why wouldn't they? Well, well. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, well, you know what? When it comes to Looney Tunes, I, you know, I think it's generally known, hopefully. But again, the younger ones bit... don't know Looney Tunes as well. Yeah. 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 Well, and, 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 and not but with, that... But with that age be in here anyway. Well, well, well and, and, and also with <laughs> Taz, it's like, okay, we know Taz, but like, is he on the same level as like Bugs Bunny? And Daffy See, Duck. When I was a like, kid, Taz had his own show. Yeah, yeah, he did. Yeah, Tasmania. Yes, yes, yes. He so did. Say that, and also, even if they know him, they might only know him as Tasmanian Devil and still not know who you were talking about as Taz. That's true. When the period you're talking about is when he was most frequently called Taz. Mm -hmm. Right. No, that's true. Right. Trust me, we have enough conversations that we realize, even in our relatively. We're, we're we're all pushing middle age, and we all realize. Oh, well, Lord. oh you come on, to, do you have own to say it. it like that? Well, stop yes. saying it like I that. Just own it, man. Stop saying it like that. 
<laughs> we're pushing middle age. I'm sorry. I'm staring at 40 in a month. Okay. okay. I can own this. Okay. <laughs> all, all right. I'm going to, then I'm going to keep bringing it up. The first, the, the Samuel, ja the first Samuel L. Jackson it's movie I ever saw was number. coming to America. Exactly. It's Thank you, Travis. <laughs> Tell my wife that, by the way, because she turns uh, 40 a month after me. And she is yeah. not happy about it. No, it's uh, it, it, but no, it, it, it's it's not about it's, owning it. Yes, but did, your phrasing could be a little better. You don't have oh, to say boy. pushing middle age. Don't you want to go <laughs> past eighty? Get there, it's like, like I remember dreading that number, and then you get there. It's like, so what? Yeah, it's a number. Uh, it, it's a number. It, it, uh, we, my wife and I were talking today about uh, you know how but big a difference lifestyle makes and just attitude. Like when I went to my 20 year high school reunion and I'm just looking at some of these fuddy duddies and things like, do you not remember what a hellion you were? What? Or I was like, what is with you? Come on. And it's like, you just decided you're an old person for some of them. <laughs> <laughs> See for me, it's always it's it's always Raiders. I always think it's not the years, honey. It's the mileage. <laughs> oh, Raiders! Right. Yeah. Hey, the you know mileage. what? How old was Harrison Ford when he did Raiders? Mm -hmm. He was like what, late thirties, early forties in nineteen eighty one. Jack Kirby when he first draws the Fantastic Four. Yeah. There's that too. Right. I mean, yep. there's so many. There's so many examples you can get out there when, like, yeah, and, and then you just go like, hey, it's just a number. So, right? so, so, Sam, Samuel L. is still my biggest one. The fact that he was like, oh 40, yeah, he was like 41 when he did Coming to America. Yes, like yeah, what? that part. Yeah, yeah when when, when did he do, like, wait, Pulp Fiction? How old was he? Like, he's got to be mid 40s. Mid -40s. Yeah, you know? dude, he's mid 40s in a Die Hard movie. With yeah. <laughs> You know what I mean? Well, I mean, so, Bruce Willis is pushing. He's probably in his forties too at that point, right? Uh, probably. But Bruce had become yeah. famous younger. Sam Jackson did not become the big star. He'd been a working actor. Right. He yes. became a star well in the middle age. Oh yes. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. He, totally. I mean, and and then when you look at him, you're like, dude, are you gonna fucking age? at all like i mean <laughs> you look oh, at Sam Jack i mean they literally have i mean when they talk about like in uh captain marvel they had a de-age him i'm like did they really not I mean, really i mean they, they, like, did, they, they, they had they, to be really easy well it was funny like dice but said i think he's saying his first samuel L. movie was a negotiator i feel like they just found his red wig from the negotiator and painted yeah, yeah. black and that was what he wore in Captain yeah. Captain Marvel, I, where the I hated weight. that too. I hated that too. I was like, I, you know what? Why can't he just be bald all the time? Yeah, well, I mean, I mean, they, they had they had to make him younger, so it's like let's put hair on yeah. him. And I'm like, why? I mean, it just doesn't look good. Like Sam Jackson looks good bald. I mean, he does. yeah, oh, I, he, he, he yes, he does. Yeah, right. I mean, it's just, but I mean, I I get it because they were like, all right, we got to make you look younger. And in, in, in it's this. also about Ooh. attitude. He has more yeah. attitude when he's older. That character, yeah. yeah. Well, and, and and he had, and to be fair, Dave, he he like his early like coming to America and and like Jungle Fever he did and have like hair. in yeah. the early nineties, he very much had hair. Right, he and, did I'm not, and I'm not talking yeah. about the Jerry curl that he had because that wasn't his Jerry curl. That was not his real <laughs> Jerry curl in. Did I ask you? <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember asking you a goddamn thing. God damn it! That oh. movie, Jesus Christ! Oh, <laughs> that, I, I mean, that's that. I mean, I mean, when you watch Pulp Fiction, you go, "Oh yeah, that's that's this is why Sam Jackson is Sam Jackson." Because that of this film movie. is when he became a star. Yes. Yes. Yeah, that's yes, when he came. Is. I mean, yes, I mean, now you, now when you watch the Sam Jackson movie, what, whether what rate it is, you just want him to say motherfucker. You want to say motherfucker sometime in the movie. I want I him. Really is still his favorite word. I, yes. I, I, I want him. I, I still to this day, if, if the fates could align, I want him and Lawrence Fishburne to star in a movie titled Seriously. Motherfucker. Yeah. Seriously. Hey, Why has that not insane. happened yet? I know, right? Somebody figure that out. Ah. No, but like, yeah, you you watch Pulp Fiction and you just, yeah. I mean, even with the, yeah, with the Jerry girl, uh, it's funny too because when you watch the, when you look at the uh, promos for the promo images of that, he does not have that hairstyle for Pulp no, Fiction. He doesn't you're right? Yeah. It's, it's weird. Yeah, it's like this weird yeah. thing, right? It, well, it, you know, and why is and, that? <laughs> Well, well, it's it's also kind of like how like Uma's like, 
that's not her hair. That's a wig. Yeah, that that's is a wig. so a wig that she's wearing. Yeah. Um, but uh, you know what? Everybody that, had wigs, even Travolta. Oh, <laughs> that was the big Travolta. Dude. But, you know what? And that and that film, like I know that he was like doing the look who's talking stuff, but really, Pulp Fiction is like that totally revived. That was that revitalized well, well, his career. <laughs> when it came to the look who's talking stuff, the first one was like a hit and it was like oh yeah john travolta cool but then it was like the sequels <laughs> not so much buddy no and then it was like mm. all right now mm. now that the career's going back down again and then quentin tarantino was like i got you and then yeah reinvigorated his career oh, yeah. again and then we got the broken arrow the fucking face off and face off. Oh, I feel like phenomenon you know. phenomenon was great too oh my god but you know what that there's that one the, the lawyer the, the civil action Actually, yeah, with like, Dustin Hoff Hoffman, yeah. right? C yeah, yeah. Civil Action. Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah. You're thinking of a different one. I know what you're talking about. Civil Action where he was a lawyer. But there was another oh. one that he did with, it was called like Mad City or something like that. Oh, yeah. Dustin I know what you're talking about. Hoffman. Yes. Yeah, yeah, that's the one with us. Remember, remember the one, Michael, where he played an angel? Yeah, that was yeah. great. I thought that was a good movie. It had it had Andy McDowell. Come on. She was, she was the it. Girl in the nineties, man. Oh I mean, yeah, dude. well, because that was because so the, adorable, so gr cute. Groundhog Day and multiplicity, multiplicity. multiplicity. Fuck. Yes, yes. people don't yes. know. People don't know multiplicity enough. They need to. Why? How is? How is multiplicity like? If, it's if got Batman. If, if if you're doing top five Michael Keaton movies, how is multiplicity not one of your top five? It should be it in your to be. top three. It should be. It's so beautiful. Oh my god! Top I, three, oh, Michael wow. Keaton. Let's let's see. Um, okay. Multiplicity is in my top three. Okay, okay, multiplicity, Beetlejuice, and the Dream Team. Nice. Sir. Dream Team. I love the Dream Team. That's because because here's well, the great thing. The great thing about the Dream Team is it's Michael Keaton and Christopher Lloyd. So that, which is why I watched it. I watched it because hey, Doc Brown's in the movie. That's totally why I watched the movie. <laughs> and just discovered how awesome the movie Peter Boyle's in that movie, uh, Lorraine Bracco's in that movie. Um, wow. It's actually a really good movie. I have to revisit that movie. I haven't yeah. watched that in a long time because I would have said, you know, you know, Batman, Beetlejuice, well, multiplicity. I don't know. It's just when See, it comes to me, my, I really do love, I, and, and, and I don't care how pretentious it sounds, but I love Birdman. I really Birdman, do. Birdman is really Birdman. Birdman. Birdman's really good. Birdman's. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, 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 that was a weird movie for me because I mean I got to see it in theaters. So Funny I. enough, I I went to go see a late movie, and the next day was the day that my Batman sixty six limited edition Blu ray box set got delivered. Of and course, I could <laughs> yeah. grab that one for you too, right? Um, and <laughs> with with my little with the little bat with the little die cast of All Batmobile, right. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I came with I've it. Seen it. But uh, that was a weird one because it was like you've got the the stage actor story mixed with the improvisational drum jazz score oh, with, God, that's a good with score. the with the references that you're like dude you're so playing out the fact that michael keaton was batman totally like like i remember people not getting the movie and me going i am like this weird melting pot where this thing speaks to me like on every level i bought that I remember, I remember in the theater it were like and i was watching with my with my ex and i was just like the whole time i was like <laughs> you know because it was just there was yes like you said it was like uh -huh, yeah it's michael keaton that man <laughs> you know kind of thing it was like there was like this whole thing but the fact of the matter is like the fact that it's all one shot and i was sitting there like trying to like pinpoint where they do the edits where they do that's the one edit. of the things about one shots the, yeah. the sheer nature of it. Sometimes you get distracted by the technical aspect uh -huh. when the camera's moving. Uh, a one shot right. where the camera's still, you actually don't think about it as well. Like Sling Blade is a lot of one shots and certain other movies. And, and there, there can be a heightening of tension with a one shot. Uh -oh. But yeah, you can get distra so distracted by the technical. You're watching a movie, of, of just a video. I'm watching a music video and supposedly a one shot. It's like, nope, they went past a pole. There's a cut. It's like it's distracting you from what it's supposed to be. <laughs> Travis, I brought this up before. There's a really awesome, like, like, like there was a video I saw years ago about the art of an editing video, the art of editing, and this he did a segment about the art of when not to cut, mm -hmm. and it's a scene from Raiders of the Lost Ark mm. where it's right after Marion 
died like yeah. after the after the truck blew up and right. Indy is in that restaurant sitting at a table with Belloc and the camera is locked on just uh Freeman and Ford for 3 minutes mm-hmm. just ta- and it's mostly Belloc talking but it's just the back and forth and it and it's just like Indy's closer and like Belloc is speaking to him and it's just that you know that whole it would take only a nudge to make you like me to push you out of the line that whole like and it just it just sits on them for three minutes and it just builds the tension perfectly. You don't even notice like when you're watching it, that it's one shot and it's yeah. like, you, and you're just waiting for Indy to just sock this dude in the face. Cause seriously, this is not the time to be needling him about the arc. He's mourning. He's clearly pissed off. He's going to hit you. And it doesn't cut until the very end where he's like, it's a radio for speaking to God and it's within my reach. And he's just like, you want to talk to God? Let's go see him together. I've got nothing better to do. I think two great purposes for one shot are when you want that dramatic tension and you want to hang on to it. It's like, if you're there with them through that whole thing, it's like there's, there's not an artificially cutting together a scene. Another time is with and surprisingly, it's like some action scenes. This is if it's a yes. one shot, this is Ooh. there's more of a sense of this is happening as opposed to this has been manufactured and cobbled together. Some of the recent Mission Impossible movies have really oh. played with that. It's like we need some action one shots to tighten the tension in this scene as opposed to jump, jump, jump. Yeah, well, it's yeah. kind of it's no, like I mean, for me, it's, it's always like even, martial martial arts action scenes. And sword fights. Mm-hmm. I I just want, I just want it to play out. Like mm-hmm. I, I want, I don't, I don't need a cutting. Just what? Let me watch the choreography because yeah. that's what I want. Like, uh, well, I mean, even even going sword. back, even going back to Fallout, like what you were t- saying. I'm like, mm-hmm. there's that shot where like Tom Cruise, like when the infamous uh, where he breaks his, you know, his leg where shot, broke his, where broke his ankle. Yeah. Like which, you, which like, when you watch that and, he, and he's running like the camera like does this crazy thing where it's like panning like this. And then there's like a you could, you know, if you're looking closely, yeah, you could see the edit because there's something that passes through. But if you're not, if you're just kind of just watching it, you think it's one shot. And then he leaps off that building and you're like, holy shit. That was I mean, even with me, when I when I, I see the edit. But I was like, that was fucking clean, though. That was really if, clean. If you go all the way back to the, the, the to, to three, which is still my favorite of the series, because it started wow. the, the three started that when Abrams did that. When it started the 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 run that they've been on through like Fallout. Like I know, listen, Corey's done an amazing job, but three brought in Benji and st- like yeah, Simon true. Pegg and started them on that trajectory. Yeah. There's a shot in three where he's looking for jewels. But I still, I, I, I still and, will always, always support John Woo's Mission Impossible. Two. Oh, there's, there's, two. They, 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 <laughs> I will always, I will always defend, go live on that island. Always okay. defend Mission Impossible Two. I know people are like, and I'll even say, yeah, it probably is a weak one out of the bunch, but I still love it so the, much. But, but, the, but there's a scene where it's just, it's, it's another scene of Cruz running, but it's a shot of him running like through this town like and it's got like this is yes Jaqu- no, Jaqu- no, i know yes. what you're talking about and and, and yes. Giacchino scored this movie because Giacchino and abrams are like thick as thieves they, they him and Re- it's like jj abrams everywhere. matt reeves are like Giacchino's two like primary directors that he's like scored stuff for and so it's like this heightened tension scene this really tense music and it's just the camera just follows him running for like 30 seconds and he's just running like it, it's just him running like at full speed, and it's like, I don't know how old you are, but wow, you're you're, you're motoring, and I mean he's and he's running, he's yelling at people in a different language to get out of his way, and yeah. like and like just, it's just hit, it's just Tom Cruise running like, and it was That's kind good. of the it was just kind of the start of those like shots that you're talking about that yes they have totally like done way more of like since then. You want a one cut movie? Watch One Cut of the Dead. One if you of... don't know anything about it, don't look anything up. Okay. Just it's go called... watch it. The first third of it is like this half hour one cut, and and then the movie does some other things. Uh, just just 
What's it called? Go watch. Go watch. Whether you like the, I mean, I love the first third. I know people who don't like the first third, and then they're blown away by what goes on later in the movie. But watch one cut of the dead. If you don't one know this, because the that that there are even that I was still distracted. Point thing. Oh, that could have been a fake on um, the one cut, and there's like no, they shot this thing several times. It was like a, before they they got it completely right uh, on on that you know half hour one cut. For, for in their zombie movie and then it's it's the later stuff you don't, you don't want to know what it goes on just watch it don't look it up trust okay. me watch one cut of the dead one cut of the dead all right one i'm gonna i'm gonna dead. watch right. that because that sounds awesome it really does because any anytime that a filmmaker, a filmmaker uh does decides to go like hey we're gonna make this whole shot right here it's gonna be just one consistent cut and do it and when they pull it off it's like man yeah, it's Shutter. something. What? Shutter. I was I was looking to see what app it was on. Shutter and it's on Shutter. AMC oh, Plus. Okay. Hmm? It's on AMC 100. Plus as well. Oh, AMC Plus. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna watch that. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, check, because check. Uh, if you have AMC Plus, you have access to Shutter. Oh, yes. oh yeah. Oh, there okay. it is. It's right. Yes. I got you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because, I mean, like, when it comes to movies that do, like, entirely one-shots, I mean, Birdman is different because, you know, it's, it's, uh, who's, who was the director on Inaritu. Yeah, I can never pronounce his name. Ale yeah, Alejandro yeah. Gonzalez Inaritu, I believe. There you go. Yeah. I mean, like, yeah, it, you know, and that, we're, but I mean, then you got, um, what was that, Hardcore Henry? Or something like that. You have that one shot where it's like point of view. It's like a video game. It's like, you know, I mean, obviously it can be a gimmick. And that's still very cool. Because it's like, literally, it's the whole movie is from the point of view of this dude who doesn't know what the hell's going on. And he's got like, you know, he could, he has abilities and blah, blah, blah. It's completely a gimmick, but it works. And a lot of people don't know about Hardcore Henry. <laughs> it's like, come on. Watch that movie. It's it's like watching somebody play a video game, to be honest. And I've the fact heard, that they pulled I've it off. I've heard of it. I've yeah. heard of it too. Oh, hardcore yeah. Henry. It's insane. I remember watching that well, walking out of that movie, like going, fuck. I mean, the movie is doesn't have any depth, it, it, nothing. It's, it's, it's just it's all a, action. It's but, on Tubi. You can watch it free on Tubi TV. Oh, there, there you, you go. go. See, see I what was I mean? looking to see if one cut of the dead was on Tubi, but uh yeah. But at the same time, you just go like, how do they pull all, all that it, off? It, 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 is the it, whole it, thing in man. first person? Yes. The, the whole movie is in first person. Well, you're, you're in Henry's visual point of view. That's okay. all you're in. Yeah. I, I think I've seen the trailer for this. Yeah. I think I, like years ago, I think I saw yeah. the trailer for this. It's but, insane. Uh, it's insane. Huh. And, and, and like you just kind of walk out like. I just watched a video game. I think that's that's what I watched. I mean, it's not an actual movie, but but the fact of the matter is, is like they pulled it off. That's the thing. It's like they pulled it off. That's what's cool about it. I mean, I think every now and like when it comes to this whole thing, it's like, yeah, you can use it as a gimmick for your movie. But at the same time, you can use it as like Birdman is a different kind of thing because like 1917 some... is very. Night... Oh, there you go. There you go. Thank you. Because. That movie, you it's really gorgeous. feel you feel like you're one of the guys that are going across I, this. I fucking still need to see that. Oh, <gasps> oh, dude, you need to see. Travis, have you seen it? Have you tr have you seen 1917? Uh, yes, actually, I have. Yes, so you know, it's yeah, it, it, it'll it'll grab you. It'll grab you. I remember. I mean, I've I've watched it a few times. I remember. Uh, when I watched Mendes, it with, right? Uh, yeah, oh, yeah, Sam Mendes, Mendes, yes. Mendes. With Roger Deakins doing uh, the cinematography. Oh, why the hell haven't I watched this yet? Come I on. know. What is wrong with you? <laughs> and I remember um, it, won, it won Best Visual Effects at the Oscars that year. And people were like, why the hell is this movie wearing Best Visual Effects? Because you don't know the making of to understand. They took they took like a daytime scene and turned it to night. Oh, dude, right. when you watch the behind the scenes of that, you're like, that was shot during the day? What yeah. the fuck? Yeah. And then there's like, I mean, like, oh man, I mean, it, it, but again, what even what, what Travis was saying is like my stupid brain. I'm like, I'm sitting there trying to find the edits, you know. Yeah. And you know, you, I think I found the first edit, but there's some edits where I'm like, I, I'm like, God That's damn. Honestly, the ones that most deserve some of the visual effects 
Oscars are the ones that you don't realize what they're doing, and therefore yeah. people aren't amazed. Oh, they right. did this. It's like, yeah. oh yeah. There's been there's been people or like where I've talked to them like where they watch nineteen seventy you know, like you realize that there was no edits right and they went huh <laughs> watch it again there is no cuts and they're like oh I, I didn't even notice I'm like are you fucking serious you didn't <laughs> notice that there was not a cut at all general audience doesn't movie? catch that at all yeah you know, it's just it's it's it just goes over their heads a lot of meanwhile times. meanwhile me i'm like trying to find i'm like got my fucking magnifying glass out going like oh, where's the edit you know trying to say and i'm like trying to but even with me i'm like I, I watch that movie and i go there's some where i go jesus christ how do the how do they do that i don't know i can't find the edit i can see the edit in some certain things but at the same time it doesn't take me out of it because i thought good that's a Yes, I totally understand. That's a good spot to do an edit. You had a shadow going over, or you had like a, a post or a pole that passed a, that's, across that's, the screen, that's, or something that's like usually, that. That's usually, yeah, like, like yeah. that's usually what it is. Like a, just an ob, like, like an object. Yeah, will, some like, kind of object passes. You're like, all right, right. there it was. I don't even but care about that because you go, the wow, that was cool. is gorgeous. It's so fucking good. Well, but that's like half so the battle. That, that's like how you pull it off, right? Like, that, yeah. I mean, that's half the battle of pulling it off. It's not just having a mechanism to to hide the cut. It's also making the shot itself look gorgeous. Look, look gorgeous enough that even if you saw the cut, you wouldn't care. Well, even that that last part where the main dude like runs across the battlefield and bombs are going off. I mean, when you see the behind the scenes of that and you see the visual effects that were part of that, when you see like the actual footage of that, it's like, holy shit. Like like he had to run through certain like obstacles, certain markers. And you see the markers like in the behind the scenes footage. It's crazy. It's crazy. Absolutely crazy. <sighs> anyways guys uh you know what i think it's time to wrap this up we're four hours in we're four yeah, hours yeah. into this uh stream it is and then we'll be over it's like i really thought langley was gonna go by the two hour mark why the hell did we <laughs> stick around <with> <laughs> listening to you guys well, dude like, you know what you know what this is this is the way the vodka stream happens man i mean this uh, is just a friday like, night it yeah is. Well, well, how it, long it, did it, we go when i was with you guys we went a while we Not only, like this, but we you, went you, you you guys only went like over an hour, over an maybe hour, maybe like an hour and but, a half. But I was telling them then, it's like I I tend to call my interviews at like fifteen minutes. <laughs> yeah. Not yeah. When it comes to the vodka stream, Travis, this is oh, like no, if, you're the... stream, if you're joining a live stream, you're committing to sticking around for a bit. Oh no, we've done six hours. Oh yeah, we've gone to six. Oh yeah, we've, we've gone six absolutely. hours on this on this yeah. before. Yeah, uh, and, we're not going to do it tonight. De no. Definitely, well, well, uh, and, we're and, definitely and, not. <laughs> I, and, and, I, Scott, I'm actually somewhat surprised that you're here because I know you're in blackout. This is our last one before. This is our last one before the glory yeah. of next week. Well, it's the last vodka stream. It, Dave and I still have Fanimated on Sunday. So hell yeah. True. That is very true. Which, which which episode are we uh, talking about? Heart of Steel Part One. Heart of Steel Part Heart One, Heart Heart baby. Heart 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 Heart. Heart. Yes. Oh, it's gonna be great. <laughs> That's one of my oh. favorites. I like that one. Oh, it's a great introduction episode. of Barbara Gordon. Yes. Yes, the official introduction. Yeah. In, in that show. I'm fine. I'm fine. Anyways, <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm talking about. When oh, and, and well, and you know your your buddy, uh, uh, that's uh, Sanderson. Oh no, trust me, don't 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 give away the. F I I've promised yes. a yes. I promised oh. a rabbit hole explanation of all yes. the Easter eggs and oh, yes. meta that goes on with that. Uh, uh, okay. Oh yeah, they, our they, last episode of, ba of Batman Fanimated, he uh, he definitely was like, they, oh, I got I got some stuff. I got they, some stuff. Dave, be be ready for that one because oh, I, yeah. I, I I know exactly where. He He's gonna go. <laughs> oh yeah, I I know a little bit because I know the voice. So, yeah, yeah, it's gonna be fun. That's what I that's what I love about it. Anyways, yeah, we're gonna head wrap this up, uh, wrap this uh, vodka stream up, and uh, you know, Mister Doctor Travis Langley, thank you for joining. This has been a lot of fun, man. That's you. That's you. And uh, you know, you're welcome back anytime. You want to talk about anything, you know. And uh, of course, guys, get the book, Batman and Psychology. 
please get that book. It's a second, second edition. edition coming in. Yeah, coming out March first. I have the link posted down it's, below. Uh, yeah, well, it's our, it's out. I mean, even though officially it's out March first, really it was out February twenty second, like okay. it was supposed to be. To the second edition on two twenty two twenty two because Two Face picked the on date. Tuesday. Uh, yeah, there you go. go. Tuesday. Yeah, on, on Tuesday, I'll officially <laughs> yeah. March first, but it, it is now out. Okay. Available. Yeah, most people get them through Amazon and Barnes and Noble. I know Barnes and Noble placed a huge order. Well, because the first edition always sold really well for them. And this is, of course, wherever finer books are sold. But I know most people get them through Amazon and Barnes and Noble. There it is. So get that book, guys. Um, I can't wait to crack it open. You know, I got it. I got the first edition uh, sent to me yesterday, and I, you know, kind of brisked through it, but. I want to get the second edition, the updated edition, of course, because, you know, yeah, some topics in there I want to, you know, dive into right there. And uh, thank you, Travis, for joining the Vodka Stream, talking some Batman ego and Batman all, is, you know, whatever Batman. You're welcome back anytime. Um, we'll go around the horn. Go ahead and uh, Ray, go ahead and promote yourself. Hi. Uh on Twitter at the Flightcast, uh, you can find my blog and my weekly show at theflightcast.com. Uh, I also have uh, Fans Without Borders. Our next episode, which will be the the Monday after the Batman officially releases, will be our review of the Batman Fans Without Borders. Myself and Brent co-hosting that as part of Squadcast Media. And as I teased earlier, I will be talking at gr in great detail about Batman Beyond on Expect the next episode. Thread. Of di oh, d dude, your your feedback thread is going to be <laughs> probably the longest feedback thread that you have put together when you hear how long I pontificated on that show <laughs> on for Sunday's DC TV Squadcast. Yes, because uh, we've got Batman on the brain. Seriously, we're, we're in Batman mode. Oh, we're in total. We're going to have Batman on the brain for the next month. What kind of world yeah. do we live in when a man dressed up like a bat gets <laughs> all my press? This town exactly. needs an enema. This town, yeah. <laughs> Clearly, he's uh, yeah, he's crazy. Anyway, Scott, send us off. Well, of course, you can find me on Twitter, Scott DC twenty seven. At least you will after Tuesday night. You can find my <laughs> podcast, the DC Squadcast, where a podcast can be found. We're on Vero, Facebook, YouTube, with the entire network of shows at squadcastmedia.com. And of course, you can find me every Sunday night at 7 Pacific, 9 Central, with this guy talking Batman, the animated series, on the Fanimated stream here on the Film Junkie YouTube channel. As previously teased, we will be talking about Heart of Steel Part 1 on Sunday night. Love it. All right, guys, make sure you smash that like thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. If you want to join, become a member, do that. Patreon's down there, all that stuff. And uh, thank you to the entire panel. Thank you, Dr. Travis, for uh, joining. This has been a lot of fun, a lot of good conversation. Ray, Scott, everybody, and we will talk to you guys later. <laughs>